Let's see if it works. Hello, 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 hello. hello, hello, hello. Zito talk. Perfect. I can still hear them. Good. That's good work. We did it. We did it. We did it, guys. Good work. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to New York City on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. This sports program starts right now. Football! 
happened last night in a massive way as a backup for the Bengals beats the Jacksonville Jaguars in their first home Monday night football game in 12 years. A devastating blow to the Jacksonville Jaguars who are in conversations and maybe becoming the team that represents the AFC with the parody on that side of the NFL. And what did Jake Browning say? He said, I'm from Washington and I can spin it. On a historic evening for the quarterback, the Bengals maybe claim that this season isn't completely over and the Jaguars have a lot to figure out. Shout out to Duval for showing up last night. I think the 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 light show and the fireworks and Jack's him DeVille doing a gainer off the top of the stadium to start the entire evening and bring the football down to be kicked off for that game was nothing short of flawless. I do believe that maybe uh, Monday Night Football could have turned up the audio on the crowd a little bit, give them a little bit of a rub because they haven't been uh, on TV in like 12 yeah. years in that way. But nonetheless, good game. What happened to Trevor Lawrence at the end? We will certainly dive into that as we go on. What does it look like going ahead for the entire AFC? That'll be the topic of conversation today, as well as Coach Jeff Saturday will join us. Uh -huh. wow. Live in studio. Tim Legler will join us live okay. in studio. Legs. Legs is joining us live in studio. CJ Stroud joining us via FaceTime, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time on ESPN Plus and on YouTube and live in this studio. The same one where a lot of things have been said about this man. Oh, yeah. True. Sure. I think he was called a murderer by people. <laughs> no, possibly. Aaron Rodgers will join us live in studio today. We cannot wait for all of that. The boys are here. The toxic table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. I see the ponies running con, man. Yeah, yeah, ponies are running. Because you know what? We've been talking about these primetime games being absolute dog shit all year, which they have been. But this weekend, I mean, we had three back to back to back that were unbelievable. And let's not even think about the possible terrible primetime games coming up. I just can't believe that we got a Jake Browning 350 yard mm -hmm. master class mm -hmm. in Jacksonville in the first time that they've had a Monday Night Football game since 2011. How about Zach Taylor? Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. How about Zach Taylor having to do what he had to do? Jamar Chase obviously has a big time touchdown and yeah. showcase himself. Higgins was doing his thing. Yeah. Joe Mixon's running all over the place. The Bengals said, we heard what you've said about us being dead mm -hmm. and we do not necessarily agree. And I think Jake, 2018 was the last time he won a game. Yes. So I hope he got to drink it down. I hope he got to suck it in last night mm -hmm. because congrats, dude. You're making a name for yourself on a team that is built to go. And on the defensive side, Lou Anne Rumo got to stop when they needed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. the conversation. Got to stop whenever they needed it. I think they'll be able to figure it out. Good for the Bengals. And con man, you have a graphic now with what happened with Trevor Lawrence and CJ yeah. Beathard, fresh out of Iowa, Trevor making Lawrence. an appearance last night, started out a little bit rocky. Then he goes on to make a couple plays for the Jags. How how many quarterbacks now is it? Uh, I believe 50 quarterbacks have started an NFL game so far this season. Yeah, and it will, you know, be 51 once beat hard, not beat heard starts next week, presumably for the Jacks, because it looked as though Trevor Lawrence's ankle uh, turned left. That's on Mitch turn sideways. It was yeah. gross. That was not gross. Good. Not cool for Trevor, by the no, way. No, no, brutal. But 12 of 32 teams right now have a backup starting in week 14. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be a conversation no matter what it is. On the AFC side, it's nine of them. Okay, that's a lot, which is why the AFC is so wide open. Yep. I think if you were to look into it, NFC side, three different backup quarterbacks. And obviously, this is taking into account that maybe Derek Carr will miss a game. Bingo. Because we have seen Wolverine blood in <laughs> Derek Carr yeah. before, mm -hmm. where he has seemingly broke his leg on a Thursday. Completely. Yeah. And then on like Monday night football, four days later, he's playing somehow. Ah, yep. He re he recovers quickly. He had a shoulder, back, and head. Yeah. If he's able to come back, we will certainly be impressed. But let's assume he's going to miss at least one game and Jameis is going to be in there. 12 of 32 with backup quarterbacks as we get into meaningful football. One half of the hammer. Ah. Cowboys tone digs. That's something we're going to have to take into account whenever we're gambling, pal. Yeah, you're going to have to look at the teams where it doesn't matter if the backup quarterback is in or not. Like, you know, if you lose like a a like top tier elite guy versus you're going from Kenny Pickett to Maserati Mitch Trubisky. Like oh. a lot, some of these backup. Please, please. You what? like Mitch? Maserati. You like Mitch? Is that what I heard there? Sound like you like him. I don't know. Just, if we were to bloop, 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 go yeah. back in time, yeah. that was not the case at all. No, the minivan. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, he, this guy was called the malpractice Mitch. Right. Bingo, yeah. You Mountain remember all those things Mitch. you were saying? Now it's Maserati, <laughs> like a Gus Johnson. What happened? What's going on here? I thought any way that we could get Maserati Mitch in there, I'm going to get in there just like Gus does uh, for Marvin Harrison Jr. But, Heisman finalist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying – 
I wouldn't say I don't know how you guys took that. I I, I love Mitch there coming out. I, I mean I love him. I met oh, him. Oh, so you hate great. Kenny then? Oh. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just saying I don't know if the drop off is, is significant. Okay, so let's talk about having a good backup quarterback. It's why the Indianapolis Colts are where they are. Mm -hmm. Jake Browning last night, I think, surprised us all. D-Butt, yep. nine-year NFL vet, host yep. of Everything DB and the Man to Man podcast. Incredibly clean onesie here. Today. Wow. Incredibly clean <laughs> onesie. <laughs> What's that? We got, we, got, we got some space between I get it, but if you tucked it, you, 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 <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you look, It's not a romper. You look, you look yeah. fantastic. Romper, you, yeah. you, look, you look fantastic. You had the Jags minus 10 last night at home against uh -huh. the Bengals. I think a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. I seemingly only took the Bengals plus 10 because I had to because the standings in AJ Cincinnati Bengal legend he even went yeah. with yeah. the Jets nobody expected old Browning to do what he did last night what did you see from him I mean he played a, a hell of a game with 90 percent 350 in the air that's something we haven't seen from somebody non-drafted but he was a dog you know from beginning to end well played game obviously had needed him from wire to wire to get it down to OT Jamar Chase had a huge game mm -hmm. he was targeting him early wasn't going down the field much early but then got more comfortable as the game went on so hats off to Zach Taylor you know getting him ready uh, for his second start now uh, uh, and take his team all the way to the white. Look, at this chase play was incredible. But uh, it was, it was, it was. I like him dancing, going in the end zone, Love and then it. obviously bust out the gritty. And Chase, you know, we know he's the number one. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you lose your quarterback, all of a sudden you're staring down a much different season. Yeah. 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 T. Higgins got I'm, back out there too. He made some plays, and he was awesome. He yep. said that he knew that Jake was going to be a guy going into the week. I think he reiterated that in an interview afterwards. He's like the moxie, the confidence that he showed was something that we we're all incredibly impressed by. Are the Bengals back? I mean, the AFC, we saw we saw the war of attrition with those quarterbacks over there, so they definitely got a shot, and you got to expect that Lou, you know, that defense definitely got to pick it up and make some yeah. plays. You would think that would be the strength of this team right now, especially with a backup quarterback. They definitely have to get in there and make some plays be better. Uh, but they got a shot. You know, AFC's still wide open. Are we out on Jacksonville tone or what? I mean, we got to know. We got to figure out what Trevor Trevor's injury. I mean, CJ. Look bad. I was say, a Hawkeye. You got a guy. You got a guy. I mean, I, listen. I, I hope Trevor's not out for an extended period of time. That looked bad. And it looked very yeah, bad. He slams his helmet. That game last night, though. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, CJ did everything he could. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He fumbled so, the first time. Like, I'm the first time. Oh, you're at home. Look, 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 what did he do right after that, though? Boom. Marsh him right down the field. Kick a field goal. Let's get into overtime. And then, yeah, they couldn't get it done. But he's a player. I mean, he's a game manager. He's not going to go out there and poop the bed like some of these guys might do. Now, would you rather have Trevor Lawrence going into the playoffs? Yeah. Absolutely. That's how we're going to have to just view the AFC, I think. Who has their starters? Yes. Seriously. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's and they lost Christian Kirk. Last yeah. Night. Oh, first play. First play. What, what, what was that? Did they describe what that was? Groin. Yeah. yeah, but what? They didn't say oh, exactly yeah. what. Because that, that looked like a pretty standard yeah. football move. Yeah. Just kind of turning and falling. Weird. What was his over under 50 yards? And your uh, bet? Oh, that's what I had him at. And he had half of it on the first play that went out. But, hey, that's football, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope he bounces back, man. But a uh, tough injury. He's their yards leader. They're, it's weird. Jacksonville, uh, Ingram, reception leader. Kirk's the yards leader. And Ridley leads them in touchdown reception. So they spread the wealth. But, ETN's uh, a beast, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Back and I, healthy. And I respect Doug Peterson. I feel like he'll have it figured out. Speaking of somebody that I respect, somebody's just walked in the studio that we need to join us. Uh -huh. at I was very lucky to watch this man be a leader whenever he was a teammate of mine for a few years. Then I got an opportunity to watch him on TV. Boy, this handsome man, oh, man yeah. Yeah. brought the juice and the energy. And then last year, guess what we get to see him do? Huh. What's that? Be a head coach in the NFL. Yep. Whoa. Hell yeah. Had he ever coached in the NFL before? Absolutely not. He's a head coach, though. He's our coach. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Jeff Sander. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, big dog. I took, I took all your bets, and it, some of them hurt me. Okay, it would be like oh, this. No. Time. Jeff, are you gamb are, are you? Uh, do you get into the gambling at all now that you're no longer a coach in the NFL? Just a touch. I dabble. I dabble. I mean, I went with you know, DB. I, I, I thought I was going to ride with him, and my, you know, all my picks got hurt first quarter. I hit everything else. Yeah, Ooh, that's that a that's a problem with sports. That's how, get, that's how they get you, man. That is. It is three out of four. Let's yeah. talk about last night's game, Jeff. Let's go in. Jake Browning does something that nobody really could have fathomed that he was. They were ten point dogs last yeah. night because of him being the quarterback That's going bad. into Jacksonville. Hasn't bad. had a Monday night football game in twelve years. Can't lose that one. Obviously, then we also lose Trevor Lawrence and Christian Kirk. All things wrong for Jacksonville last night, even for though sure. we love their team. Do you believe in this Bengals team now with Browning, especially with the AFC with the way it's looking right now? I do not. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I wish I could. Hey, here's my thing last night, right? Like, if you're Jacksonville, I mean, one dude is not going to beat me. I'm just going to say it right now. Like, if there's – and listen, you've done a lot of defense in your life, yep. man. If there's going to be one dude who you're not going to let beat you – Jamar Chase. He's not going to be the guy. A buck 50? Like, he had a 70-plus yard and a 60-plus oh, yeah. yard, dude. Oh, yeah. 150 yards coming out of one dude. Mm -hmm. Like, at some point, you just got to go, hey, man, 
circle the wagons. We're going to cover him. Let Higgins beat us. Let, you know, let somebody, let's mix and beat, let somebody beat us, but don't let that guy beat us, especially with a quarterback who isn't as seasoned as you would like. The kid played lights out. Yep. I'm not taking anything away Spinning from the QB. It. Spinning, Spinning it. it. Listen, mix and play good. Like they, they play good, but man, that guy's not going to be the guy that beat me. And that, that was a part that was disappointing to me. And, and also, after Trevor gets hurt, you missed a field goal. You can't do yeah. that either. Like that, that, that was brutal. There was just too many mistakes from Jacksonville side. Uh, the Mc, hard McManus part for me came is, back and made one, by the way. McManus <laughs> came back. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> the one that didn't matter nearly as much. But that's where we are. They won in They all matter. They all matter. It, yeah, it, obviously, it was a painful loss if you're Jacksonville. Um, but but from the Bengals side, I just from an offensive perspective, I don't know that they though they have those type of production nights. All right. Uh, so I hear what you say there with the whole we're not going to let this one guy beat us, yeah. and that's like. I think that's football conversation. I think it's TV or uh, TV conversation. Let's talk about you being head coach. Yes. I haven't got a chance to really uh -huh. d chat yeah. with you about being yeah, yeah, head yeah, coach. Yeah. So everything I had heard about that building was potentially that it was in ruins, okay, whenever you were brought in there. Yeah. And we have a lot of simpatico family in that building. Yes. And I asked immediately, like, how's Jeff doing? You know, how, how's Jeff doing in there? And a lot of people, I'm not going to say exactly who it was, but a lot of people in that building had the same message. It was like, our culture has completely gone to hell. There's people late for meetings. There's people missing treatment. There's guys gambling yeah. against the Indianapolis Colts who are actually on yeah, the team. <laughs> in there. It was like the building, the building just kind of fell apart. Yeah. So Jeff is coming in here, and he's going to be a guy who's just going to have to take it on the shins from everybody as he has to re state what a professional football team looks like is that an accurate depiction of what you had to do and your first day in there yeah. were you caught off guard completely about what you were walking into <laughs> it was more than i anticipated i'll put it like that i'll church it up a little bit and, and there was <laughs> there was a lot of what you're saying that was going on so it was um but i, I think i think ursay knew that so like i, I will say i think ursay i think i think Bal i think they knew kind of where the situation was kind of how it had gotten a bit off the rail and kind of what it needed to look like for it to get back to, to you know, what they what they envisioned. Um, I knew going in, I mean, I, you know, my conversation with Jim was, we're going to go 0-8. Like, just recognize we are... No shot. Yeah, no, first of all, you just, you just got rid of all of your offensive staff, right? Yeah. Like, like, so just put that aside. We're going to walk in this room. Parks, Fraser's calling place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we he's have a 30-year-old who yeah. hasn't had a room, right? Like, he's never, like, been in charge of a room yet. And I love Park. Great kid. Great like, guy. Great love kid. Great kid. Great kid. No, no, no. Sweet I'm, boy. I'm, I'm being real. And a good football guy. But, yeah, you love him. But he had never... He had never had his own room yet, which means for those out there, they, he didn't, he didn't, you know, he had never been like the quarterback's coach or the receiver's coach or whatever, where you're sitting in front of a room every day. So I knew we were going to have offensive challenges. We had a quarterback they weren't sure of, right? So there was a lot going in. My job when I went in was there were two things I knew. I, I wanted to make sure the culture was going to get back to where it was when I was there and when you guys had seen it with productivity. And the other thing was from the offensive line perspective, like stop the nonsense, stop the noise. We need to get these guys back playing together. They're going to have bumps. They're going to have bruises. It's not always going to be pretty, but we got to get the, if, if the team wants to go anywhere, they put enough assets in those five, they got a ball. Three guys and, getting paid more than you ever made there. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> different money. You're bro. in the ring of honor. Oh, this guy's in the ring of honor. Money. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they got different rings, like all kind of rings they can afford, but it, it was, uh, it was definitely a challenge, but but again, I never looked at it the way I think the outside looked at. It. I knew what I was getting in for, and I knew what you know it was gonna. There would be a lot of a lot of like you said, you know, beatings press wise, whatever it was, fan wise. Um, but I but I I was glad to take the opportunity to do it. We were I, proud was, of I was proud of it. I was going to bat for you as much as I possibly could, just yeah. because. When you don't win, it's hard to go to bat, bro. Well, you got I had to like get that first one. Yeah. That first one. Yeah. yeah, just we beat yeah. the Raiders. Oh, yeah. Here yeah. we yeah. go. Oh yeah, the greatest coach ever. Yeah. Yeah. Raiders, we had a good yeah. time. Hot, hot. I was pumped for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I got pretty loud after that. Oh, yeah. Man, <laughs> I had to kind of just. You got to come. Let's just not bring it up. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, coach. So obviously, when you get hired, some people were you know talking about how they were pissed. Other guys deserve it all that sure, bullshit sure. right how did you deal with that because uh, it's not like you were saying hey I, that guy shouldn't be the head coach no i should be the head coach absolutely you were reached out to to be the head coach and then you kind of got buried because of the fact that you'd ever coached before right like what was your reaction to that and did you tell every, anybody like hey go f yourself or anything like that or yeah, no? nah, so good, good discipline yeah, yeah there's there's not, i will say this my biggest concern when i walked in was the coaches like making sure mm -hmm. and the first meeting i ever had with these guys hey man i, I ain't trying to pretend like 
I, I know nearly as much as you guys know yeah. about whatever position you're coaching, whatever. My job is to help you be the best at whatever. So whether it's Gus Bradley, whether it's Parks Frazier, whether, I mean, you, you just looked through that, the whole building and said, what can I do to help you guys, right? And so I think everybody understood that there's a level of humility. I wasn't trying to be like, hey man, I have all the answers right here. We're gonna walk in. We're gonna correct all these problems. And I think I was, I was um, for those guys, it was, it was good because they knew I wasn't the one beating on. I wasn't beating on the desk for myself. Right? Yeah. I was like, "Hey, man, what can I do to help fix whatever problems?" Listen, they knew they're going to have to start playing young players. You think our defense want to go play? I mean, we sat a lot of good players yeah. to play some young guys who are now playing really good. But you think Gus wanted that? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like exactly. His There's resume. Things. His yeah. resume. Exactly. Yeah. So you're sitting on that. But let me tell you, if I can die on that hill for him, I'm I'm glad to do it because he's a freaking great DC. He, the guy understands ball. He gets people ready to go. That was my role, right? And so that's just what you do, man. You don't – I didn't sweat all the – man, listen, I told you, I have forgotten more football than everybody who's making fun of me has mm -hmm. ever yes. thought, right? And, <laughs> like, and so I – Amen, amen. I'm like, bro, bro, I ain't sweating it even a little bit. Like, these dudes, you know, off the couch blasting me, I get it, man. I wasn't your pick. But I will say this, too, from Jim's perspective and Chris's perspective. I think, you know, Gus and his whole staff was brand new. Right, they had just fired oh, yeah. the, the two play callers on offense. Mm -hmm. Like yep. when you looked at the staff as, as as a whole, there wasn't a lot of places they, they wanted to go, you know, because they're going to have to look at this and revisit it at yeah. the end of the season. So it was an easy like come in, do your eight weeks, and get out. Right, and so um, did you want the job? I wanted it under condition. Because when I saw, when I heard you wanted the job, I'm like, Jeff. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> <situation. laughs> hey, 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 coach is only 32 and over. That, yeah, right. That's I get dude. it. I get it. But and, I, and I will say this: it, the the lifestyle part for me. That's what I'm was saying. Was the biggest, and and that part when Chris and I sat down, that was the biggest. That is the biggest issue, right? Like I, I, I will tell you very frankly. I ain't gonna be there from 5 a.m. To, to midnight. Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all know, but I'm gonna eat dinner with the family. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. like, and I have that Bruce Arians, like you know, Tony Dungy yeah. like mentality, bro. Like we're gonna go do it, but I ain't, you know, I ain't living. Desk, like I'm, I'm good, here. right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm. And Jim knew that as well. Jim had he's like, hey man, if you want to do this thing, let's interview at the end, see what happens. And it was a great experience. Like I, mean, I tell people, I had to write like. I got Jim Caldwell, Tony, like I got all these guys. I wrote like a 200-page manifesto. Yeah, dude, about hey, this is what you would do with your Stout. program. Here's the type of players to you Jim, want. no, uh, to Chris, to Ballard. Uh, you know, when you're presenting to Ballard and 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 the and the, and the you know as the, as they were going, and obviously it would go to Jim later. But as you're going through that, there was exercises that I went through that were phenomenal, man. As a leader, like what do you want? What type of staff do you want? Who would you keep? Who wouldn't you keep? Like. Player-wise, who do you like? Which direction you want to head? There is a, and I will say this, man. It gave me a completely different perspective for coaches. Like these dudes, man. Like, like they take a lot of shells. Love man. ball. Yeah. ball. Love ball. Love ball. <laughs> Love some ball, dude. Like live it, breathe it, die. Like the whole deal. I mean, when I tell you, there are some dudes on staff who have been doing this a long time, man. Mm -hmm. And ain't seen a kid play a sport. Like, I was like, <laughs> that's tough. Dude. I'm like, nah, that's, that's just kind of the requirement, the expectation. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. That's why most former players you hear from, it's like, nah, I'm not born to be yeah. a yeah. coach. Yeah. Especially and, ones on TV and radio. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah, we're not born to do it ever. Uh, d but has a question for you. Yeah, I saw you uh, throwing some pancakes at Fox earlier uh, oh, on, yes. the, on the set. And now we got AQ who shows, shines a light and shows the guy yep. in the trenches a ton. Connor mentioned 50 quarterbacks have started a game this year. Ooh. What are some of these offensive lines? And obviously, when you get the backup quarterback, the offensive line, I think, becomes even more important. What are some of these offensive lines around the league who don't get enough credit who you think can make a run? Oh. And do listen, offensive lines stink now? Offensive lines have taken a, um, a step back, but I will say because of what is being coached. Like, mm -hmm. we coach so much more scheme-specific now than we ever did, right? Like when, when, when I was playing, it was much more about fundamentals, techniques. Yep. Yeah, this will translate. Yeah, yeah it'll football. translate to Press whatever grip. it is, right? Yeah, it'll go you know, hands in the dirt, right? All those kind of things. Now it is much more about specific, you know, scheme, whether it's Mike McDaniel, whether it's Shanahan, whether it's – so you look at those two teams, their offensive line, although they have to be good, I'm not trying to minimize their – but they don't have to be like Philly's offensive line. Mm -hmm. Like Philly's offensive line has to be cut from a different mold than those guys because of what they asked to do, right? And so as you're looking at the way that teams are, are judged, especially offensive line-wise, it makes complete sense 
for certain ones like Carolina's offensive line, a lot's going to be asked of them to protect Bryce Young, right? Mm. Like, I guess they're not doing a lot. They of were not. Just say it didn't work out great, right? So it's it's like it's those kinds of things. I will tell you, an underrated offensive line, Buffalo Bills. They get blasted really? all the time about not being able to run it, about not being able to do whatever they're doing. These guys are a good group. They can make it happen. The Colts offensive line doesn't get nearly enough love, right? Like mm. these they guys have played. These guys have played lights out. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have played lights hey. out this season. Hey, we're in it. Oh man, they in it. They, they, they got some steering power, Hey, brother. Gardner Minshew, too. A Lightning mania. football player. Minshew mania. Running wild, brother. Bro. <laughs> I, I got to meet him at the uh, training camp or whatever. And, you know, a couple years back, he was all over the internet. He had living in his RV, making videos. He was in commercials mm -hmm. because he's this lightning rod of a character. I'm like, hey, you've kind of disappeared from the internet. His eyes won't play ball. Like I, I, think he, I think he got a chance to experience all that and was like, this is not, yeah, no, I just want to play ball. And he just, he knows that he doesn't have forever, right? you know? So he's like, I just want to enjoy every single moment. And even though Anthony Richardson was there, all the teammates were like, Gardner has been uh -huh. a great asset to this building Absolutely. as a leader and everything. And now that he has an opportunity, it's not always perfect. No. 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 Boy, there are some bad decisions made <laughs> sure. in the Gardner Minshew experience. Absolutely. Uh -huh. But at the end, we're, we're in it. Yeah. And Shane Steichen, I don't know if you got to meet him, Shane Steichen, this guy has had to deal with Jonathan Taylor not wanting to be there. Oh, bro. And now he's there. He's had to deal with the number five or four overall pick getting hurt in four out of five games. Yes. And then losing him. And now Gardner Minshew's in here. He Alec Pierce just scored his first touchdown. He was first round draft pick last year. Yeah. So it's like the things that they've had to go through to get to this point is insane to think about. Bro, it, first of all, Steichen is a freaking stud. Dog. Yeah. And got some brass cojones, bro. Like this dude drops them out oh, there. Yeah. All and the time. And, and continually makes like good calls. Like I got a ton of respect for what this guy's doing. I will say this. I got a ton of fan, I mean, a ton of, of, of friends who still live in Indy, right? Everyone I get is about Minshew mania. I mean, these dudes are fanatic. They want the jorts, you know, they, 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 like, they, they want the cutoffs, bro. They want the whole, yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. The, the, the whole deal, man, they have bought into this guy. And to your point, like there's something electric that's going on with Indy. And you saw them, man, they just putting one in front of another. They keep finding ways to win. The defense finds a way, offense finds a way, special teams blocking two punts. Like, uh, well, yeah. Stonehouse yeah. had to have surgery on his knee. Tease and peace to that, pal. We hope you come back. Yeah, that, that looked terrible. It did look terrible. A couple of your former teammates, too, doing a hell of a job on that staff. Reggie, Reggie Wayne, receivers, yes. uh, Kato June in there with the linebackers, my boy Mike Mitch in there with the secondary. By so the that way, was a good beast. job with Shane keeping those guys on the staff, holding them over. All, all, all three of those guys that you talked about are difference makers, right? I mean, like Kato, Mike, those dudes. Mike got a different, now he got a, he got a different mentality. Oh, now. yeah. That dude's for real. Oh, yeah. That's a dog for real. <laughs> all, I mean, I'm telling you. He, nice. He is, listen, he is not about the, he is not about the new rules of ball. Mm -hmm. right, Whatever <laughs> y'all want to take that, bro. However y'all want to take that, he don't care about the new rules, bro. It's about, about de cleating folks, yeah. right? Kato, same Him and way. Reggie being on this, I like yeah. that. Oh, oh, yeah. and Reggie, you know, he, well, you know Reggie. Yeah. Like, he, he is, I mean, that dude is for real. And he got Pierce Ball. He got Josh Downs. Yep. Making, Pittman. I mean, these Pittman. dudes have, yeah, Pittman. Oh, he, but he was already, but I'm talking yeah. about these dudes. He is, okay. Josh, I think Josh Downs' impact, to me, has been undervalued and underrated. Oh, yeah. Because this guy in the middle is opening up everything for everybody. Did you see up. him in training camp? Beast. No. Couldn't catch a ball. Oh, you talking about Josh? Yeah, Josh Downs. Oh. Training camp. He was in preseason games. I think he had like five drops yeah. right in front of my eyes mm -hmm. in his preseason game. I'm like, this poor guy. Uh -oh. No. Let me you know, tell you. you know, but then as soon as the game started for real, it was like diving catches. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is my favorite guy on the team oh, yeah. all of a That's sudden. My, so, so my son went to school with him at Carolina, right? So my son walked on at Carolina as a receiver. Downs is, in a, Downs is from my area in Atlanta. And let me just tell you, dude, like my son, first, first week he's playing – He's like, this is the smartest yes. receiver I have ever been. He's like, Dad, he, when the ball is snapped, this dude is getting vertical and he sees every rotation and he makes play after play. He said, like, this dude is ahead of the coaches. This dude knows yeah. ball. I remember telling Ballard last year we were talking about, this guy is an absolute beast. Makes sense. And he's, he's okay, a little so he guy. Yeah. He's, 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 he's a little guy. He's a little small guy. Hey, look at you. Your Good final guy. gift. Hey, yeah. thank yeah. you. You made me be scout. And scout. Chris puts his hours in too now. What's Caleb, Caleb Downs. This is oh, little brother. Little brother. That's yeah. his little brother. Uh, starting, at, starting at Bama, roll I, tide. I, I a freshman. He, they're, they're saying he's Hall of Famer. Bro, they're, roll tide. So uh do you remember you uh, Big Chat? You. you remember Big Chat? <laughs> yes, man. 
Uh, Josh Chapman. Uh, you might not have been there. No, no, yeah. Josh Chapman, next regime, D tackle from Alabama. Mm -hmm. I think he was a captain for Alabama as a sophomore oh. or as a junior. Yep. Multiple time national champion. He's beloved down there. Okay. Reason why he's beloved. Classic D tackle. We're talking like 370. <laughs> oh. Southern accent. Like, I like incredibly him infectious personality. Yep. Great cook. We're talking about he's cooking an entire grocery store just because it's a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he, 375, he might have to. He's awesome. He was his locker was right next to mine. So like I grew grew very tight with it. He is the man. We go down to Alabama uh -huh. to do the simulcast or whatever. See him. He's now part of the strength staff or something. Yep. I think Coach Saban's just like just want this guy in the building. Yeah, yeah. 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 he's the guy. He's we just guy. want in the building for whatever it is. I come over. He comes over to chat with us. We dap him up. We're like, what's up? And we go, hey, who's somebody that we should know about? And he goes. We got a safety boy, best ever. And I'm like, what are you? He's a gold jacket. Haven't even seen him do anything. This guy's a gold <laughs> jacket. Yeah, and I said, Who? He yeah. said, Caleb Downs, this boy different. And I'm like, what's different? He said, ever. He different. He, he, he's a true freshman. Yes. And he's leading them in tackles. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's calling out checks, too. He's reading plays. I get, he blew something up in the Georgia game mm -hmm. that was like he saw it beforehand. Yeah. It, that Downs family's for real. Oh, bro. Pops, and is, Josh, Pops is a coach. Josh has been a hero for the Colts. Yeah. I yeah. mean, to your point, he, he has been a hero no for us. Dad is a coach. Caleb won the state in my area last year. This kid, whatever you needed him to do, you want him to run it, you want to play defense, you want him to return punt, you want him to kick it, whatever he can do, oh, dude, yeah. is the and best. Will smoke you. Yes. <laughs> smoke you, bro. Yeah. Hey, puts this part on you. It is not a free. You talking about that, Mike Mitchell? Like that is seemingly how they talked about this guy. He's yes. a true freshman. It's like, yeah. of course, Saban. Yeah. 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 You know? Obviously. Yeah. That's why they put him in the college football <laughs> playoffs. <laughs> oh, that's why they put him in there. FSU. Ty has a question for you, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. You were talking about uh, Carolina's offensive line a little bit, and and your situation with the Colts was a little bit different, obviously, because you had the previous relationship with Jim, and you kind of sounds like you knew all. All the expectations sure. laid everything on the table when you got in there but when you look at the situation right now in Carolina mm. do you think they need to hire an established head like can a first time head coach go in there knowing what we know about Tepper where you know he's calling him to the carpet every Monday he wants to be super involved with everything <laughs> like based on your experiences what's like, your, what's sounds your, exhausting yeah, how, how did, you see frank? did you see frank he, oh, looks he was exhausted, yeah, he exhausted was. bro you're he was fighting like, fires everywhere dude including your owner like yeah. your owner walks up dropping f-bombs in front of the media like <laughs> that does not help you that is not helping anybody I, I would say i would say yes i would say in fact this i would say getting an offensive driven guy similar to what the colts just did right mm -hmm. go get a dude who you have seen run an offense similar to what you want right and let him go run with it and understanding that this is what it's going to require now i will say this about here like the colts had a much better roster mm -hmm. than what o the panthers exactly. have exactly o-line specific but but i mean you looked at them in gen like like they whether it's Pittman, I mean, you, you had Pierce, they had just drafted. Like, they had dudes in the building on defense at the point they had Shaq, they had Zaire, they had EJ Speed, like, they had Buck in the middle. They, I mean, so they had guys. Buck, that's cool. The, the, the issue Buck. from the Panthers is they're devoid in a lot of areas. So whoever they're going to get, mm -hmm. like, Tepper going to have to pump down, man. Like, like you're not there. You're, you're not at the point where you're going to go win – 10 games, mm -hmm. right? Like five games is going to have to be good, right? And so unless you just invest a bunch of money, bring a bunch of dudes in right away, it, it just, they, they don't have, they don't got that gear yet. You yeah, know what I mean? they, uh, there's something. And what I will say is I'm very thankful that Tepper's an owner in the NFL. Yes. <laughs> He's just chirping. All yeah. the time. He's just chirping. Now, another owner also seemingly back in his bag, mm -hmm. both on Twitter, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. press conferences. Big time. How do you feel about the state of Jim Mercer? Right? <laughs> Both of us know him very well. Very well. Very well. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you were the first call that he made whenever he was looking for somebody to be a head coach in the middle of the season when it's going terrible. So you're very tight with him. I believe me and Jim also pretty tight, as yeah. tight as you could possibly be. And I'm just kind of watching him live his life right now. Feels like he has gotten to the point where he looks in a mirror. He said this at the last owner's meeting. They were going through all the uh, photos, owner's photos from yeah. all the meetings. And he is in the longest, the most amount of photos. Photos. That's right. So he's the longest tenured owner. Yeah. And there was like something that switched in his head where he's like, this is my league. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's kind 100%. of almost how he started like yes. operating. How do you feel about owners in the modern day right now 
Jim Ursay, Tepper, others, Josh Harris, Magic Johnson. Mark Davis. I mean, it's like becoming a thing. <laughs> Mark Davis is awesome. Like Mark Davis, Davis is awesome. But how do you feel about that as a whole? I'm going to put them all on different levels. Yeah. I want to say this about Jim because I do have a personal relationship. I, obviously, I like Jim. Um, you knew something changed in him with the whole Dan Snyder thing. Yes. You remember, like, he walks out, and I guess, like, the whole was thing the was, yeah, we're going to be mom. Nobody's going to say anything. Dude walks out and is like, excuse me. I got something to say. <laughs> all over. Let's do this. I got no fear. He hires me. I mean, like, the dude, has, he got no fear, right? He's just like, hey, man, I'm on a different level right now. What y'all going to do to me? He, he just has a no-gas principle right now going on in his uh-huh. life. And so when he when he goes through it, I think, you know, it's, it's good for our game when – when owners care, right? Like, you, you want Agreed. ownership to care about the game. You don't want, like, the guy who's got 12 businesses and this is just sure. one of it, right? Collecting money. Yeah, you, you, want, you want them to actually care. Now, do they all make the right decisions? No, but, but there is a level of respect from players when your owner knows who you are, cheers you on. And I would say that, that's the part of I know about Jim that I don't know about other owners. I don't know Mark Davis well enough to know if he's that guy, but, man, He's that guy. He's like it. It. Yeah, so he, he he loves this guy, right? He got yeah. AP in there, and he's like, "Hey, I'm yeah. gonna love on my like." Though that matters, man. When you're finally done with the game, dude, you don't want your owner to be like, "Hey, I don't even know that guy." Like, business you, and businesses, it matters. Yeah, yeah, you know, if the person at the top knows the people that are working, yes, they're yes. gonna operate a little bit differently. Exactly. But right. whatever the people at the top are making decisions that are affecting everybody's lives have no tie to the day to day. I think people care. Now, with that being said, we do not agree with Jim Mercy tweeting Kimberly Martin and Stephen A. No, 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 no those are his opinions. Yes. Right. Those yeah. are his opinions yeah, in that yeah. whole thing. Yeah, I'm not he getting it all. And, yeah. and he is a billionaire who uh, is not scared. No. And, uh, I mean, you're just going to have to charge it to the game. But I appreciate uh, the way they responded to it all. Let's talk about the Raiders a little bit with Antonio Pierce getting high. They're Love. saying seven to ten jobs are going to be open. For mm. sure. Seven to ten jobs are going to be open. expectations, dude. Yeah. It's silly. Like, like I mean – I think people think, like, when you look at a season, y'all know this, man. You look at the season. When you start the year, mm-hmm. you look, there's six teams. Every year that you'll go, they got a real shot to win. Sure. I mean, like we played on the Colts. Every year we thought, okay, we, we have a shot at this thing, right? Not every team woke up that year and goes, hey, we got, you know, they may lie to you and be like, oh, yeah, we got a shot, right? And then they go three and whatever, right? But, but you you look at these teams and realize, but owners have this expectation that Fans it's going to be like oh, Houston. Yeah. I mean, you know I mean like that is that is a freakazoid right now, dude. Like I can't I cannot believe that how good they have gotten as quickly as they have gotten. But that's that's like the needle in the haystack, man. It's gonna require more usually than that type of turnaround. I just think ownership has these expectations that fans guys, though too. Well fans too, yeah, yeah. The reason why ownership has it, I think, is because now with social media and now with everything. You hear everything everybody thinks. Like back in the day, point. back in the day, it was only like what this studio yeah. decided mm-hmm. to tell you, yeah. what the newspaper sure. decided to tell you. Now it's like everybody has a platform for an opinion. For better or worse. Now, do, yeah, we don't agree with that, but <laughs> sure. you do hear everything. So I think owners who own a company and a business, especially like Robert Kraft, yeah. who has, uh, his stadium's not selling out. Ooh. He's like, why is my stadium not selling out? You go to the immediately social media, you can see what every wicked awesome asshole yeah, thinks right. in a matter of seconds. Exactly. I think that is heightened to owners being like, well, I can't have the perception of complacency or it's going to ruin our business where it might have been the same in the past. Now it's like in their face Absolutely. all the time. I think that's a real deal. That's a, that's a great point. And I will say that, you know, when I realized that the most was this year with Pittsburgh, like, Tom, you know, the whole way, and you just felt it from Tom, like you felt the weight of him letting go of Matt Canada mm-hmm. when he did. And whether you love Matt Canada, hate Matt Canada, think he's Nobody was in that fan. first one, I don't You know think. what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not a lot of love. Yeah, really. But if you're True. in that, you felt it for Tomlin. Like, he's like, man, my job is to get these guys to do their best job. And he felt, and I remember Dungy being like this. Like, Dungy would, he, did, it didn't, he ain't firing guys. Like, this dude is going to go to the, he will not fire guys. Whether you think he should or not, I think it is becoming increasingly difficult to do that because of what you said. How loud. Dude, you heard it? Like, in, we, like we're in Utah. Oh, yeah. We were in Utah. Mm-hmm. That's very far away. Yeah. Very Utah, far. I think, known to be like genuinely good people. Good, nice. Yeah. Genuinely yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely yeah. good. And we, we opened the show, and all of a sudden, it's like 400 people. Fire Canada. Canada. Like, oh, is that the same my word? Are they talking about Canada, the country? <laughs> yeah. Are they talking about Matt Canada out yeah. here? No it way. got loud, dude. It 
It got very that loud. That is painful. And I did appreciate that Tomlin basically said, like, he felt like a coward. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, feel yeah. like, because mm -hmm. when you fire somebody, you're pawning blame off. That's right. On this particular person, as opposed to me. I appreciated that angle Agreed. from Tomlin. I hadn't heard that from anybody, I don't think. Oh, and, like, the new owners, too, with their coaches. Like, we did the Tepper. He's on his sixth, including interim. It looks like Josh Harris now. He's, you know, their oh, first year. They'll probably let go of Ron. And then you look at the Waltons. They did one year with Hackett, yeah. out, and then they brought in Sean Payton. Like, That's right. They, they, no one wants you to buy win. a team, not, you want to win. Yeah, not just no, fans. And also, you buy a team, you got a lot of cake. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's no coach's salary cap. You so know, that. That's a thing of beauty. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's, that's why you did that 200 that's, page. That's exactly yeah. right. You and Jimbo are the same contract, right? Because you might always make it eight games. All right. You know what I mean? Like, like Frank's bank account ain't hurting. No, whether no. From, 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 oh, from, from, from like, Indy or here. They did the math. It's like 25,000 bucks a day for the next like eight years or yeah, so. Yes. Yes. 70 years, Frank. Through 2026, no, I like think. like 80% of the collection. Hey, congrats, Frank. Yeah. Smart man. You did it. You did it. Tony has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, first and foremost, all I can do is stare at your hands because they are absolute bear paws. <laughs> and it looks like you just punch trees all day long, so I don't want those on me. Just want to let you know. But you were there with uh, Shaq Leonard last year. Yes. He was hurt, but you were there. You were in the building. You've heard. You know him. Yeah. Why do you think that didn't work out? Because they paid him. And normally when you pay a guy that much, you he's not a guy that gets cut in the middle of the season. And do you think he still has enough juice to help the Eagles here on a run to end the season? Two, yeah, yeah. No. Two, two things. I would say probably for the Colts is you have – Zaire, who is balling, mm -hmm. right, and playing well. Speed was balling, mm -hmm. playing good. They already let go of Bobby last year, right, to go to the Giants. So they sure. kind of knew. They, I think they had an idea of what they were going to get out of. And then you have Shaq, who's coming off the injury and wants to be the guy again, mm -hmm. right? But you've seen other guys build and play to the level that they're playing to. And I think he's super competitive, being Shaq. He wants to be on the field. all day. He doesn't want to get taken off. Yeah. And if you are taking it off, and he's having issue with that. It makes it difficult for Gus to manage that, for the team to manage that, right? So it becomes a, is this really worth it? We, we have Z playing well. We got Speed playing well. We can, we can move on from that. As far as <clears throat> what I think is. Hey, he was intro <clears throat> last just like four weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. At the stadium. Still big, introed last. Big deal. You know, when, really? a, when the defense was coming out on the field. Really? Plays yeah. went nuts. And then they would, like, Got take – then they were taking him off on third downs, taking him off on fourth. It was yeah. weird. It was a weird situation. Yeah. And you know he ain't coming off happy. No. Like, no, 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 Right? Like, they come off – they got – they piss in vinegar, right? They're like, don't take me off. That becomes a distraction. And I think from Shane's point, he's dealt with enough, right? Like, at some yeah. point, you got to go, hey, man, we can find ways to win – this is what I do, do know about Shaq. Even when he was, uh, you, you know, injured and not playing, the dude from from diagnosing football plays to understanding personnel formations, groupings, this dude is a savant, bro. Like I, when I tell you, he understands football from the defensive side as well as anybody I've been around. So he can diagnose it and see it and be able to help guys. So going to the Eagles, especially in their defense, physically, even if he's not there helping guys understand where they can be, and then his link in the middle, man. I mean, the guy can pick it off. He can knock mm -hmm. balls free. He has that kind of tenacious ability, and he loves ball. Loves ball. Loves ball. Like you talked about Minshew, like all he wants to do is play ball, bro. So he we got a chance to see him. Um, he came to the game. Yeah. Right after he got cut? Right after he got cut, because mm -hmm. he had a suite there. And it was a Sunday, and he had a good time to hang out with the family, so he came to the game. And I got a chance to chat with him, you know? And obviously, Indianapolis is going to miss that, dude. His yeah. energy, oh, everything yeah. he did for the community. Yeah. You saw he was doing the turkey giveaway. Yeah, right after. Literally the day he was cut. Like, yeah. we're very appreciative to watch him play and everything he did. Felt like Gus Bradley's defense, though, just never was the right one for him, right? Yeah. And he was hurt when Gus Bradley's defense was kind of put into the Colts. That's right. So he's coming back. It's already kind of been built and established without him. Kind of a misfit is kind of how I thought it was. And, His style of play, too, not and, really. And, and Z, man. Like, like Zaire's a dog. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Walter Payton, man of the year. Yes, okay. congrats to that. Zaire. Well deserved. Hell right? yeah. Yeah. Zaire. Zaire. yeah, dude is a stud. But that's the other thing, man. Like, our game, when, you know, when guys get injured, unfortunately, other guys, and thank God, I mean, thank God it did, because that's how I got my start, right? Like, when you get guys who have been a, basically a special teams guy, and he gets his ability to start, and he balls like yeah. he did, it makes it easier for a team to move on from a massive contract or a situation they don't want to get into because the guy behind them is playing at that level. Not fair. That's our, no, exactly. But not, that's our business. But right? it's reality. Uh, speaking of not fair but reality, the Jets have fired Tim Boyle. Wow. What? Gone. 
What? Oh, boy. The Jets releasing oh, quarterback no. Tim Boyle and signing veteran quarterback Brett Rippon oh. off Seattle's practice squad per Justina Anderson. Rippon started a game this season for L.A. Boyle started the last two games for the Jets. And obviously, not a lot of conversations have been had about the Jets, mostly because watching their game sucks so bad because <laughs> they are so horrendous. Yeah, it is bad. You doing, bad. You doing this with that jersey over your shoulder is just... Speaking of, Aaron Rodgers will be joining us in about 21 <laughs> minutes live in this studio. We'll get his immediate reaction to Timmy B being let go and what else the future could look at in an exclusive sit-down interview. Ooh. Yep. Right over nice. there. That's right. I'm doing Barbara Walters over there. I love it. I know it's going to be hard-hitting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got notes. <laughs> I, I got notes. Uh, Jeff, you played with Aaron Rodgers, yeah. obviously. Yeah. All the things are being said about him, I guess, before we started interviewing him and having conversations with him, were wild for us because he was just basically casted as a smug prick Yep. Mean guy. Mm -hmm. eager to, and then we get a chance to meet him and chat with him. It's like definitely unique. Uh, sure. Definitely a hippie for sure. But like you're talking like football <laughs> yeah. guy. Yes. Like oh, old yeah. school football dude. And then when he comes to the Jets, it's like there was this big celebration and parade and everything. And it only lasted four plays. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting a chance to punt it for a year is how everybody's viewing it. Mm -hmm. But the Jets fans are having to sit through this oh, year. Yeah. In which they're gonna, trying to run it back next year. What a time what a story Ooh. and what are the possibilities you think with him and this Jets team with how it's constructed right now if he was to play next year oh bro I mean they, they would be Super Bowl contender even with that O-line absolutely dude. you think because he covers up bro. that stuff bro listen there are there are a handful of guys to ever be able to do it like he does it and when you talk about when Tom Brady walked into Tampa or sure. when Peyton Manning went into to Denver yeah, Stafford, to, Stafford to LA, LA right? Like these are different dudes, man. And look, if, if you don't think he's seen every blitz known to man, you haven't seen. He's seen every coverage they're going to try to give him. He understands how to put his line in the best place to do it. Whatever that looks like, right? You never feel like you're out of a game when you have a quarterback like that, man. And when you got the defense they have, you have the running. Think about the running backs. How much better they'll be when you got that guy back there. No longer can dudes play nine guys down and go, hey, throw it to beat me, right? You got Wilson. That's all we're worried about. Like, it's going to open the entirety of the offense up. He, he is a he is a I'll tell you this the first time I was ever with Aaron we were just warming up in QB center exchange right before practice you go out there I've been with Peyton now 13 years right so I go to snap the ball the first time I'm wearing shotgun I snap the ball back and I hear and I was like I said bro did you just gas that because it, it made a freaking hum yeah. past my ear right I was like that hits me in the head I'm gonna die you know what I, mean? I was like Bo, you just gas it? And he's like, no, man, I'm just warming up. Come on, bro. And I was like, <laughs> good Lord. Like, like, I'm just telling you, that the, the, the way that dude lets that thing go, so it's what next I, level. I think with what you just said and what we've all kind of realized, this entire team was built for Aaron to come 100%. in here. Yes. Yes. And then whenever it gets ended on September 11th, four offensive plays into it, mm. then you got Zach Wilson trying to go in and do what Aaron's doing with a brand new offense, his West Coast offense that Aaron's been in for actually 18 years yeah, right. where he knows the ins and outs of it. And then Tim Boyle goes in there. It's like kind of a, I don't want to say impossible task for these people, Close but down. this this is what the – this is what the team was built to do this year, yeah. and it did not happen. It was 100% impossible. Yes. Like, the whole idea that somebody else was going to come in, they were bad when they had him starting as a quarterback that the offense was built around him. Like, it's not going to all of a sudden be good with an offense that's not built for him, putting him back in. <laughs> By the way, dudes were wearing somebody else's shirt last year, right? They're like, Mike White, yeah. Exactly. You're yeah. like, holy crap, now we're going to ask him hey. to go back. Hey, Zach Wilson's a good boy. He's a good boy. Right. Right. Listen, a good boy. Nice good boy. boy. Great, hey, great, hey, great. He get possible. He a pro. He get paid. No, hey, that's a, you're such a defensive hey, guy, hey, bro. You are <laughs> such a defensive you guy. Pay, you got drafted two overall, so we know you got the skill set. Now you're sitting behind Aaron Rodgers. You got training camp. You got these meetings. And pop, like, we just saw, what did Jake Browner do last night? Zach Wilson's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. Well, I don't know if Zach Wilson thinks the team around him is great. I just <laughs> I don't know if he thinks. <laughs> that defense? We have some news ball, yeah. out of the game last night now. Uh, Coach Peterson has announced oh. that Trevor Lawrence okay. has a high ankle sprain. That is wow. good because yeah. that, oh, that's big. that son of a bitch turned sideways. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That thing yeah, was sideways. Yeah. And the look on his face and the punch of the mm -hmm. ground, mm -hmm. he obviously knew something was wrong. High ankle sprains a few weeks. Happy to hear that, Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. 
sucks that it happened. Could have been worse. Happy to hear it's not like a dislocated ankle or a fractured ankle or something Mm -hmm. like that. He can get back if the Jags can continue to do what they had been doing until they lose to Jake Brown. Tough division down there. Hey, AFC South (laughs) is a wagon. Could have three. Could have three out with, the, with the way people were popping mm-hmm. off at the mouth about the AFC Thank South. You. That's right. You guys don't know about the wagon. You don't now. know about it. You have no <laughs> idea. No idea. Oh, three teams. Three teams in. Speaking Talk of, CJ Stroud will be joining us at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time on YouTube oh. and ESPN+. Plus. Can't wait to talk to him. You said something about how uh, what Houston was to verse what yeah. they are now oh. and the job that's been done. D'Amico, Coach of the Year there? Absolutely. Is that, is that what's happening? And why, do you, why do you think D'Amico? has been able to turn around man listen I have no idea I have because no, if you could if you can bottle whatever he's done every owner in the league's buying it bro mm-hmm. like this dude has, Stingley Will Anderson yep. CJ Stroud Good draft yeah. picks for sure Nico sure. Stingley one year before D- yeah, yeah but I'm yeah, just saying yeah. oh yeah, so tank yeah. yeah in the belt all their young guys Nico are, calls yeah. tank Dell. all draft picks are performing Sheldon well Rankins. tank Tank probably not going to be lead blocker anymore going forward. Yeah, well, they, also have, they also have a left tackle who just is an absolute brick wall. Like we, who's that? Larry, Larry Tunzel. 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 Oh, his cardio. Uh huh. We've known since draft night right. that <laughs> guy's lungs <laughs> yep. are better. He can hold. He can hold for a while. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. <laughs> I sent a text to Chuck Pagano when that video hit the internet, and I was like, "Listen, I've happened upon." <laughs> said gas mask that was on face of Laramie Tunzel in that video before. And I've seen others with same mask on their face that Laramie Tunzel on. I've never seen anybody just go, <clears throat> yeah, that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's lungs. What is wrong? Move him That's to the board. Scouting. Don't get him. Don't get him. Don't get him. He's putting him to one. Yes. To one. They're saying this might drop out of the first round. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> this dude is a super athlete. Oh, we need to take care of it. And he's gone on to prove it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. gone on to prove it. Maybe I should get into scouting. But what? <laughs> other than just the players, what do you think D'Amico's messaging is? And why do you think they're all buying in so much? Oh, I, I, First of all, I think he's as even keel as it gets, as, as a person, right? Like playing against him, like he, he is a methodical uh, you know, he's, he's a prepped guy, like he understands what it is, but he's not emotional about, you see him in the games, man, like he's going to keep it even keel, this is what we got to do, and he went and got a guy in C.J. Stroud that feels a lot the same, right? Like when you watch him, you never think they're out of a game. Mm-hmm. And, and I, like I told, I, I said this yeah. one on Get Up, like most, most QBs their rookie year, you want to get them to the end of the fourth quarter, right? Like put all the pressure yeah. on them, make them see your coverage, make them see the disguise, make them figure this thing out, the dude does it every freaking week. It feels like he walks off the field with the lead somehow, right? And, yeah. and you, as you look at that as a rookie, it, it blows me away. And I will say this, Strausser, who used to be in Indy, who's now the O-line coach for the Texans, has done a phenomenal – they not only can they throw it, they can run that yeah. thing too. Yeah. They can tote the rock. They, so offensively, you're seeing those young guys produce. And then defensively, as a coordinator, I would tell you that D'Amico was probably one of the top one or two callers in the game when he was in San Fran, and that has just continued, right? Like, he doesn't put his defense in bad positions. Like, even late in the game, when Russell throws that interception mm-hmm. last week, mm-hmm. like, that play, it's it's insanity, right? That's chaos. And then the ball gets right, spinning out, doing all that kind of crap, and then the guy's right in the position. Uh, I think that's part of it. What were you going to say? Now, the, uh, not only the draft picks, but even the signings, the guys that they bring over, that's obviously incredibly important. But Dalton Schultz, he's been a monster. Yeah. 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 Stevie yeah. Nelson mm-hmm. in the corner. Jimmy Ward, who had yep. the damn yep. ceiling pick. So, you know, knowing, now, obviously, you got to give a shout out to D'Amico Ryan's, but Nick Casario, too. Casario's who's, done a great who's job. obviously dealt, you know, went to so three. Sussary. Back to Tom said. Coaches, to uh, doing a great to job. your point, I think I saw a tweet yesterday that their last eight games or something like that have all been decided. The last, the, this game deciding plays, all been within the last minute of the game. Yes. Like they are the cardiac kids and, and they win those close games, which is, you know, D'Amico being so even killed. And CJ. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. CJ, yeah. CJ being is, a guy. Killer. We yeah. Have that, is, yeah. is certainly something. More updates here from Ari Mirov of Doug Peterson's press conference. Doug Peterson doesn't believe that Trevor Lawrence Good. will need the tightrope surgery procedure, mm. which is the same procedure that Kenny Pickett had. And I think we learned about it from Tua. Yeah. Yes. In college. Is that how we all yeah. learned about it? Brock Bowers had it yeah, uh, this year, oh, too. Yeah, that's right. Mack did it last year. But it is, it's been something very recent where it's some sort of surgery. I wish I was a doctor. We'll have Aaron Rodgers joining us. Right, right. <laughs> ask him. 13 minutes. We'll ask him. Yeah, he's a doctor. But it's some surgery that they started doing, I assume, down there in Birmingham. At, yeah, Birmingham. Uh, James Andrews. Andrews' thing. And it's like 
standard high ankle doesn't normally need a surgery. But then they said, but wait a minute. We can take this maybe five to six week thing, make it a three to four or two to four type thing. And they started doing it. I appreciate that we're trying to beat all these injuries. Him not needing it is good news. That's what that sounds I, like. I mean, you would think so. Because, I mean, but like Kenny just got it done. No, where's the card at? Too. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Come Are on. you serious, you know what? It was terrible to see, to see his franchise quarterback walking all the way to the, to the locker room. But at the same time, it's a good sign. It was a good yeah, sign. True. Yeah, true. <laughs> that is that. You stop searching it up, bro. You got a cop taking your, your franchise QB into the, into the house. It's man. weird. That is crazy. Big Dom would have put him on his yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, Big Dom and the Niners, I do believe, probably had a phone call, a sit down. Nice. I think they're if all I kind of big Dom's all good. Families. I think so. Kyle Shanahan came out and said that he's heard the Big Dom's good guy. I respect mm -hmm. Big Basically, Dom. Basically, he heard, okay, no problems. Let's move if, along here. If I know Big Dom and his culture, he he brought some of his guys and he brought and then the 49ers guys and they mm -hmm. sat down at a table and they discussed it. And they well, was there one out. light on over the top? There was one, yeah. it was one light on. There was a, a guy standing in the background. Some gobble yeah, around. So there was exactly. some gobble There was some caprese. There was some bruschetta. Oh, yeah, some cannolis for the fat Yeah, yeah. Greenlaw was right, bro. I don't care what anybody said. That's that's out there. <laughs> that dude's right, bro. That dude's right. Oh, hey, I'm talking about Jeff. Hey, All bro. the players. I'm telling you right <laughs> now, dog. The Greenlaw, I'm with you. I ride with you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we agree. I agree, yes. by the way. And I bet you Big Dom was like, well, probably should have got smacked in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. But I, I didn't like that Greenlaw got kicked out for that. No, no. chance. I didn't, and I didn't like the Big Dom got kicked exactly. out. Yeah. And, uh, I, He's I gotten a little like soft it. on kicking football? people out. Yeah. Bro. Like, no punt. I mean, like, you, you touched his face or you he yelled him. at you. you and we're kicking people, people out. People calling that a left hook on the internet. That's what I'm saying. Come well, on. those people. Where are they from? I mean, that's a quick Where are they yeah. punching? Oh, no, we know. Come we on. know where they're from, Jeff. We all do. <laughs> okay, we run two, into a lot of them in this They're business. from the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is not. I like I liked it. I think, hey, listen, it got everybody energized. It's a better right. ball. More fun. Did you hear uh, the Zach Wilson story? Uh, yeah, about the, him not wanting to play or doing the whole... Yeah. Undisclosed injury. We don't know what's real and what isn't, though. Especially, you know, because Zach Wilson's a good boy. He's a good boy. boy. Exactly. He's a good, good boy. boy. And it seems like they got it hey, out let me, for him. Let me, hold on. Before you, let me, let's say this, man. Because I had Canty and I went at this about this morning. Okay. This is the Jets' fault, bro. Ooh. Like, this is the Jets' fault 100%. If he, you brought Aaron in, like, send that dude on, bro. You had <laughs> dudes on his team wearing another man's jersey underneath their shirts, yeah. bro. And you going to bring him in to be your savior after your guy goes down? He drafted down? number two yeah. overall. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Can't okay, so they invested that. in the kid, yeah. Jeff. Okay, they invested in the kid. Okay, how'd that work out for you? Not At great. some point, you go, okay, go get Joe Flacco. After you saw two weeks of it, three weeks, go get Joe Flacco. Well, Brown just sent him back to the practice squad for God knows what reason. Why yeah. they yeah. said good, we, don't, we can't win with you? Yeah, yeah they just. Back That's squad. dangerous putting them down there. Yeah, How many teams have backup quarterbacks right now? Uh, 12 going on 13. You go down yeah. the practice squad, you are available. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you are available. Word on the street is Flacco said, hey, look, I've played basically just as good as Deshaun Watson. Give me $230 million guaranteed. <laughs> oh, right now. He's not wrong. That's just what, That's just what the word on the street is. What if Flacco did walk <laughs> right into the GM and the head coach and said, you seen what I did there? Yeah. Time. You saw that deep ball? Yeah. I think, I, think I, I think he needs to start for the Steelers on Thursday night. Let's get the whole AFC North division roundup for Flacco. Okay, Ooh, how would you stop. feel if Flacco was a starting quarterback? You'd be more it confident? It would be the funniest thing that's ever happened in the NFL. You yeah, but like you'd be Mitch. more confident? I wouldn't say I'd be more confident. I wouldn't be less confident. Uh, he does not like Mitch. Jeff. You don't like yeah. Mitch? Jeff, we North Carolina. Carolina. He does, Mitch. Jeff. He does. North Carolina ties. Yeah. I get it, but this dude has said some terrible things about Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. What? I've never done that. I had to delete a lot of tweets when the Steelers go. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not he true is. either. All I said was, actually, I think it was a positive for Mitch because I said it's not much of a drop-off from the starting quarterback in a, for an NFL team. That's what you said today. We're not today. That's today. Back to yeah. compliment. Yeah. No, Kenny, it's with Kenny Pickett. What are you? Oh, so you don't like you, Kenny? You were, yeah, yeah, I don't have to like him. You don't have to like him. <laughs> I like any of them, I get paid not to like them. I'm good with all of them. Me too, I guess. I mean, but you're like, you're going to take them back. That's a backhand. They are compliment. both good guys. You could have a beer with both of them. I can promise you that. But I I also think, you know, it's the Christmas season. Why not, why not put the Rudolph in? Hey, we have to talk about it before the hour ends. 
before the hour ends, we have to talk about it. Connor wanted to bring it up since minute one. Yeah, well, oh, I can't wait to hear what this yeah. is. And, and I didn't want to bring it up. You did. You bring did. It. I, had it. To, I have to ask about it. And who cares now? The Colts yeah. are 7 and 5. They're going oh. to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And Pancakes is the best segment on yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. Sat Love them it. down. Love, Love it. it. So much um, better than in the trenches. So, so guys, back to. Uh, That's respect. Right? Last yeah. year, okay, yeah. when you go into the locker room uh, in Minnesota and you're up 33 0, oh. you guys <laughs> just eating orange slices? No. <laughs> just kind of like, hey, we did it. I'll be deadly. I'll be deadly honest with you. We walked in. I was like, boys, we're in trouble. No, <laughs> oh, 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 you sound like LeBron right listen, now. Listen, oh, listen, listen. I went in. We, we had. We didn't. I don't think we scored a point offensively. I'm dead serious. Like we yeah, got the ball yeah. down inside, like the 15 yard line. I think twice and had to kick field goals. Yeah. We had a block kick. I think for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Like Pick everything six. went our way. And I was still scared to death. I was like, man, we can't get a first down. Like we are, when I tell you we are, so we start out the second half and I was like, we gotta, we gotta push the gas right here. So we, we called a shot play mm. and it's freaking wide open, bro. Mm-hmm. And Matt doesn't throw it. Mm. Oh. And Why? He, What's and, his deal, Jazz? I, I, I have no idea. Still whatever, don't know. Whatever it was, <laughs> I was like, He's when he didn't scientist. do it, I, I, I said to Parks, Parks, we in trouble, my man. We are in trouble. <laughs> so no, and, and here's the other thing. I will say this: the other thing, because I mean, and listen, you can't if you can't laugh about it, right? Like I, I ain't crying about it. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, we could not. Like when they saw Jeff outside, Joe Jefferson outside, and you saw them like, and just throwing the freaking back behind, and this dude is jicky jacking and taking it to the house <laughs> and i was like gus what coverage are we in he's like we've called them all and we can we ain't stopping our soul right now we're like these dudes are they are taking it to the house on us carly ursay's on the headset for all this huh oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> she was making a record no i'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we get down and the only oh, thing, uh, the, only thing I had, the only thing i had was we're at fourth and inches and I was like, well, they were like, we can try. And I asked Bubba, I was like, hey, what do you feel about the field goal? He's like, nah, man, we need to. So I was like, all right, we're going to go fourth and inches. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. So we go to get it. And Matt gets it, but gets it late. And so the referee's like, hey, man, the rule in the NFL is if his feet stop, we, we, the play is basically dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when he got the ball, he kind of laid first and then started driving his feet. And the referee was like, that to me was it, right? Should we have tried a 57 yard or whatever? Maybe, you know, how, how do you do it? But at the end of the day, we had our shots. We just didn't do it. It's all right. It's history. Hey, it's history, bro. It just yeah. hangs in the book. Well, it's all right. Tim Canton. We're all in it. It's Tim right. Canton. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was Jeff Saturday. What a legend. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate y'all, man. Absolute legend. You crush it on TV. Very lucky to be a former teammate of yours. And uh, keep going, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Enjoy yeah. it. And just keep accepting any head coaching jobs. <laughs> we can have some fun with it. That's not on you. That's, <laughs> no. uh, that's on the teams. Hour one wrapping up here live from New York City on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 5th. I do believe the jet has landed. Oh, okay. Hey. Should be a great hour. I hope you'll join us. We'll see you then. Take three. three. Today's challenge will be a frozen pizza basketball shooting relay. Zito and I will have to eat half a frozen pizza. Once we finish a half a frozen pizza, our teammate that'll be next, in my case, Nick, will have to make a layup, then a free throw using the same ball. Once he makes those, he will then pass the ball to Foxy, who will have to make an NBA three, and then a half court shot. Boys, are we ready? Get to our spots. Zito and I are starting. Oh, there's a special this, special this. No, the special pizza. Cheers, pizza. Pat is off to an early lead. Pat is dominating Zito. Zito eating much slower. Zito's eating much slower than I thought he would. I, I used scissors to cut myself a bit to the fourth. Pat used scissors to cut the pizza because we do not own utensils in this offense. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm it up. <laughs> Zito is cramping up. Uh, Nick, go. Uh, ah! Ah! Free throw, free throw now for Nick. Zito is still Don't finishing his pizza. Yay! Foxy, you're off. Foxy from you three. You can for him, Nick. Let's go! Oh, there we go. Foxy, Big Motor's going to pick that up. Oh, yeah! Nate McAfee is off to quite a lead. Oh, my God. Oh, Nick. Oh, he's Bailey down. Oh, Nick. Bailey hits the roof. Bailey's on. Bailey at the free throw line. Oh, is he God. choosing the granny like oh, he did? Oh, Bailey! Going go let her go. That one's going in. Foxy is at the home run. Potter misses. Foxy barely misses. Oh, this is electric. 
Pat is now on to the second half of his pizza, and Connor cannot buy a bucket. You hate to see what's happening here. Stooge. Oh, an air ball at this point. Has Connor oh. ever shot a basketball before? Connor hits the threes, now back go, to Connor. the half-court shot. Here we go. <laughs> People will remember that in this same position, uh, Connor went 0 for 12. 0 for 12 in basketball. He's stacking badly ninjas. Oh, there's a stack guide. That was his original plan. Are you regretting the stack decision? <laughs> the Joey Chestnut of Pizza Basketball Racing, Pat McAfee, has finished. Nick, lay up, go. He's taking psyched off for Billy DeBron and Joey doesn't care. The free throws. Nick, first free throw up, air ball. Not even close. Don't worry, Pizza has, or Z has like six pizzas left. Take your time, Nick. Take your time. I mean, this is. This is the Billy McConnell yes! factor. Boxing is up. Boxing from three and half. Bingo! Bang. Bingo! If he hits All his first three, we'll give away 5,000. Oh! 5,000 5, to Boxing. the commenter to Show pick team pass. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to beautiful New York City on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. Hour two of the program starts now. Football! Football happened in a big way last night. The Cincinnati Bengals with a backup quarterback go into do and beat the Jags when the Jags had their first Monday Night Football in 12 years. Jax, him, DeVille, the mascot, showed up. The Jaguars fans showed up. And Jake Browning, backup quarterback yeah. for the Cincinnati Bengals, showed up in a big way. Congrats to them getting the dub. And Trevor Lawrence, high ankle sprain, should only be out a few weeks or so for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Goodness. Now, we are very lucky to be in the get-up set here on Pier 17 in the Seaport area of New York City. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Da Cowboys turn digs this year. Nine-year NFL vet, host of Everything DB and the Man of Man podcast, Darius J. Butler is here. Come on, Thank you very much. And now, boys, if you don't mind me. Sure. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's take a trip to journalism town. Whoa. Okay. okay. In this particular studio, a lot of sports journalism takes place. Hmm. Real stories are told. Hard-hitting questions are asked. The go of the sports goes as this particular studio goes. And joining me now for an exclusive sit-down interview is a four-time <laughs> NFL MVP. Wow. Current wow. quarterback of the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. yeah. Attaboy, Aaron. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Trying to be Roy Firestone right now or what? Barbara Walters, mostly. Yeah. That's the thought. Look at how intimate this is. Incredible. Okay, we got a camera here, two shot. We got a one shot right here for a moment. I'm asking my questions. I think that we'll be able to cut to. And Whoa. You have a one shot there. Let's get to the Where's main. my one shot? Here? It's yeah, coming, dude. Oh. 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 Aaron, when you speak, just act like that camera's not even on you. Incredible. <laughs> no, because you're talking to me. You know, you're talking to me. You're talking to me. You're not talking to the people. This got is it. just us okay. chatting. Okay. I have to ask, there is a growing narrative across society even that you did not tear your Achilles. Here we are watching you walk. 
your handsome ass into this studio down Pier 17. On the sidelines, we see you moving. In the tunnel, we see you moving. And we see you throwing. When are we ever going to find out the truth about your fake torn Achilles? Mm. That's how you want to start this whole thing out, huh? Journalism. <laughs> <laughs> this show's losing losing its shit. Either. No! <laughs> we used this to make it journalism. good. This is journalism! Yeah? This Mr. is Ross. journalism! One trip to New York, and this is where you go. Whoa, this is your town! <laughs> this is your town! Why do you think people think you didn't tear your Achilles, Mr. Rogers? Well, I'm just trying to do something no one's ever done before. So, when that happens, it can't possibly in the collection of the impossible ever uh be the reality so but I'm, I'm i'm proud of people you know there was a time a few years ago where anybody who had any ideas outside of the mainstream narrative and the normal thought process were called the c word and i'm glad that there's some other people joining the c word joining the, uh, the ranks you know the people who are questioning things now if we know the history of the word conspiracy and oh the, that's oh, the c word okay. conspiracy, I know. Oh, the conspiracy the theory oh, oh, journalism yeah. remember we got the low camera shot we, <laughs> we got, really got a one shot here for that this one maybe i should talk directly to the camera but Thank you. um i yeah i respect uh, respect everybody's opinion about it however misguided and wrong <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk about you being a um conspiracy theorist lunatic <laughs> Just feet away here in this particular studio. I believe you were potentially called a murderer yeah. for not getting <laughs> vaccinated true. a few years ago. During Now we sit here, December 5th, 2023. How do you feel about how it all took place? And how is the body? Are you the most healthy you've ever been? Yeah, I feel great. The body feels great. I will say I saw Stephen A in there, and uh, he's been taking care of himself too. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Stephen A. Man. Jacked he's, right now. He's been getting jocked. <laughs> and... Uh, some to that whole eating right, uh, you know, taking care of yourself, exercising, cold tub, sauna. Um, Stephen A should maybe talk about that a little bit more. But as I sit here today, I feel like I'm definitely on the right side of history and uh, went through a lot of shit uh, for uh, an opinion that was my own, uh, you know, personal belief based on what was best for my body. And in an era of censorship and uh, quelling free speech, um, uh, I'm glad that uh, I took the stand that I did and welcoming more and more people to the, uh, the side of freedom and uh, free speech. All this right. is great. I can just directly go to my <laughs> phone. I, sit here. I actually like this more. I, I can just go right to my one shot. I was about right say, to say, we just did real journalism time. there. Yeah, and we even great. got They're loving this, I'm sure. Too. Oh, what absolutely. Nice. What else do you want to talk about Look at here? This staircase right here? Who else can we real? piss off here? Two gays. All right, how yeah. about this one? Zach Wilson in yeah. your relationship with him. Very close, seemingly. Is that accurate? I love Zach, yeah. Did you talk to him about him saying, I don't want to play football here? <laughs> I, I, I will say this, you know, when you, when you, uh, when you have sources, right? And, uh. and that's always an interesting, you know, Ooh. thing. And, you know, first of all, to have, like, uh, that you can go down a whole rabbit hole with uh, actual sources, made up sources, why is someone willing to be a source? What are they gaining out of that? On and on and on. But when you uh, use sources and whether intentional or unintentional, try to assassinate someone's character like that report does for Zach, I have a, I have a real hard time with that. Okay, really so you're saying that that was an effort to maybe make Zach look like a worse human than a potential people already view. Yeah. I think that that was... How can he not read it any other way? I mean, you're basically saying that this Quit. this kid is, is quitting on the team and, and doesn't want to play and has given the middle finger to the organization. Um, now, listen, uh, I don't want to speak for him because he's going to get a chance this week to speak, and I'm going to let him speak. I'll tell you that I love the kid, and I've spent a lot of time with him, uh, and um, I think he's uh, an amazing uh, young man, and he is young. You know, he's in his he's early 20s, and I've had a blast spending time with him. Um, he's gone through a lot of shit in the last three years, and he's got every right to be uh, frustrated and disappointed about it. I think he's done a good job of standing up and taking accountability this year um, when, when it's been his part to do it. Um, and I think that, uh, that if, if that's journalism now, if you're going to use sources, and whoever that, I want to say the F word now, you um, can't. We're doing journalism. But whoever <laughs> can't, that, right? That, yeah, that, that fool. That, that's that one of the rules. What's one of the rules? 
I, whoever that person is that, that thinks it's okay, number one, to talk to anybody like that, I don't understand what you get out of that, number one. But number two, um, what do you, what is your impetus? What is your motivation to try and bury someone like that? Um, and that's a problem with the organization. You know, we need to get to the bottom of whatever this is coming from and put a stop to it privately uh, because there's no place in, in a winning culture where, and there's been, this is not the only time, there's been a bunch of other leaks. Big that, city, that a lot of out. reporters. I get it. A lot of friends. I get it, they're not your friends. No, yeah. They're not your friends. Yeah, what? friends. They're not your friends. Even if they are, like, is that really what you want to be about? You want to be about using someone in the media yes. to leak stuff to uh, in order for what? To get them to put your name out there for a job or if you're a player to get you a write-up something? I think it's chicken shit um, at its core. And, and uh, you know, I think it has no place in, in a winning organization to be to be a source on it, especially not if you're going to assassinate somebody's character and and especially now when it's someone that I really love and care about, like Zach Wilson. So. Obviously, it's not the only time this has ever happened in the history of sports and teams. Obviously, we've seen this happen before, which is why you're not only just speaking for this situation. We've seen it in the past. you got to nip it in the butt. got to get that person out of your building, especially if they're trying to tear you down from within. Now, let's talk about that building, the New York Jets organization. We chatted about it with Jeff Saturday earlier. Now, Jeff, well, let me say this first. Go just, ahead. Just, listen, I've, I have uh, had relationships uh, with uh, obviously a, a number of different uh, media people over the years. You, you get to know them, they're in the locker room, there was beat writers. Um, you put your name on, on something, then you stand behind it. You know, like I believe and this, and yes, it's okay. You're immunized. You that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> 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 but, I understand uh, what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Put your name behind it. We like, agree. I have no problem with you. I honestly, I don't have a problem with anybody having a relationship with Diana Rossini or. Uh, Shafty, yeah, any of those. People. Rappaport, wide. But when Palacero, wide. Schultz report, wide. Ari Mirov, wide. Well, Lombardo, wide. Lombardo, definitely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he hears some stuff. But just put your name on it. So that make things a lot better. Actually, and then it just then we'd have a conversation in within the organization. In the real world, okay, like the real news that do these actual interviews like this on a regular basis, we understand where anonymous sources might save somebody's life. Okay, so we're not talking about all oh, media. I'm not talking about that at all. Whistleblowers love it. Boom, got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. That's Please. the real world. You're anytime potentially dying. Anytime there's major corruption going on, if there's major corruption, we need the whistleblowers to yeah. have the protection to be able to speak up without getting harassed, fired, killed. Yep, mm -hmm. something came out today. Yeah, heard a lot of that. <laughs> but like, we're not saying all anonymous sources are bad, but in sports, there's no death potential. So it's like... I think that is kind of the guys they stand behind is like, you got to protect anonymous sources. It's like from saying Zach trying to kill Zach. Why you think Zach Wilson's family is going to kill him? How, who do we, who's going to do that? We're talking sports specific. This isn't an yeah. all, all anonymous sources need to stop that no, conversation. No, no. Yeah. Uh, let's talk Very about the, good point, by the way. Yeah. Let's talk about the building in the jets, uh, building of the jets. It was the actual structural building, or it's the, a long one. We saw it in Hard Knocks. You yeah. gotta walk a long way. Long walk, mm -hmm. yeah. Art Deco, yeah. Gothic, yeah. <laughs> 18th century, yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> the Johnson and Johnsons built a good building. Yeah, they oh did. yeah, yeah. With right. good money, too. they do. They do build a good building. So aside from the building being built great, which we all agree, heard the boys break it down. The Jets team itself. Okay, we're watching how it's going this year. There's obviously a lot of questions about the offense line, the protection, Hackett's play calling, the entire situation. From watching where you are, you know, you think, hey, next year, this year, whenever you're back, you speak. You were doing journalism, so you give whatever you want to say. Uh, whenever you play again, we have a chance to still do everything we dreamed of in the offseason whenever we were running into this miraculous year that it was supposed to be for the Jets. I think so, yeah. I think I – think, uh... It's about the culture, you know. The culture can win championships. Chemistry wins championships. Um, so we obviously need to fine tune a couple of things, just tighten a few things up. Um, and I feel like there was there was some really amazing progress uh, that I saw uh, throughout OTAs and training camp, and that people got to see in Hard Knocks. The way that we cared about each other, the the culture that was being created, the chemistry that was being created, and the practice habits as well. And when you're winning, you, I was joking with this with uh, 
one of my buddies in the locker room that day, when you win and everything gets glossed over, and you know, and Jeff knows, and anybody who's played knows, um, it can be a blessing and a curse because the little things aren't big things, you know, and, and, and a lot of things get kind of swept under the rug. What that can lead to sometimes is, is some, uh, some habits starting to form over the years. Uh, but it usually takes a long time for that to happen. When you lose, and every little thing becomes a huge thing. The tiniest little thing, and the media is doing their job, and a lot of times that job is to divide and to get a uh, you know, quote and, and a comment uh, that is going to draw people to it, when a lot of times it, it can also be very divisive. You know, there can be clips taken out of context, and the guy's saying, what did he say about this? Or what, who said that about what? And just the littlest things can become, uh, you know, things that can really divide a locker room. So uh, that's kind of what we've been dealing with, I think, uh, the last, uh, last few weeks, especially after um, things were, you know, four and three, looking like we were starting to turn the corner. And then obviously we've lost five in a row, and uh, it's been a rough stretch. But um, you, you, this next five weeks will be fascinating because as – we're not mathematic, mathematically out. It'll be interesting. Oh, that's a big piece of information for you. From what I've been told, journalism. I haven't got my single shot yet. I was going to make uh, the uh, the gym from the office face. Um, Enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're making a mockery out of this whole thing. Yeah. Um, Next five weeks. It'll be important. interesting to see how guys respond because we've, we've had adversity. We've seen how guys deal with adversity. Who's going to finish the season uh, as a professional? You know, who's going to do it? buy into this thing um, and keep doing it together and put good ball on tape and, and take pride in their performance. Because I've been on a, a couple teams where down the stretch it's been rough. In my first year in the league, we were 4-12. and 12. And my first year starting, we lost five, uh, five out of six down the stretch, I believe, um, after we were 5-5. Five and five. And so I've seen what it looks like uh, at times when things are going not great. And it really reveals the character um, – you know, in those, in those adverse moments. So I'll be interested to see if guys stick together and we hold this thing uh, together because uh, there'll be a lot of interesting decisions moving forward. Well, I'll be interested to see it, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to sit Can down. Can we go back over there and have fun now? Yeah, let's have a <laughs> Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this here? What are you thinking about this from Mike Green? Oh, I'm you can't hear my me. i shit here. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of. Yeah, can you give me a link back up? Why I got they... some. I got some Adidas on. We're back in Adidas. Whoa! Yeah. Because remember, he was wearing those moon shoes. Yeah, the Robert yeah. De Niro. On yeah. those, yeah, the Robert De Niro's from the yeah. Irishman. We were walking like that. <laughs> yeah. Got a pretty good little stride like 12, right now. Uh, Twelve weeks tomorrow. What do you think of that? Yeah, uh, it's unsigned, so it's kind of strange. Honestly. Oh, yeah. jeez, Greeny. <laughs> Six to midnight. There was a conversation Greeny. about yeah. that yesterday. Oh, Greeny was afraid to ask. Yeah, Greeny was, Greeny was asking me if I should ask you or if he'll mm -hmm. ask you. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know the ins and outs. Who's got the ma the most makeup on right now? Nobody. 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 All declined. Come yeah. on. Nice. Do you? No. We're real. Shy. Oh, you got makeup on. Do I have a single shot here or not? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Two. You need to stop with the single shots. All right, we're sick of shit. Can I see you, huh? Been a pro. Beautiful. Right, is that you. your watch? Is that Zenith? This is not the new one, but this is a Zenith, of course. Yes. They're your people. Thank you. Let me shout out Zenith. Can I shout out uh, Huga <laughs> a little bit too? Who? I like that. It's the you know it's a Danish concept that means uh, cherish the little things. Oh yeah, you did this before. Mm -hmm. We did, did this yeah. thing before. Yep. Shout out. What's it called? Huega? Shot right here. What? No. Nope. <laughs> no two. You got two over Three. here. Three. Three now. Okay. Three is yep. me. Yeah, oh, you got two. a got lot of single shots. shots. What's it called? Huga? Huga. What's that? Booga. 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 Shout out to Booga. Shout out. We're all about Huga. And speaking of, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, and I, we are all about Huga. And, you know, there were some, uh, how do I say this, WikiLeaks today. But um, <clears throat> I'm not going to bring that up just no, because maybe, maybe another time. Yeah, there's some good ones out yeah, there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you mentioned the culture. You know, when you come in, you're the you know most experienced guy by a lot. In, in the Jets, especially when you're thinking about like playoffs. What, what did you add to the culture? Because obviously that was a huge thing for them in the previous years that maybe hadn't been established per se yet. And how do you see it now as opposed to when you first got there? Well, I think because of what I've accomplished and how long I've been around, I think there's an instant like uh, clout that I come in with. Yeah. It allows me to, yeah, my say, voice to yeah. carry a little bit. A, yeah, say that. yeah sure. I'm thinking yeah. it does. Yeah. Uh -huh. A couple MVPs. <laughs> My voice carries a little bit of a, you know, stronger, uh, stronger tone, I think, from the start when you walk in there. And guys respect what I've done in the league. So I have a platform to kind of speak into certain things. Um, 
you know, I tried to in the beginning to just kind of be a, an observer, to be a consultant, to yeah. kind of take the experience I've had from 18 years in a great organization and and see, you know, what uh, what I like about what we're doing, what maybe we can uh, adjust a little bit, um, and where I fit in. You know, how I can use my voice to get this thing steered in the direction that we want it to. Um, I felt like there was a lot of a lot of leadership. I just think I didn't know when I got the team, like who the guys were, who the leaders were. I think we have a lot of great leadership, especially on defense. You know, if you look at uh, what C.J. Mosley has done as his career and the way that he leads uh, and does it kind of like a Julius Peppers, who should be in the Hall of Fame. Just want to give him a I put him in there. Yeah. Put him in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. But, uh, I could do windmill dunk still yeah. if he had to. But the thing, thing that I think is interesting about both those guys is uh, – don't mess with those dudes. Like those <laughs> dudes, the quietest, the silent assassins, man. Yeah. Like JP never said a whole lot, but if you ever got into him, and, and we played him in Chicago one year, and, and the whole plan was the first four plays, we're going to chip him. You know, we're going to like chip him outside, then we're going to like cut him, and then we're going to like send two guys at him. And we had this one play, we were in goal line personnel, like on the uh, minus 40. And the whole thing was, we're going to have a guy outside, and he's going to come down and crack the shit out of JP, and we're going to toss, right? So he good. was going to motion to whatever side he was on. So JP starts on this side. He sees the guy motion down. He runs to the other side. We motion the guy across. He comes down again. JP goes to the other side. <laughs> Call time out. And I was like, I went over. I said, why the hell are we pissing off the biggest bad <laughs> on the team now? And, and, uh, and CJ's like that as well. Awesome leader. Um, but I've seen a lot of guys grow and step up. Obviously, we're playing a, little, a few more young guys at this point in the season. Um, which has been fun to see their development. The offensive line has gone through a lot of turmoil. If you look at the five at the start of the season, Connor McGovern's out for the season. Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker's out for the season. Makai was starting at right, mm -hmm. now he went to left. We've had right tackle injuries. Uh, Joe Titman's now in at center for us. The only guy that's kind of been standing through the whole thing at the same position is Lakin Tomlinson, uh, who's had a nice season for us. But it's tough when you have so much, uh, you know, so many moving pieces uh, up front. Obviously, we've played three different quarterbacks now. Um, and there's obviously more uh, developments uh, happening uh, happening this week. Yeah, but Tim got fired. I don't like to say it, but it happened. Um, happened today. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great learning experience. It's journalism. I believe in uh, uh, the guys there. I believe in uh, the men and women uh, that work at the facility. I believe in the the individuals in in the position of leadership. Um, I think that there's uh, just like anywhere, there's uh, a lot of uh, reactions that happen. You know, various times and and some may be influenced by fans and pundits maybe a little more than uh, than i'm used to but uh i think it's a great opportunity for us to stick together now and to just watch and see how it all plays out and how people respond to this adversity and um it's been a wild ride and i look forward to uh taking back the reins pretty soon what you do uh, on what you do on sunday night sunday night at a party Oh, what, what, yeah, what was it? I had a party in the city. What yeah. was it? For a birthday, yeah. Okay, so now that you talk about it, I saw that there was a <laughs> bunch of your Jets teammates at that party. A bunch of them. You and think? Were you, you know? surprised? Uh, what's that? I, I didn't see You it. were a big hit at the party, though. You were a big hit. <laughs> oh, so, you got, I, I I so that's where you were. You went? I thought we did okay. What? You know, honestly. Were a big hit. More than anybody, and there were some interesting people there. Well, buddy. A lot of people wanted to meet... Uh, Pat, where's Pat? I said, the only friggin' guy wearing no sleeves. <laughs> well, Shane Gillis had a t-shirt yeah, right on. He did. Uh -huh. Let's yeah. never forget that. Shane Gillis had a t-shirt on. And I heard after we left, there were some speeches given, and Shane Gillis did not give one. This what? Son of a He's bitch. a professional what? speaker. I heard AJ brought the house down. I did hear AJ brought the hammer. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> what? He lied to us? Where is he at, by the way? Uh, he's, he's in Ohio. Yeah, what do you do? He, 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 he's is the... No, the we slow, well, so, so the setup. The slow. Uh, you have no idea. Yeah. Nah, you probably the do. Slow you, phase out. You know, you, I, I, you know. Could you? <laughs> no way. Could never be without. Hey, sir. AJ. We're gonna actually move the set. <laughs> to New York yeah. City. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we're using a yeah. truck that was driven here that is outside of this yeah, particular. Shout out to all the men and women that make the behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially yeah. here at this one. I mean, there's a lot of people that had no idea what our show was who have had oh. to work it the last two days, and we're very, mm -hmm. very grateful and you thankful. You think they'll be excited to see, you know, the, us the gone? Trucks, oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Should have seen him yesterday after the show. Like, Jesus Christ, thank God. We one more day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I actually heard so one of them Foxy said. Is getting fired, too, or not Zito? No? no, they're all in a truck outside. Oh, yeah. oh, hey, all right. Okay, you guys are still here. But all look right. at the setup, yeah. though. It's not a real, it's not a real set. They're so, tight, huh? Yeah, the amount of. Listen, Aaron, now's not the time for this. We just appreciate everybody. Absolutely. Yep.
Love the studio. Really appreciate it. Yesterday we couldn't hear a thing. Today they fixed it. Pretty yeah, good. Really? So it was incredible. Pretty I'm good. very, very thankful. That's not real. Come on! What are you talking about? Dude, that's that's classic conspiracy theory. That's a window. Yeah, that's conspiracy yeah. theorists over here. Right, there's a boat. Boom! Boom. Right Boom. Two Double of them. them. Double of them. Boom! I'm glad you said it. I've been sitting on it for 48 hours. I wasn't allowed to say it. Thank you. <laughs> That's They're not, not real. Yeah, that's not that's true. A, that's nobody not true. told Tony he's no not allowed to say that. Who knew the Cobra oh, Cowboy you, you, and Rogers hey. would team up? Yeah, like that lady on the plane that said, mm -hmm. that's that not real. Not well, real. She's, yeah. she's being muted. Yeah, well, actually, she, she, Tiffany Gomez? She's uh, being muted. I've seen her uh, a lot. Yeah, yeah, she, she's, she's going. Right and by now, muted, I mean she's just saying, like, oh, yeah, I didn't really see it. Okay. Yeah, I did hear a lot of people saying they probably cloned her in Antarctica, brought her back up, and not having her do this PR run. Okay, so that's that C word he was talking about earlier, but who knows? She exactly. she's she's prove it wrong. But let's talk she's about, a lizard person. Let's talk about the conspiracy <laughs> of your birthday party. Yeah. Okay. What about it? No conspiracy here, unless, you know, people want to dive into it. A lot of Jets players there. Okay, you uh, you think about draft day with Kevin Costner. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that one yeah, guy? It's important. Yeah. They were going to yeah. draft. Nobody was at his birthday party. That's right. For you, Russell you weren't right. here that long. You weren't here that long. And then you were gone for most of the season. Whenever you were talking about over there, about the relationships and the culture being built, feels real still after coming back. Now that you're here full time, does it feel like exactly how it was at training camp with the boys or what is it all like since you've come back with the it's team? It's different. It's different. I'm not playing. So the whole, the whole vibe is different. I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it's been frustrating for sure to not be out there, um, to watch us, you know, struggle at times, uh, to know, you know, a lot of stuff that I'm about that what we tried to build that just couldn't get kind of pushed into the standard practice and the, you know, the, the, just kind of the way we go about things because it kind of goes into autopilot sometimes when you're doing the same mm. thing over and over and over and, and they're seeing me and how I go about my business, it becomes part of the routine. And without me here, it's just natural, you know, things fall back to uh, what they, you know, what they have been uh, before. So it's good to be back around the guys. Um, and I, I love, uh, love spending time with, uh, with cool the group of dudes. Yeah. Yeah, All the dudes I met, cool group of dudes. Sure. Very talented. Garrett Wilson's hands too. Yeah. Large? Yeah. Big. He was there. I didn't want to give anything away. Brees Hall also yes, there. He looks so cool. Nothing. Uh, Hardy nothing, was there. Great. Nothing sacred, huh? <laughs> Makai was their biggest. There was a lot Makai, of humans. He, big human. Yeah. Huge. Did you, Huge. Him, did you give him a hug? Uh, no, but yeah. I hear you hug his mother. It's very nice of you. Yes, there you go. You're a hero. Thought you were a bad guy. He's a nice lady. Yeah. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, right? I kind of want to expand on that since you haven't been there for a while. Is it different? Like this is the gift giving season and you normally give amazing gifts. So now that you haven't been there and you haven't been playing with the boys all season long, do you still give the gifts? Do you still give a gift if it was your first season? What's that like this year? Now you're really putting me on, on Yeah, that'd be a good one, right? <laughs> it's it's got to be a good one. I love Christmas. <laughs> I, I know do. you do. <laughs> Bye, Matt. So, you know, it's like uh, Thanksgiving, love Thanksgiving. Oh, <laughs> My love birthday, it. get that out the way and then Christmas and New Year's, it's, it's, a, it's a fun season, and, you know, I, I enjoy uh, the gift-giving part of it. Um, and so we have some, some stuff set up, you would. Uh, obviously, for, for the line and the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. the, the line usually does some, I guess, together, but we've always done it line and quarterbacks, so we have something planned for, for all of us to do a white elephant. And then, you know, f when it's the first year, like the first year that Matt Staff came in, they weren't aware of kind of how I do Christmas, like oh, okay. for the QB room, you know, because it's pretty extensive. And I didn't tell them just because it's almost sometimes more fun to like when you kind of shower people with gifts and they yeah. give you like a little <laughs> <laughs> puzzle or something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But no, that matters. I, a lot about, I love yeah. puzzles. I no, do. They're never. great. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> like when other people do them for me. But um, uh, not crossword though. I do those myself. Well, and, sure. Thank you. Way. What a hero. You're yeah. humble. Still yeah. humble. Local? Local. Yeah, of course. Okay. Cool. But I do like going all out for Christmas. So. Okay. Do you cross uh, words? Uh, I'm sorry. Word searches. I know. Ooh. So those are Wheel of Fortune Love people. Those. I'm a Wheel of Fortune guy. I'm doing the word searches. Yeah. You're Jeopardy guy. You're yeah. doing a crossword puzzle. Just two different options there. Sudoku, I think both parties dabble. Really? I think so. I wow. think Sudoku's a unifier. The one through four or the one through six as well? I think the six. Isn't it the oh, six? Nine? nine? nine. Um, yeah, nine, right? Three by three? Three and six and nine? Or? Listen. Oh. Don't let me just out That's academia cool. you right now. <laughs> Don't let you do that. I am not the guy that you want to have out academia in you. You know what I mean? What about Uno and checkers? 
Yeah, we can play it on D-Butt's jacket right now if you want. So checkers and chess, I think. Okay. Same thing. Same yeah. I think yeah. checkers, yeah. Wheel of Fortune. Yep. Chess, Jeopardy people. Yep. And I think anytime you're making a decision, you need a Jeopardy person around and a Wheel of Fortune Bingo. person around. That is, uh, I agree. I think those are two matter of facts. Speaking so you're of saying our, the Jeopardy people are, are not street smart. Boom. And Wheel of Fortune <laughs> people are not... Book. book smart yeah because a lot of those questions are like name the character like, no sh i watch jeopardy i watch every night that i can i'm a jeopardy fan but i mean if i get two right throughout the entire night pretty I'm good. Jacked up. Yes. Yeah. i am jacked i think up. you should maybe do what uh bill murray does in uh groundhog day you know he's watched Memor the same yep. episodes you memorize all of them oh, and just yes. go to an old person's home i'm a genius and <laughs> just start laying these down hey guys we'll watch jeopardy yeah. together yeah come on <laughs> Yeah, that'd be amazing. I'm a genius. I am. That's, yeah. Our Jeopardy, time Jeopardy. Our Jeopardy guy. Yeah. Guy got accepted to Harvard, obviously, tied. Well, yeah. Congrats, you know, Ty. I think Jeopardy would, would be better off if you were still hosting it. I don't know if that's still. <laughs> Whoa, you don't yeah, like Ken? I, I love Ken Jennings. I do. I do. But it's just not the same. And as a Jeopardy head from, you know, mm -hmm. long, long ago. Not the ago. same without Alex. Let's be honest. That's, oh, yeah. that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Sorry, we lost. Rest in peace. Let's have a moment of silence, actually, for Alex Trebek. Boy, he hated Pat Sajak. Rest in peace, Alex. Rest, so. Rest in peace, Alex. Miss yeah. you, Alex. I miss you, Alex. Miss you, Alex. Uh, but anyway, so we've talked as we've talked to you this year. You've kind of said how you've you know reached out to Jordan Love after certain games, and for a good chunk of the season there, it was hey, he is the guy, and then it's hey, he's not the guy. We still need to see him down the stretch, what he can do, and now it's kind of flipped back to he is the guy. Um, and we've always talked about, like, accuracy is kind of the one thing where either you have it or you don't. Guys typically don't just, like, become more accurate in the NFL. And maybe that's not true or, or to an extent it is. But have you been surprised with what he's done over the last couple weeks here? Kind of, like, you know, confirming that, hey, maybe the Packers do finally have this next guy after Aaron and he is going to be the guy for the future? No. No, I'm not. And he's... He's playing the last, especially the last three games, he's playing outstanding, but he's, he's in his first year starting. Like, um, as well as he's playing, can we not crown him right now? Yeah. For his own sake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we shouldn't do that to kids. We shouldn't crown him and we shouldn't cancel him. Darius just crown him. Yeah, I'll crown him. Okay, go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> I love Jordan. I think he's going to be a great player in the league for a long time. Yeah. But can we let him play his career? Mm hmm. Like, and I, it's both sides too. They, you know, people, a great example is Geno Smith. People just yep. kicked him out of this town. They right? wrote him off. And then he went and was a backup right for back. six years. Dope. And then he went to a Pro Bowl. And sometimes it's situation. Sometimes it's change of scenery. Sometimes it's figured something out. I do believe you can get better at accuracy because you throw the football, the football from the ground up. So you learn how to have great fundamentals. Everything else, when you sync those together, everything else is going to be better. So, am I surprised by the way Jordan's played? No. Am I happy for him? Hell yeah. You know, I think there's, you know, and there's some people that probably like this, but there's some people probably thinking that I was rooting against the Packers this year, rooting against Jordan. Couldn't be farther from the truth. I'm not a bitter person about that. Like, obviously, I wish things had gotten different when I was in Green Bay. And there's things that I wish I had done better. Um, but I have so much love for that organization. I have so many people I still talk to, you know, every single week that, that work there. If I catch Jordan's game, I just send him a message. I was at a birthday party Sunday. I didn't see right. the game. But what was I doing? I was you, I was yeah, we were watching. Yeah, you were, yeah. I was yeah. asking you every yeah. few seconds, yeah. how's Jordan doing? What's the score? You yep. know, because I keep in touch with how they're doing. And I'm I got to go talk him. to a super famous guy. Come back. What's, <laughs> yeah. what's, yeah. what's, what's the score, score of the game? Yeah. So I'm not surprised at all. Um, I also think for all these young kids that are playing, like, let's give them some time to develop. You know, you crown somebody too early, the expectations, the weight of that is tough to deal with. You bury somebody right away, the dealing with that type of negativity and pressure is hard for people to come back from. Yeah, but what are we supposed to say? <laughs> well, it's sets like this. Not <laughs> shows <laughs> like this. NBA countdown. This is the NBA countdown. NBA countdown. This is the countdown. get upset. Well, I don't watch that, so I'm not, I'll, I'll just withhold my, my comments. Hey, Big Perk's on there. He's yeah, worth a watch. Yeah. Spark it. Big Perk is worth a watch. But I do appreciate the fact that you're like, hey, the pressure that is – immediately anointed on these people and I mean it happens to, to top picks all the time right yeah, it happens yeah. to number one picks and number two picks and we have one in in New York in Jersey right yeah number two pick that has gone through some some tough times in three years and people want to bury him in year one and they want to bury him in year two 
They want to bury them in year three. Right. And the burying part, you know, there, there's some objective things number-wise you can look at, although I think there's subjective lenses with which we look at those and we, and, uh, we miss out that there are some object objective things that you either have or don't have at your disposal that can affect the way you play. But I do have a problem when there's character assassinations because you're making generalizations about people and who they are uh, without actually really knowing them. And if somebody in the locker room came out and said something about them and was willing to stand behind it, that's a different story. But if yeah, you're Zach's be, a good boy. He is a good boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's dealt with a lot of shit that, that would crumble a lot of people. And I'm proud of him. And I'm looking forward to letting him speak. Uh, that's why I'm not trying to speak for him today. I know how I would feel. You're going to bat situations. for him, though, which is a big deal, but, I think, by the but way. I mean, but I heard you're not supposed to do that. You're pretty much But I'm excited yeah. about listening to, have, to hear what he has to say uh, this week and rallying the guys and finishing the season out uh, on a strong note. And then who knows what's going to happen for his career, but uh, but doing it the right way. Yeah, Piggybacking right. off of that, like, do you – is there a time frame or a number of starts or a number of seasons starting where if a quarterback hasn't figured it out by then, then we can say these guys suck. Or yeah, cause like, that's a cool thing. One, like, I agree with you. Like one season is not enough. I don't, like obviously their first season started probably two isn't enough either, but you obviously know much, much more. Is I think, there, I think you're going to see flashes in, in the first year. Okay. For sure. And then with any quarterback, after you play 16 games, I mean, 16 when I, when I first mm -hmm. got in, now you have a, a year of film that everybody can watch. So you can see, like, how can we attack this person? What did teams do? Did they pressure them? Did they play coverage? Was it a lot of two-eye coverage, a lot of one-eye coverage? What was the makeup of the team? Did they have a strong line? Are you worried about the run game? Did they have a number one back? Was he a Pro Bowl back? Where are the weapons at? They get to sort all that stuff out, and you have three teams in your division that play twice a year that really dive into those division games. So... The second year is always, I think, uh, uh, you start to see like sophomore okay. slump is what they say. Which happens because why? You know, you have Correct. you had no film on you. You yep. come from college. Uh, you're in a different scheme possibly, and uh. maybe you're in a shotgun the entire time. Mm -hmm. Now you come to a team that's more 21 personnel. You're gonna be under center. You're gonna be action stuff, you know. And then for a player, think about and I always say this: the rookie year is so freaking difficult because you literally go from a season, and so I mean, long. kids don't play in bowl games anymore. But now you're training, right, for yep. a couple months for the combine. Then you go from the combine back to training. Then you know. Then you get drafted. Then you go to your team. Then you're all, they're all off season. Then you, you know, have a tiny little break. And then you go out into training camp. And now you're playing more games than you ever have in your career. And now it's the first off season. We go, oh, take a breath. Okay, now what I got to work on? There's so much development that happens between years one and years two and two and three in this league. It's a, what have you done for me lately? It's a, I have zero patience and zero attention span. So everything oh. needs to be made. <laughs> well, decisions to be made in, boat. in a quick. <laughs> <laughs> There's a boat behind yeah, you, right through that window, right hey, there. Did you feel more pressure on you to be good early, to being that you had I a chance did. to sit I was behind Brett for a yeah. couple of years? You know, now it was your yeah. very similar love. 25 years old, he saw you win a couple of MVPs, mm -hmm. saw you do it behind the scenes. So, do you think? Obviously, you dealt with it personally, but is that a thing with you guys? Yeah, as usual, DB. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, I may do that. When you play, when. You know, when you've been in the league for, Journalism. like I was three years, yep. three years for J-Lo, um, I felt it, I'm sure he did too, the, the grace period for it is much shorter. Yep. Like, you better show in year one, it's year four. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at Jordan's career though, years one to two, there was a big jump in development. Years two and three, you know, yeah. you see him in the preseason, you're right. like, oh, you know, he's playing well. And he played, I think, one game in, uh, in two, in the uh, second game. year. Right, yep. and then with a toe, and then toe. played oh, yeah, in the third year. Yeah, he played against Philly. Hey, real quick, what, let's go back. Why Mysterious do he have? Toe. Why did he play that with that toe? Why did Jordan? What happened? That you was go back over there? I, had, I had COVID. I had COVID then. COVID, uh, COVID toe. I thought. COVID yeah. toe. Yeah. Then toe. COVID. Toe. Yeah. No. Do you want to go? Do we have to go over? I'll, yeah, go back. We will go back. Right, go back. <laughs> if you want. Remember, to. you showed the toe to your cam the camera. Yeah. Remember that was your your shot. It was your actual Twitter profile photo. Oh, they changed mine. I, I used to be three. Now I'm two. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Way to handle it. This guy's a pro, dude. Pro, not bad. This guy's a pro. Back to three. But you're saying development was very evident. You think from watching him in different great yeah. uh, stages. And then, as I did in 2007 when I played against Dallas on that Thursday night, Jordan came in against Philly when I got banged up and and did some nice things. And the, what, the thing I'm gonna say, which actually answers your question, but then I apologize. My answer wasn't wasn't great. I got sidetracked. But the narrative in this league changes so quickly. And to watch the up and down, ridiculous roller coaster that I would watch you talk about on the show, uh, oh. about the Packers and about Jordan, it, it's really uh, 
a reminder for all of us players uh, and coaches. Uh, Watch your mouth right now. Just <laughs> Watch your mouth. You're about you, to say you gotta, No, you got to be able to, to block out oh, yeah. the, us? the external noise. No, let us in. We're good. Please. Let I'm not saying don't watch it. Of course you're going to watch it. You're going to see it. But, okay. But right. can you deal <laughs> with it? Okay, I don't okay. think you should seclude yourself and yeah. never watch anything, but if you're reading everything, you're reading all the comments, mm -hmm. like it can really, it, it, for a person that's not super mentally tough, it's hard. When did you get to that point, by the way? Because there was a lot of terrible things said about you a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, like from somebody that didn't live in Green Bay, just outside, the only time we heard about your name was just probably something bad or a comparison to somebody who's like considered one of the greatest of all time, so they're kind of putting you down. That was a large portion of your career, right? I mean, I don't want to like put words in your mouth. Former but teammates, too, that you had a bunch of success with, you know, Seemingly. Helped out, made yeah, them a lot of money, right. uh -huh. and then they That's came true. out. Well, right, but. But that's what we're referring to. Two people. How, did you just have to. At least they went on the record. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Hey, respect. Hey, re yeah. like, hey, way to go. Put your face out there. Way to do that. But at what point did you get the mindset where, like, none of this is real? I can't listen to anything out there. Because that had to be tough, honestly. I, genuinely, as a human, it had to be tough. None of this is real. <laughs> Dude, that's the whole thing. It's not true. Those two boats. Come on. Yeah, those, two, those are real boats. Three Aside from the boats. birds. Whoa, easy, Tony. Look at this. Look how cold this window. Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, don't fall in. See the frost. <laughs> See that? Yeah. A heart? That's the same boat going back. What's the loop time on this? Is <laughs> wow, that's the loop time. minutes or what nope. is it? That's a GoPro <laughs> with a window. Yeah. That's a window. That's a window. Right though. there. That's a window there. Listen, I think dealing with uh, negative comments, media, whatever it is, is all about identity. And if you find your identity uh, in those comments, if you need to find a pump up from those things, then you're never going to get what you actually want. If you know who you are, um, I think it's important to be aware of it so you know what's being said out there. But you can't find your uh happiness or identity in the comments from other people because uh, m none of these people, for the most part, I think you'd ever ask their uh, advice for something, ask them for advice about something. So why would you give a shit about what their criticism of you is? Hell yeah. It's true. You're preaching there. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, so obviously. Nice shirt, nice shirt by the way. I appreciate that. Yeah. Ponies kind of phoned it in. <laughs> Well, wow. <laughs> I don't know wow. that. You've had some better ones. You've had much better Absolutely, but you can't all hit home runs because they're all home runs, and how do you know when, you know, you Big you, Mac you, did. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. 1999. I suppose. Kyle I suppose. Schwarber. 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 Sure. Schwarber. How about when well, Sammy Sosa well, was eating all his steroids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. him and McGuire, same summer. Yeah, Marky Mark. Yeah. That was a good time. That Barry was Bonds. Good baseball. That was great baseball. Put him in the hall. They were going in his river. Yeah. Baseball was going in his river. Baseball's been struggling a little bit. Yeah, let the boys juice. We've yeah. been saying it forever. Let the boys juice. juice. Or maybe yeah. just whatever they're doing in Colorado, like juicing the balls up a little bit. Maybe they should. It's not a bad idea. Know. Yeah, bake all the stadiums 5,000 feet. Boom. Could Build a that. whole uh, hill. Yeah. A mile. Hyperbaric oh. stadiums. Now we're talking. 5, yeah, that float. Feet. Yeah. Mm. Home runs all the time. Mm -hmm. Like on Pandora. Zero gravity. Yeah. Yes. All right, we figured out baseball. Figured out baseball. You fixed. You're welcome, Manfred. That's who the. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 Bob Bring the ball. spitballs back and the pine tar. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Steroids. Mm -hmm. Uh, hyperbaric Spider stadiums. Pack. No suspensions for charging the mound. No. No, let, them, no. let the boys fight. Let them you fight. Gotta run. You got to run if you fight. <laughs> yeah. How about that? You win the fight. Oh, true. If you win. Anyways, yeah, we're fixing baseball. I didn't you know that's what we were going to do. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Like Look at journalism. How about that? We're doing a lot of journalism. Remember, Commissioner of that. League. Yeah, Bob Manfred. Yeah. He yeah. said that they're playing for a piece of metal, right? Yeah. Yes. Worthless piece of, piece of metal, yeah. That's all. That's what the commissioner called his own trophy, commissioner's yep. trophy, yeah. which is what you win in the MLB. He thinks highly of himself. So it's a piece of metal. I like his humility. Yeah, yeah. kind of right. Is he coming on the show? Who? Is Bob? he coming on the show? Bob. No, I, I think him and Raj will be the only commissioners that don't come on the program. Speaking of tomorrow, Adam Silver, commissioner of the NBA, will be joining yes. us live. Yo, Adam. Roger, we still waiting for Roger? We got the NHL commissioner coming on. He was so cool. Remember, he had his, his shirt open. He yep. was at his desk. Great you know, guy. Pat? Bettman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. He came on. Told a couple of stories about, we're not against fighting. Did you ask him why he's trying to get the fighting out of the league? Yeah. Did Actually. It. Sure did. Journalism. And he said, sure. uh, he said, uh, he said, we're not, the staged fighting, staged fighting is what we're trying to get out of the game. Yeah. The natural fighting's A-OK. -okay. Yeah. The staged fighting, we don't need that. They could do that on Saturday nights in boxing. Sure. Yes. Now we got this.
the commissioner of the NBA coming on. Come on. I think the MLS commissioner wanted okay. to come on. SEC last week. The SEC commissioner, yep. Greg Sankey, was coming on. We're starting to become a commission show, except for one. Hey, Raj. Raj. Don't be scared, Raj. Nut up. Come dance. Come on, Raj. The big boy pants on. Put your big boy pants yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. Get out there with the crowd. It'll be good. It'll be good, Raj. How's It'll be good. Fun? This guy's doing all he's there. You see last night. Put your Gucci on, Raj. That's Come on, right. Raj. Come on, Raj. Get What's he wearing? M&Ms. He's making 50 a year. What's he making? What's 60, he wearing? 60. 60. Yeah. 60. Sorry, right. That might be one of the questions. I'm going to say he's worth it. Yeah. By yeah. the way, Raj. Why is your basement so shitty still? Yeah. Well, that was not his actual basement. We know that. Oh, it was a movie set? Yeah. Perhaps. Like, uh... Whoa! No. Stop. Whoa. Stop. Okay. Don't you believe those commies from Stop. Russia? Stop. Don't you believe those commies from Russia? <laughs> oh, I thought the... you were talking about another thing. What are you uh, talking about? Okay. Okay. We're talking, talking about fake moon. Oh, you talking know. about the moon? Yeah. We're talking about the space No, no, he's talking about Australia, the Hankses, when they were over there. Oh, jeez. No, nope, not talking about that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get right. back to sports. Ah. Google AI did come out, though. Yep. Russia's Google AI. Yeah, exactly. Let's see. Let's I don't believe. think that's a thing. Again, you know, the yeah. people who got their asses beat in the space race are saying, yeah, they never went to the moon because they could. Shocker. Hmm. Okay. How about that? You're right. I agree. I exactly. exactly. We, went huh? back. we went back. Why would we go back? Why would we go we back? Like, we went up there and it was rocks. Got everything we go we back to see more rocks. Set our eyes on Mars. What about the dark side of the moon? Well, we don't talk mm. about Transformers that. are over there. Good album. Yeah, we don't, yeah. And we don't yeah. talk about the dark side. It's a good album. Yeah. It is. Who's that? D-Bud. Bot. d bot. d bot. Come on. Botchy. The dark side of the moon. Pearl Jam? What is it? Aaron. Oh, yeah, I should have I I I I I I knew that. Well, it's not Pearl Jam. It's not Pearl Jam, Damn it, my man, God. Uh, all right. Uh, is there anything that we haven't covered journalism-wise that you think you should have a take on on ESPN? Yeah. His team is playing tonight. Where's my camera at? One camera. Five? Two. 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 Five is the jib. That's been a great camera. Uh, hey, you've been crushing it all day, Jim. Yeah. yeah. Everybody here's been crushing it. Yeah, even that guy who's just crushing Pokemon on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah, but Love that guy. Yeah, but when he was called upon. Boom. 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 He's Boom. 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 Put it that. Boom. Boom. I got to catch Pikachu, but Boom. I'm pausing for it. He had the wire so quick. He was. Yep. Love it. That, that actually, you know how uh, like football players, when they're not in, they're on that little bike on the side. Yeah. Yes. They're staying active. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. With his hands. Staying active, staying yep. active. Boom. 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 He's going back and he's catching a Bullpicks, you know, <laughs> easy first throw. Oh, guy's a dog. Man. He's a punter. Not a lot on. Not a lot of time needed. Yeah. Yep. But when you are needed, got to be explosive. Oh, right. And he yards. has. He's been able to crush it. Two, okay. I think. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel good. I feel like we covered some things. We can't, you know, we can't give away all the all the great juice on one show. Right. Yeah, but his, his, I mean, your team is playing against your new city's team tonight, Milwaukee against the Knicks. Is it an in-season tournament? This is the in-season mm-hmm. quarter. Hey, this now. thing's yeah. awesome. It counts. I like this thing. Where is it at? I think it is in Milwaukee. Okay. You'd it's be, tough, barn. Think, tough barn. That tough barn. Tough barn. barn. You'd, tough be, you'd be courtside if it was here. You know what the, yeah. you know what the name of that stadium is? Arena? Uh, Milwaukee's best. The, uh, yeah. the, the Deer House. Beast Light. The, the Buck Stops Here House. Oh. Boom. Buck, yeah. Buck Dome. Buck Dome. Buck Dome. The Buck Dome. The Buck Arena. The Buck Off Dome. Oh, let's go. Buck. Hmm? Pfizer. Forum. It's close. Okay. Pfizer. 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 So hold on. You. That's your for... company. You own. Don't you own that team? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yes. Play for. Oh, Johnson. you guys do. Tiny. Deal. Tiny owner. Are you the majority yeah. owner? Uh, no. Are you gonna do more ownership no. stuff as you grow older? On. We're gonna secure here. <laughs> Have you come around <laughs> with Johnson and Johnson in <laughs> Pfizer because of it? You know. Have I what? Have you come around on those companies? To Pfizer with the arena and Johnson & Johnson? With uh, it wasn't, it's it's Pfizer. It's been Pfizer. a lot of money on TV. A lot of money. Yeah. Maybe. America. On this network. No. Yeah. Are you going to hop in one of them, maybe? Oh, you'd be throwing, throwing a them. couple babies. What if he was throwing one? Woo. Ooh, yeah. And he was like, the best thrower of the ball in history. <laughs> throwing you. Boom. Right Vaccine there. right into Boom. your arm. And then somebody's like, <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Hit me! Boom. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Right in stride. Look at us. We're brainstorming. This is journalism. Man, won an Emmy. You ever sat by yourself on the bench all by yourself in the first quarter? Looking all sad and Tom's stuff. being a hater right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Who was doing that? Travis Kelsey. He's talking about Travis Kelsey right now. Travis Kelsey on Sunday Night Football. Mm-hmm. 
You had a party service. First half. I bet, you the, I bet you, though, even though he might have been sitting there, he was probably doing something else at the same time, maybe thinking about something. <laughs> he wasn't just sitting there. Two at once, there, you mean. There was something else going on. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I'll tell you what, Aaron. I don't know if we're ever going to win an award for what we do. But, damn it, you deserve it for everything you've said on this particular show. Mm -hmm. You've enlightened us. you made us smarter. And you, I will say, for somebody at the status that you have, your lack of fear of basically saying and doing anything is, is ridiculously admirable. I'm yeah. like, because you could just mail it in right now, okay? You could just do whatever, mm -hmm. you know? You got people, smart people that you're friends with that probably say, hey, let's just do this, let's do this, let's do this. A lot of people do that. The fact that you don't, and the fact that you came in here is, in, is awesome, and we appreciate the help. Well, you gave me no choice because you told everybody yesterday I was coming in. So although I had some other things going <laughs> so on, thank you. Sorry about it. Wheel of Fortune guy. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune guy. Yeah, let this guy slam me in a ball. <laughs> <laughs> not coming in. Damn, I got to dress up too. I got to. No, but I'm gonna wear my my Huga hat. You know, yeah. I'm gonna wear my Zenith watch. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And your Adidas Explain. shoes. What? Book club. Right. Ooh. Book club's coming. Yeah. The Bible today. No, I don't think so. Okay. I'm telling you, I got some gems, though. Oof, I've been reading Those some watches ones. would be a great Christmas present. Yeah. For who? Just boys interview you normally. You <laughs> <laughs> something to think about. I'll see what I can do. So Shout is out. the book club coming back, yeah? Yeah. With some bangers. I mean, what week are we on? Some yeah. bangers. I mean, what, what we is got week five, 14? We got five weeks left in playoffs. And playoffs. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We might do an in-person in Indy one of these Whoa. days. Whoa! Whoa. See which set we like better. It's not a fiver yeah. set anymore. No. Do you guys and have a view you know. like this, though? What's that? you guys have a view like this? Yep. Yeah. 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 We could. Yeah, you oh. could throw the circle. Actually, well, you do the it. circles right behind yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. no so problem. Pretty neat. Great sunrise. And we could drop a river in there. Look what, I mean, look what Zito did on this particular graphic right here. Boom. Clouds floating by. Yeah. Zito, did, Zito, did that? Clouds. Zito did that dong shaped really building over there. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, this is fake, but the view of, uh, of the city, whether you're driving in, looking at the skyline, flying over it, it's pretty cool. Do you love the city? I do. Yeah? I do. Knew you were going to love the city? Hello, Seaport. This is Dan in Bristol. You got me? Check one, two. Whoa. Check one, two. Yeah. Okay. Dan there in we Bristol. Cool. We Dan got you. Yeah. Check, got two, three. check two, wow. three. Check two, three. Dan in Bristol. Important. We all had that. Yeah. Important check at 150. Awesome. Dan, we got you, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Don't know what's coming yeah. on next, but Dan's on top of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, awesome. right. Wow. Dan's going to handle it. That guy knows. Can we get Dan a raise? <laughs> yes, please. And an Was that on switch? air or just in our ears? Hopefully on air. That was oh, on air. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. nice. I love this guy. Good. Are we, are we off? No. No, no. 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 Dan was on. Dan's We're on. on. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on. You're we actually, got two minutes. You're about to give a good answer, I think, about the city of New York that a lot of people could potentially hear because, for instance, me, I could never see myself living here ever, okay? But I love coming in. Mm -hmm. a couple I don't days. live here, though. Yeah, but you're I in the area. I live in Jersey. Yeah, but you're in the area. You brought Tony, Tony Soprano's house, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart. We saw it on the internet. Beautiful home. Yeah. Beautiful. Alleged. Yeah. Crystal through our unity. Never know. Oh, oh, oh Crystal. Oh. Bristol. Yeah. Bristol again. Oh, Bristol. Bristol. Bristol, we Bristol. Bristol, we can hear you. Oh, we are in Seaport. Yeah. We can. <laughs> but we can. <laughs> but we can. <laughs> Houston, this is Apollo. <laughs> they should not be hearing me. Go flight. Go flight. Is that what he just said? Yeah, go flight. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, Comms, go flight. Comms, check. <laughs> Oh, man. When you send a search party yeah. mm -hmm. for Dan. Uh, you love, you love living in the area, though? You do I, enjoy I, it? I do really love it. I mean, I'm a Cali kid. I grew up out there. I love uh, spending time at the beach. But, man, there's something special about the city. Great energy. And the music is taking us out. So I'm going to give it back to you to do a sign-off. You're good at this. Yeah. Cool. Just like AJ. That's what AJ Hawk does. Mm -hmm. Where is he? Miss you, AJ. Flying. I think we'll be able to call him in the last hour, I think. There's only so many computers. Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? There's a whole thing. Slow phase out. We'll be back in Indianapolis tomorrow, but we are incredibly grateful for all the people here. Thank in you. In Bristol and in Seaport. That's right, both. On your talent, Dan, coming in. <laughs> very thankful for him and very thankful for everybody that watches this program. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday can continues for a little bit on ESPN Plus and YouTube. I believe Sports Center is in about seven minutes. We'll see you tomorrow live from the Thunderdome. You're the best. Be a friend, tell friends of the nice and might change your life. Goodbye. She has that music just jamming. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, yeah. Blasting. Question. Is that anatomically correct? Is that where? <laughs>
Is that where the Statue of Liberty is normally in the city? Yeah. Anna what? Anatomically. Why would that be anatomically correct? That's the word. Geogra yeah, geographically. There's a lot, she's, of, those, she's there's right a lot of modalities when we're talking about where buildings are in the city. Hey, she's right there. Statue of Liberty. Yeah, right I in the middle know. of the... No, like she's... Yeah, right over there. Like, you can look out this window right Open here. the window. Yeah. I can open the window yeah. and look out. Lean at What hole? How sweet would that be? <laughs> yeah. If we just pop this fucker open, just poke our head on the other side, that'd be amazing. What's your deal? <laughs> What's your deal with this thing? What? Lasted well, the whole day yesterday. Yeah, we, we almost made it through two days. Real they windows. didn't want you saying that? No, it was just kind of, we didn't want to ruin yeah. their thing. The this, is, uh, this is a house of Greeny built in. Yeah. Also, it turns out that it looks stair great, but yeah, it's fake. That staircase over there. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. There's nothing up there. It's a nope. staircase to heaven. Mm. Staircase to nowhere. It's, yeah. Sure, there's some interesting uh, <clears throat> rooms in this place. All right. How so? How Let's so? get to a break. That's all. I just that's, that's okay. the whole thing. Like a secret yeah. port, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe. We're We're underwater underwater vehicles. I mean, there's a lot of. All right, air. Are we going back? Are we back on? We've been. The We've been on yeah. this whole time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but we're not going back on ESPN, I guess. No, no, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah. From Indy, maybe. We have a lot of journalism today. For yeah. Sure. Hey, it's thanks not, for doing journalism. If this was the last show for, for you and the show on Big Network, man. I think. Pretty solid. Right. Um, everybody just just kind of look this way. Oh, what's that we see? Boom. Statue of Liberty. There it is. Oh, wow, there. Boom. Check it out. That's Statue of Liberty. She's beautiful. Right through that window. Uh, just fun fact, you Jeopardy people. That was a gift from France. Yeah, well, that's right. Mm -hmm. How about that? They got a matching really? one. So, was, so was the Brooklyn Bridge, I believe. What? I think that was a gift, too. Baguettes as well. Crepes. Crepes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Menage a mm -hmm. Really thin oh, yeah. as well. It's a good gift. You say bath sauce? Duck Laurent. I had pizza, Grimaldi's Pizza, which is underneath this Brooklyn Bridge right here. That's real, right here. There's a pizza place, allegedly the best in New York and in the United States. Really? Last night, had it. You United said States. it was your second favorite of all time behind. What's it called? Grimaldi's, I think is what oh, it's called. Oh, yeah, Grimaldi's, yeah. Right? It's supposed to be legit. Yeah. It's supposed to be pretty good. But it was good. Ed doesn't like it, but I think it's pretty good. Ed. Ed, Ed doesn't eat pizza. Look hell? how sexy that guy is. Oh, he, that guy hasn't had a pizza in Ed. years. That's Money Team Ed, by the way. Uh, he needs a lot of credit. Yeah, two yep. cameras. Oh, two cameras. Yeah. Two cameras. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I watched that guy do a wedding. And shout out Ryan next to him as well. Hey, Ryan! Ryan, hey. hey, he dressed really cool. He dresses so cool. Sweet camera. Look at those loafers. That guy dresses so cool. Wow. What kind of camera is that? Camera. Denim, denim, denim. You, what could, you, you, you don't even know. Like a. You wouldn't get it. You would never. Steve, but you think you could handle a camera like that? Uh, yeah, You have to take that to an old, old Kodak to get it developed. Mm -hmm. And I got to wear it yep. just like that, yeah. too. Sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have that rig. I mean, that beard, the beanie, and then also the toms, I think, down south. Oh, yeah. Yep. Human. You buy a pair of toms, they uh, give a gift. Uh -huh. They give a pair to a kid. That's Thank right. Yeah. Thank you, toms. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. What a human weapon right there. Guys, I'm real. Missile. Doing philanthropy through his feet. Yeah. Right. The camera's still on him. It's great. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you've had a lot of single cameras on you today. Mm -hmm. We're trying that was to fun. That was way more fun than I thought it was going to be over there. Just to be able to go through the single camera. Have a little faith. Wanted. Yeah. Trust the process. Have just a little bit of faith. That's some hard, hard it is some, questions, too. It is some, yeah, bull, it is some bullshit, though. You know, like that, that oh, report yeah. that came out. About Zach? Yeah. How many of those are? Like, if you see 10, are 10 of them, are they all just shit? I, I, I mean, the... the, the the it's shitty that. what they did. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the gist of the conversation. I know that what was reported was, was, uh, was not factually correct, you know, as far as, like, my involvement. Yeah. Like, it made it seem like there was some big drama that was going on, and then we had to bring in the old guy to say, hey, call this young guy and, you know, <laughs> square everything up. It's like, but that never fucking happened. Like, that was never a part of any of it. Like, Zach and I talk all the time. You know, we talk every single day. I see him. We had long conversations during the game about various things. Actually, oh, yeah, we saw one of the videos. Actually, I mentioned. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they grabbed it. <laughs> what, yeah. what did I say? Yeah, you tell uh, us. Okay, you tell us. It was funny. You're a That's professional. Funny. You know the camera's on you in the side. We're not doing And he does oh, not. Zach, Zach's not as savvy. On that level. He'll, he'll, he'll figure it out. He just, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> but that could have been at any, any, any time. So, like, where's my... Yeah. You were talking about five. You guys were talking about the Falcons. Third quarter. So my you know, the thing the the little mouthpiece is up. So I'm guessing 
It could have been defense was out there because I usually have it down when the offense is there. So I don't know what I was probably talking about one of the calls because there were some real interesting calls that happened. Um, I'm trying to see whose ball it is. Normally, oh, say it's normally we can tell. Second and 16. Oh, so we're probably Timmy Boyle was spinning it. Tim Boyle, 12 and 19. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows, yeah, I mean, look, who knows who he's talking about. But, but the whole point is, you know, I don't understand, and I never did, and this stuff it isn't like just the Jets, but I don't understand anybody that will use, like, some media people to get some sort of, like, what is the, and there were people in Green Bay that would leak injury information to reporters in return for like uh, a positive review uh, or a positive word or putting a good or putting like writing that they should be up for a Pro Bowl or something. And I never understood that. I mean, I remember really walking out of, of uh, walking in the training room, hearing something, talking to a guy who was hurt and literally he had just walked out of the office and uh, the doctor's office and like 30 seconds later he was out there. Wow. by a certain guy and we all knew it was like four guys around who heard what was said it's you and we know exactly who it is it's you so in this situation crazy. i don't know uh who gains i guess you know whenever you're f like with big pharma it's like uh right. you want to figure sure. out what the whole what's sure. really going on follow the money yeah, like of course. follow mm -hmm. who who is to gain in this situation i hear you that's right? amazing i mean yeah i mean absolutely. so in this situation uh who is gaining something here like uh, trying to assassinate Zach's character. I don't know. I, I don't think anybody gains a situation, whether somebody from the organization or you a coaching just, staff or player. I think it's... it's do uh, the Kardashians. Uh, you, yeah, the Kim and Kanye, allegedly they gave fake names to everybody in their tight circle, and they wrote down what the names were going to be for their kid, and then whichever one got reported was like, all right, no, it's See this ya. person. Gotcha. That didn't know it's this person. It's a shame you got to do that with humans, but it's the way it goes. Uh, you talk about nobody benefiting. I mean, have you heard the anonymous quotes that have been said about this particular show to the Washington Post, the <laughs> New York Post, what? the Wall Street Journal? What? And it's like the people that are saying it are people that would potentially benefit from our show doing well yeah. on ESPN, but instead, we know who they are. Mm. I mean, it's very clear who they are. It's like, that's everywhere. And it's like, you got to get those people the hell out. Like, it's impossible to do, though. You know what I mean? Because I feel like once you put your finger in one hole, another one's going to pop up yeah. at some point. Don't you think? And I like, agree. Yeah. yeah. There's no there's no place for it, you know. And as much as, you know, you had a couple uh, interesting uh, individuals, you know, the same two over the years saying stuff about me, mm -hmm. at least they said it. You know, I mean, there was probably some anonymous shit there in, in 2015, uh, 2016 that was said, yeah. but at least... They talked about it. Yeah. It was interesting why and for sure. The content of what they said was very, very questionable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we all can probably agree on that. <laughs> um, but at least they they put their face to it. But like in a situation like this, like do you have to even do damage control like in the locker room or do the guys understand too, like, oh this is horse shit? Like Yeah, or do they have to make an announcement? Like Zach did not say yeah. no mm -hmm. to the team, or everybody just knows that to be true? What do you think? I mean, uh, we don't. We're not going to spend a ton of time with it. I think. Got it. Um, I would guess that Zach will probably say something to the team tomorrow. Um, I would hope that if that's the case, it stays within the team. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you, you guys, Feels like we've all been a part of a team or an organization before. Like, and there's some things that are esoteric in nature. I mean, they're meant for a certain group of people. There's some conversations that are only meant for certain people yep. and shouldn't leave the building, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a trust that goes yep. along with being in a locker room yep. where you say something to your homie and that shit doesn't go anywhere. Or you say something to a team meeting room and it doesn't go anywhere. And there's been too many instances this season um, where that stuff has happened and it's, it's not okay and we need to uh, weed it out in whatever way necessary, but. Did you say esoteric? Esoteric. Who? Esoteric? That's a good word. Foxy can bring up a definition. So, like an element. I'll wait, and then that's when we'll end it. What Chuck did you say? What you see, say. Where's Chuck at? What you see, say, and hear here stays Thanks here. You. Chuck's probably in Boise, Idaho, He's right now. Being mm -hmm. old somewhere. He starts traveling tomorrow from there. It takes him six days to get to Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Esoteric, intended for or likely to be understood by you only a it. small number. Wow. With a specialized knowledge or interest. Wow. Esoteric. You're a Jeopardy guy. You're a Jeopardy guy. You You're a Jeopardy guy. Uh. I'm gonna say I learned that at Butte. Shout okay. out BCC, Butte Community College. Yeah, shout out. Loaded Butte. That was where that uh, 
up now that your high school was where that one wide receiver. Oh, yeah, that guy. Dog. 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 Number nine. Thomas Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Wilson. Wilson. Absolutely. Shout beast. out to Thomas Wilson. Where are you at, buddy? Look up. Look your up some, biggest fan in the world is this man right <laughs> yeah. here. Oh, my God. Look up some high school Aaron Rodgers highlights. And it is an Aaron Rodgers highlight reel for sure. But it's also. But, but you might be confused. There's number 10 out there. Yeah. He's making a yeah. lot of plays. A lot of plays. Dog, too. Dog oh, yeah. mentality. Absolutely. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. We appreciate you, man. This is very kind of you. guys you. done? You got another hour. Yeah. You want yes. me to get the hell out of here. We don't want you to take up more time. Get the hell out do you want to hang? <laughs> oh, do you want to hang? No, I, I got stuff to do. I got a, I got a busy Fate. week. Oh, so you try to make me feel bad. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> try to make me feel bad. I got a lot of hats I'm wearing, you know, besides this Huga hat. Hell yeah. yeah. That was four times. That's pretty good. How about that watch? Look how nice that thing so is. Nice. Well, I see DB's watch all the time. I said, I got to bring in mine, you know. Deba, that's his ass, right? The green face on yours, though, does look good. Thank you. Would you would you wear it? Oh, every hey, day. You were gonna actually play for, <laughs> hey, every day, Aaron. Hey, yes. Hold on with the music. There we go. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> hold on with the music. You were gonna actually play this year, yeah? Because I'm looking down at these shoes, and you're out of the moon shoes, and yeah. getting to another pair of shoes, I think was a defined step at one point through this whole process. You were gonna play this, mathematically not eliminated. Mm -hmm. Still, rehabbing as fast as possible, as hard as possible. I get it. But genuine, that would have been like game changing forever, you know? Like, I, I, have you thought about that now that the chances potentially aren't as high? Have you thought about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's the most disappointing thing about the whole, about the whole uh, rehab process was that there was, you know, the 24th was, uh, was literally on my mind. I, I felt like that was, uh, you know, post what, 16 weeks, uh, sorry, 14 weeks. Today's, tomorrow's 12 weeks, so two more weeks, yeah, it'd be like, 14 and a half weeks, I felt like that was reasonable based on my progress. And, um, you know, what I did last week in a small circle uh, felt great. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do this week. I'm gonna try and get out there tomorrow on Thursday. Uh, but yeah, the uh, 24th was always uh, what I was focused on. But Commanders. You never know, you never know, what, can you never know what can happen. You never know what can happen. Yeah, because yeah, mathematically, yeah, go. that's right. Mathematically, not eliminated. A lot of things happen in the NFL. Exactly. Mm -hmm. With all these injured quarterbacks, a lot too. of injured quarterbacks in the AFC. Yeah. Who knows? You never know what could happen. That's right. I could show up to the ESPN set in New York City. Yeah. Who would have thought? Not me. Right. Not me. Not me. That's that's a lot fake. of things said. That's fake. What? You no, know, you gotta get yours in oh. too, I guess. <laughs> There's been a lot of things said right in this area right here. here. Uh huh. Right here. Not on this desk. Different table. Mm -hmm. Brought in a new table because they didn't oh, want you. Oh, and this, this is where they do first take in here? First take's over there. Okay. Get ups in here. Mm -hmm. oh. This is the NBA desk. What's the difference? They probably talked about Stop. the NBA desk. Greeny, Stephen A. Who's Greeny. on what show? Greeny. This is Greeny. Get this, up. Get up. Greeny yeah. and who? Uh, Orlovsky. Maziano yeah, is on Maz, here. Yeah, Dono. Uh, Rex Ryan. Okay. And then D. Ryan Clark. First take is Stephen A. and Michael. Maziano was yep. on there. Kimberly Martin. Shan. Shannon. Now. Molly. Shannon Sharp's on there. Shannon yep. Sharp. Molly hosts every single yeah. day. But that was an accident, I promise you. <laughs> you threw the ball to Sterling a lot? I watched this Brett? show, and that's about it. Yeah. Well, I did not throw the ball to Sterling, you asshole. <laughs> yeah, that was Brett. <laughs> Jeez. Sterling was a dog. He was a dog. Dog. You keep an eye on the Brett situation? I have. <laughs> I would keep an eye allegedly. on Allegedly. You're allegedly keeping an eye on What's mm -hmm. going on? I'm lot going get, on. You trying to get sued again? No. No, I almost have come all no, the that's way double, around. No, that's double jeopardy. You're actually not allowed to get sued again. You think? For the same thing, I don't think so. I think, by the way. <laughs> that's <laughs> law. Handled so. that one pretty good. Yeah. Pretty solid. Did you win? Yeah, uh, you handled it well. Yeah, I think we did okay. Yeah, I think the people in Brett's ear. Someone's got to sue them. Allegedly. That's what we're Allegedly. talking Allegedly. Allegedly. We don't think it's, we're gotten to the point where. It was good save there. Good save. We're not sure Brett knows anything's going on. No. We think it's other people representing for Brett. Allegedly. Allegedly. So that is, that is how I've kind of come to think about it. It's like, does Brett even know that he sued me? I, yeah. I don't know. No, I'm not, you know, I'm not 100 sure. Allegedly. No, I'm certainly feel that way, mm -hmm. but I, do, I, just, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we got to steer this away, bro. This is I don't even know. I just, that's how I'm viewing it. Exactly. Yeah. That's how I'm viewing it and yeah. moving along. Yeah, full right. circle. You know what I mean? Because the only people that want to know. Oh, man, thing, the photo booth the other night was nice, wasn't that? That was cool, huh? So good. Yeah, the, yeah, the 
Food too, sushi. Oh, oh man, yeah. Rob Get to have it. was it on top it of uh, like naked a, people? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that like Kanye's. Did you have the naked people? Can we no, ask about the masks? No. What was the masks? Why were the people in the masks? Like masquerade? They were awesome. Yeah, I have no idea. I grabbed. But one. shout out to Zero Bond. They. Oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to yeah. Zero Bond. That feels like an AJ Eyes Wide Shut thing. That's what he's super into. Yeah, he did it one year. Yep. He did a party yep. at his house. You know, for his charity, and the theme was uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Shocking. So, like, I've seen all of Kubrick's movies, obviously. Right. Um, of course. You know, yeah, that. yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. His, don't, don't go there. His, yeah, well, maybe. His cinephile is unbelievable. Yeah. Is what? Cinephile. So, I'd say he is a cinephile. He is a cinephile. <laughs> yeah. You kind of misuse that, but yeah, put up a definition. We get it. You're saying his um, IMDB? Yeah. Boom, there we go. Thanks. It's catalog. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, we got it. All right, let's get out of here. Let's let you go do your thing. The 24th is when it was supposed to happen. No, no, now no, we know no, that. No. no, put it. I mean, that was a, that was a target. You sure. said it. That was it's a target. That's what you said. Mm-hmm. Still could be. It was literally, you remember when Coach Saban told us, yeah, I benched the guy. I want to see how you'd respond from that whole thing. Yeah. And then a few weeks later, we say, hey, you benched him. And he, yeah, I don't, I like, don't like saying guys got benched. Is, right? this, is this hat color, Huga, by the way? Um, is it more, would you say, uh, I got my camera now, I'm good. Yeah. Would yeah. you say it's more Florida State red or Bama red? I think it's Florida State. I think it's got some Montana State in it. That's Maroon what I originally State. thought yeah, it was. Maroon. Yeah, I thought it sure. said the Grizz on top of there. Yeah. Roll damn tight. How do you feel about Florida State? Those boys. Mm. That was my team growing up. Mm. That was my team. I think they should have got in. Over? And Texas. Okay. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh. All right, but Texas beat Bama four months ago. Yeah, and Saban called us uh, to tell us four to tell ago. the college football playoff committee to put them in. So yeah, that's how ESPN. We're in. Yep. That's, that's why you doing. just said what you just. Oh my God, he's an ESPN show now. Wow. Show. How? Because you want the SEC in there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hope you feel good. Welcome to New York. All I know is in welcome to New York. All I know whoa, is whoa, the Pac-12 whoa. is in. Finally, the West Coast bias ends. The last year we're in the goddamn division. <laughs> we're an actual division. Last game in the Conference of Champions history. California Golden Bears go to the Rose Bowl and take down the UCLA Bruins to earn a bowl game. Shout out Justin Wilcox. Everybody in Cal Bear Nation. Adam Durst for coming to my party on Sunday. Love you, bro. Yeah, it was great and, to see you, dude. Uh, you are the rain king. And shout out to you guys for having me in here today. See you in Indy soon. Not too soon, but soon. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, of course not. We're season still. Yeah. Mathematically not eliminated. Soon shout is to relative. Steve. You know, it's a few months. Shout out to Steve Levy, too. Shout out to Stephen A. Smith, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not wearing any sleeves. and Looks good. Looking good, man. Yeah, change change his it. diet. Change his diet, change his life. You know yep. what I mean? That's Who's right. next? Maybe Connor. We'll Possibly see. you. Probably not. Yeah. How about Greeny? You got anything to say, Greeny? Or is, uh... I love Greeny. Got to see Greeny back there. Uh, need to get that thing out of there. I'll just, that jersey, listen, it's nice, <laughs> but we can do better. So next time I'm here, which who knows when that's going to be. Um, I'm sure soon. <laughs> I'm sure really soon. Yeah. He said he sleeps in the I white I should have brought a, like a one that was signed. I'm sure maybe. we can sign that yeah, one, I'm though, sure, right? Yeah, the Christmas. Let's just season, sign right? the glass yeah, right now. That's yeah. right. I'm not signing the glass. That's weird. <laughs> it's smeared. Yeah. You're a good man. Greeny's going to love that you just said that. That's where he sits every morning. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow he's going to be seat. doing yeah, a Yeah, he's going to sniff the seat when he walks in. <laughs> <laughs> Wafting, <laughs> wafting. He can still smell. Has Next he, uh, year we're going to win. Wow. I do love that about Jets fans. You know what I mean? They care mm-hmm. so oh, yeah. damn much. And this has been a shit season for sure. But we will be back. Hell yeah. Boom. And we'll be back in about four minutes or so. We're going to go to the bathroom because Ty has got to go. I have to go pretty bad as yep. well. Mm-hmm. Ty will be back in 10. <laughs> Maybe more. She'll be back in five. <laughs> Ty will be back in eight to nine. I might be 10. But nonetheless, we got CJ Stroud. I think AJ Hawk's going to be able to join oh, us. Nice. Well. So we cannot wait for that. A lot of things to cover as well, obviously. Don't you miss a thing. Yeah. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. Five. Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor with WWE.
I've been preparing for this my entire life. In my life, all I can think about doing is professional wrestling. McAvee closing in on another WrestleMania victory. First, we're gonna have to get the OKs, obviously, and we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was gonna potentially be a situation for a little bit. City of Stars, Austin Connors here. Shower here in the back. He sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, that nine, ten is. hours. I'm turning down that thing. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. We're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be broken. Hell yeah. I think there's like three people in here. Are we not supposed to come in here? No. Yeah. Four now. Four Look now. at you. I say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You're going to be in L.A.? I don't know. George is, uh, you know. It's I mean, a loaded question. George, we don't know. George, you don't know. Maybe. Okay. As soon as I saw George showcase that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Welcome to WrestleMania! Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you know, the night was getting late. We, weren't sure. yeah, we, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam. Okay? Like, not even in one. I wanted was at least to have an opportunity to have a match, just a WrestleMania match. match. Yeah, yeah, good guy stand there. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, oh my god, there it is. And I put out an open challenge, and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz, and I'm awesome. Hey. Let's. I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. But good news, this is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see The Miz versus Pat McAfee right here? of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miss, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. Baby meat as well. There's 80,400 and... Nine. 
97. People here, somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so I feel like I can make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref, we got you, we got you. Let's get cranking. I'm out. Let's go. Yeah. I don't do it. And McAfee, go right after Miz with the right hand. Private Miz back into the corner. Pat McAfee in action. This is a blatant sneak attack. He takes his duties as host of WrestleMania. I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. It was a super cool night, super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. 5.30 a.m. Sunday. This day started 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So much cool shit happened in between now and then. Joke of an existence. I'm very thankful for everything. Let's go take a nap. Uh, let me tell you a little story about these statistics. Troy Palomalu, okay? Fucking Troy Palomalu. So we had a fake for the Pittsburgh Steelers that was a 100 percenter. We didn't even have a cancel the goddamn play because it was a 100 percenter. If we ever end up in this situation inside the seven-yard line on the left hash, it is a 100 percenter that the C gap will be wide open and we will just part the C to the left. It'll be a touchdown. 100 percenter. We're playing in Pittsburgh, the city I grew up in. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I won the punt, pass, and kick. National championship, AJ. National championship, AJ. Congrats. AJ, did you ever win the national championship, punt, pass, and kick? Uh, I think I got third or fourth out of four at the nationals. I'm proud of you, man. Anyways, so we're there in that stadium, okay? A lot of McAfee's in there. A lot of McAfee's in Pittsburgh. I'm going to score my first fucking touchdown night game, Sunday night football, I believe it was, right here, touchdown. We get into that situation, and I'm like, holy fuck, this is really going to happen. We're like on the six, on the left hash. It's fourth and goal now. Field goal team's jogging on. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's about to, I'm, this is, I got to fucking, I'm ready. I am ready for this to happen. So I get out there. I get down. Vinny's, like, happy for me. Vinny's, like, very excited. He's like, let's fucking go. Like, Vinny's excited for me at this moment. I'm like, here we go. So I make the call. I forget what it was. So I start saying it, right? And everybody's looking at me like, okay, bright eyes. Here we go. Let's get after it. Offensive linemen are dead-ass tired. They do not want to be in the middle of a field goal anyways. So they're just like, all right, I don't give a fuck if you die here, but this should work. Let's get some points. And... All of a sudden, I go through my cadence, I call it, I get down, and Troy Palomalu's fucking ass goes ahead for however long his career was at this point. I think it was like nine years or eight years at this point. Not a once has he ever gone to this side of the field over here to the left and covered, strand, stood right in the sea gap. Never. He lined up exactly where he had lined in film 100% of the time. And then as soon as I got to like the second cadence right before set, he just bounced his little ass right over to the sea gap. And I like stopped everything I was doing and I literally just looked at him. And I gave him like a, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, why are you there right now? And then I stood up and said, we are kicking it. We don't have a, we have to kick it. We are kicking this. And then I get down 
And Vinatieri kicks it, and I jog off the field. And Chuck Pagano comes running up next to me. He's like, hey, good job. What you see? I said, what did I see? Palomalu just fucking went right into the goddamn sea gap. What did I see? What did I see? And he goes, okay, sounds good. Good call then. And that, good call then. And then Vinatieri's like, hey, way to go, buddy. I'm like, way to go? Are we not going to talk about how big of a fucking asshole Troy Palomalu is for what just happened right there? So that's. But it just, I saw the angel of death waiting for me at the, in the sea gap. It's unbelievable. Like- what, you thought I was going to run him over? No way. I'm going to get, he's probably going to strip me and score a touchdown the other fucking, that's Palamalu, bro. That ain't just some your backyard football with your son. This is, these are professional fucking athletes. He'd probably jump over the lineman, pick me up, and run me into the other fucking end zone if he wanted to. That's what he would have done. The hard-fitting safety of his generation, too. It's, I mean, Ed Reed, great cover safety. I don't know that you would have feared him, but you Ed Reed, I would have feared Ed Reed. Yeah, if I saw Ed Reed in that C-gap, absolutely. E.D. No, Reed, boy, the best safety you ever seen, boy. I ain't doing shit to Ed Reed. No, no, Ed Reed would have made the tackle. I'm saying that Palomalu would have shaved years oh. off your life. Oh, my God. Hey, why? let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay! Stop it! Stop it! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Sports, 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 sports. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to the city that never sleeps, New York. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 5th, 2023, hour three of the program starts now. Football is what we normally talk about, but here on this glorious Tuesday, we have an opportunity to chit-chat with a man who is synonymous with chatter about the NBA on ESPN. We saw him in the Seaport area this morning on TV, yep. and we said, can we get that guy on our show today? We never <laughs> have the opportunity. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Tim Legler. Yeah, ladies! Hi, ladies. Can, we call, can we call you legs? You, everybody does. Strangers call me legs all the time on the street, so you, and you guys aren't strangers. Absolutely. Well, we yeah, certainly were legs. strangers until about three and a half <laughs> minutes. Ago, uh, no but legs, it's an honor to meet you, and thank you for joining us. Let's dive right in. Hey, this in-season tournament has seemingly built a lot of buzz. Now, I'm from Indiana. Mm-hmm. We live in Indianapolis. Tyrese Halliburton's making a name for himself in this entire Whoa. thing, just like he did last night against the Boston Celtics. This has become a smashing success for, in my eyes. Now, am I reading it properly? Is that how it's being viewed by everybody nationally? And what does the NBA do next with this entire thing? Yeah, you think, 100% legs? absolutely nailed it, and I. I was dead wrong. I want to be first to admit it. I was so skeptical because I'm saying to myself, you got professional players mm-hmm. with a much bigger prize at the end of the year. Why is this going to matter to them? It's, it's almost like a Christmas tournament for a college team. Like, that's what it kind of felt mm-hmm. like. Got it. Mm-hmm. Here's, what, here's the part that I discounted. I, I should have put more credence in this. The bottom line is this. When you have guys that are alphas with this much testosterone and competitiveness, yep. and you put anything on the table and say, there's a trophy, go get it it does tend to bring this out in you. And, and that's what I was surprised about. Top guys on top teams buying into this extent to something this early in the regular season, that's different. And I think the NCAA component of it, some guys didn't even get a chance to really enjoy that very long, if at all, right? It gives them that feel. And every single one of those guys, which is they won a national championship, they wanted to experience that. This is as close as we can replicate it in, in an NCAA format with these one-off type situations. And you saw it last night. That was about as wild an awesome. environment yeah. as I have ever seen Indiana in a regular was season game. Off. So it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And Halliburton put on a show, and he's now become a player that's of national consciousness. Mm-hmm. He's not just a local story in Indiana or guys that watch the game every day. Everybody now knows about Tyrese Halliburton because, really, of the in-season tournament. Okay, so last question for me before a couple of big-time NBA guys have questions for you. Halliburton doing his thing, doing oh. it all. I heard, too, that since it is a $500,000 bonus, mm-hmm. too, like a lot of the starting guys feel like they're putting on for their bench. Yeah. Like they're sure, playing absolutely. for their bench. No That's question. another, like, great positive sign for the humans that are in the NBA that I don't think gets talked about that much. Well, no question. You look at the game last night and just take a look at the video of the guys on the end of the bench for Indiana. Yeah. 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 Look at their reaction on every Every bucket, right? You're like, okay, this doesn't look normal for like an early December regular season game, but that's what it that's what it created. And and you know they, the the way that they have gone about this uh, and and played it out so that you had the pool play and those games took on as greater significance. What we're trying to really do is create a bridge 
for this time of year, right? Because the adrenaline from the Christmas. start of the year yes. is over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is all football all mm-hmm. the time. Even for me, the biggest NFL fan in the world. Unfortunately, my team's at Commanders. So I can't Whoa. talk about oh, that much tough, right now. Tough to watch. Season ticket holder to the Washington Commanders. Okay, that says a lot. Thank you for adding money to fix team. that stadium. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, yeah, I personally nice have contributed yeah. Yeah. to the pop. We're just trying to create a bridge to keep people interested to understand there's something else going on besides football right now in the NBA. And now let's see what the carryover is when it's all over. I want to see, do we just go back to feel like the regular season for a couple months until the All-Star break? I hope not. I think this has created a level of awareness that we desperately needed. Got to come, man. Other game last night, Pelicans with Zion, yeah. it feels like, are the team that everyone wanted them to be when they first yeah. you know, drafted Zion. Are they one of those teams right now that, sure, it's the in-season tournament and they're you know, going to Vegas for the semis and possibly the finals, but are they like a real contender in the Western Conference like at this moment now, and if they can stay healthy, they'll be in it at the end? Completely. Once they got C.J. McCollum, I said, you give me that as my top three, because we're always talking about big threes all the time. You give me a point guard on the level of McCollum, a wing at the level of Ingram, and then just a unique force in Zion Williamson, which there's only one of them and they have them. Yeah. To supplement it with this bench and this depth they have, they've got got nine, ten guys they can go to outside of those top three guys that are all put on the court for a specific purpose and they impact the game every night. They might be the deepest team in the Western Conference in terms of Mm. impact players. Mm. With that level of talent at the top of your roster, the question is always going to be not only Zion's health, his, his like commitment to competitiveness. Because when I watch him sometimes, he's kind of cruising. If he ever went all out and actually sprinted end to end and like really went out there to do damage every night and be the best player on the floor, New Orleans is probably in the championship contender category Ooh. until he Whoa. gets Come to on, that point. Zion. Oh, I don't wow. know if I'm quite there, you know, but they're, 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 they're absolutely, to me, one of the most interesting teams in the league because they've got more than enough to throw a monkey wrench into the Western Conference with Phoenix and Denver and those teams. The question is consistency and then, and then staying healthy. Last question, we know you have to go. Yeah, but- I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, yep. but uh, you know, watching all football right now, yep. not really tapped into basketball yet. We know we saw what Joker and Denver Nuggets did right now. If you had to pick a team right now that's going to hoist that championship trophy, who would it be? Yeah, I'm going with Denver right now. I, they, they, got, they got the core continuity and they got the best player in the world. It's no yep. longer debatable mm-hmm. who the best player on the planet Joker, is. Joker, best player. Jokic basketball. is the best player on the planet. It was a debate there for a while with Giannis. It was a debate last couple of years with Embiid. I think that was a fair debate. Mm-hmm. He has separated himself from everybody right now. Because he does everything. He does everything, and he does it so efficiently. There's not one second of wasted motion in what he does. It's a simplicity to what he does that's so overwhelming because he embarrasses people when he looks like he's really kind of going half speed. Yeah. And you have no answer for his skill level. And, it, and his IQ is really what separates him. Denver, to me, because of the core continuity. But, look, Boston's going to be there, Milwaukee. And let's see what happens with Phoenix when they finally get all three of these guys together okay. at the same time. How about the Pacers? I don't know if they're a championship team. Legs. Legs. I don't think they're there yet. Legs, we're winning the yet. NCAA Listen, tournament. I gave oh, Howie all the love, you, all the love necessary, right? but let's not go that far. Hey, okay. we're going to have a parade. We win that day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Shut no down doubt. the city. No doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Legler. Thank there you. Yeah. 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 As Tim motions into his next program, which we can't thank you enough. Appreciate you, you, dude. Uh, We have the incredible opportunity now to get a chance to chit-chat with a guy who is taking the football world by storm. Tim Legler says he's a massive NFL fan, and obviously he's a season ticket holder for the Commanders, so he hasn't gotten an opportunity to see a rookie quarterback just slice and dice the NFL for a long, long, long time. Hmm. Down in Houston, they go from fire sale to Talk of town. Now, obviously, rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, if they were to make the playoffs, it'd be the first time since Andrew Luck and Chuck Pagano did it in 2012. Same division, different city. Houston Texan legend, ladies and gentlemen, C.J. Stroud. What's up, y'all? How you doing? CJ, great to see you, pal. How's the body feeling? You know, we're in week 14 now. You've come straight out of your college senior year, right into the off-season workouts, right into training camp, right into a full season. Right. How's the body? How do you feel, CJ? Uh, you know, you played in this league before. Going all the way back to college, man, uh, fast forward now, there's been a lot of work put in, so... Uh, Banged up a little bit, but, you know, it's part of the league. Everybody's not healthy at this point, and just working through that, but um, healthy enough to play, which is a blessing. 
Yeah, blessing for Houston. Uh, now, granted, you're still in the same division as Gardner Minshew. <laughs> Look out. Gardner Minshew's cooking, CJ, but not as much as you, okay? Everybody's chit-chatted about how great you've done as a rookie and how, you know, you're an anomaly at this thing. Has there been things that you feel like you've visibly gotten better at through this season? Has there been stuff that has slowed down for you? What is each week like for you at this standpoint that you've seemingly mastered the NFL already? Yeah, I mean, it's been a blessing to, to have it look so easy, but uh, this league is very challenging. Um, there's a great, there's great players every week. It's like the the challenges of a defense gets harder and harder every week. It seems like uh, so it keeps you really honest, and I just really uh, been on a great routine on uh, my body, on top of watching film, on preparation, and things like that. So uh, it may look easy, but it's, it's it's hard at times, and I just every week. I try to just uh, get better and better, and I pride myself on not making a mistake twice. And um, I feel like I've done a decent job of that and just trying to keep that going and um, just really, really lock into something special that was going on and keep building that. Every franchise is praying that a C.J. Stroud will yeah. show up and yeah. do what they did. You've made – hey, you should be very proud of yourself, C.J. Yeah. Yeah. Stroud. A lot to accomplish still. A lot to accomplish still. But I think we're still learning stuff about you, which is what we love. Tone Diggs has a question for you. Yeah, CJ, I mean, obviously all the throws are awesome and everything like that. And we've kind of come accustomed to you making these unbelievable throws and stuff. But it was the first time that I've kind of seen some dude get in your face and push you and, and you didn't back down one inch. Okay. Yeah. Right. To see. Would, is that because you're comfortable now? Would that have happened earlier in the season? Or like, how? what's your thoughts on it just all together? Um, yeah, I mean, I really haven't had an opportunity to really stick up for myself yet. Like, it's been a lot of respect on both sides of the ball. Um, there's been like a couple little things here and there, but nothing direct. And that situation, I mean, I just felt like clearly the whistle was blown. You can see me trying to retreat and not take a hit or whatever. Usually I'll dirt the ball in that situation, but there was really nothing to, no one to throw dirt it to. I should have probably did it anyways, um, because we're in an empty formation, but uh, I mean. I feel like, yeah, I'm become more comfortable and I've, I've been able to hold my composure and, and keep real real calm, cool, and collective. Uh, but that situation, I just felt like I, it was necessary. Um, and honestly, I'm glad because oh, I was going yeah. to throw the ball at him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I thank God I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I had a flag on me. But it was fourth and two. We ended up uh, getting the flag and getting the first. So it kind of worked out. But, um, yeah, it was just something I, I felt like I needed to stick up for myself. And I, the, the coolest thing for me was seeing my brother's having my back, you know, my old linemen, they ran down, they was not playing by me. And I appreciate that a lot because uh, just like they were uh, there for me, I'm always there for them. And I try yeah. to be as best as possible, so. Yeah, you learn a lot about each other in those moments. And the rest of your team learned a lot about you in that moment, uh -huh. too. You know, yeah. like quarterback, kicker, punter, similar situation. Mm -hmm. You're not scared to get into a fight. The rest of the locker room's like, did you see? Yes. Did yeah. you see? <laughs> That's a big deal, obviously. I'm not speaking out of pocket here, but, like, it feels like you and that Texans organization and team is, like, the perfect fit. Does it feel that way for you as well at this point? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and the thing that's been so cool with that is it was all natural. You know, it wasn't like me forcing myself upon them, them forcing themselves upon me. It was um, just really natural on everything that we built uh, relationship-wise and uh, just trust. You know, I think for me that was something that was really big, really big was coming in and being a leader. Um, but I wanted, to be, I wanted it to be earned more than given. And you can tell how much that uh, my teammates love me. You can tell how much I love them. And it's been a blessing to be able to grow something special so far. But definitely got to keep it going, and we can really do something special this year, I feel. So that's a definitely a first step. Yeah, if a rookie quarterback top two pick sticks his face into an outside linebacker's face. Yeah, that, yeah. 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 I'm thinking that's going to be beloved in the locker room. d Bud has a question for you. Yeah, CJ, uh, when your teammates and your draft classmates well, you know, obviously a great win, but uh, a big loss with losing Tank Dell uh, for the rest of the season. Who uh, Who's going to step up in his absence that maybe the public doesn't know about quite yet? Yeah, it wasn't – it's been – it's hard, actually hard to work, hard to like really speak about it still. Um, in those type of moments, you want to go back and really just like, dang, the play before that, we should have just did this or did that to yep. not let that happen. And uh, so, man, I, my prayers are still out with Tank. That's my really, really part of my best friend on the team, and we hang out, hang out all the time. And I mean, I've been in constant communication with him, just helping him out, trying to keep his mental right. So, I mean, that's just a sad situation, but part of the game and. Um, I really, I mean, I told Nico after the game, I was like, bro, 
you had a great game. I think when he went for 190 or something yes. crazy. And, Bananas. And I was like, not, yeah, not only do I think, like, you need to keep that going, but I think you need to start being a leader and be more vocal. And so I kind of challenged him with that, and, man, he was all for it. So him, I mean, Noah, Rob, Match, um, I think Match is going to get more involved, which is going to be great for us. But we have the tools that we need to still be great. And, of course, we would still love Tank. He was at the forefront of that. But uh, this league is an next man up league, and I definitely have faith in those guys to make plays, and uh, I can't wait to see the guy, those guys do that. You're a rookie, yeah. you know. It's hard to uh, – the way you talk and the things you say – it's hard to put that into perspective, but like this yeah. dude's a rookie right, right. now. Man. And you talking to Nico, like, hey, you need to be a bigger leader now. And then we see on the defensive side of the ball with Will and what Stingley has done, feels like there's a youth yeah. movement down there in Houston. Do you guys recognize that? And how close of a group are you? Yeah, for sure. Um, we have uh, our player development guy, Dylan Thompson. We have a rookie development meeting every, uh, I think, what was that Monday? And all the rookies, we sit in there and he gives us like a thought of a day. Let's us know about the team we're playing from GM, owner, like all these little things. And then he gives us a nugget and he lets some of us talk um, and things like that. And um, I remember Will one day, uh, it was after we played the Colts, we were on too. And Will challenged everybody. And he was like, okay, we might be young. We might not know all, all the things that are going on in this league. And uh, that's all right. But we're the foundation. And we're going to lead this team. Um, and I definitely think that we were all picked. Um, to our organization for a reason like every single rookie that we have that is active inactive or a practice squad whatever you want to see like we all have a, a, a sense of leadership so um, that was a challenge that he challenged us with early and I feel like as you can tell it's been a, a young team yeah. kind of aura that has lifted this team up so mm -hmm. uh, it's been really cool to see that and um, of course along with a lot of great vets that we have too um, but definitely this team is is young and we're trying to definitely lead the pack as best we can. Speaking of young first year, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, CJ, uh, D'Amico, obviously, you know, he is, I think, one of the front runners or in the top three for coach of the year. And it, if you look at what he did to the Texans and what you have done for the Texans, they've completely turned the entire building around. How is that relationship on a day to day basis? Like, are you going up to him in practice talking shit? Or <laughs> How are we doing about that? Are you all right? I, I honestly don't know what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure it out while I talk. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, nah, you're good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Mika, Mika's a great coach. Um, and him being a defensive coach, we uh, definitely have a, a good idea of like how we approach each other. And sometimes he gets irritated with me because I'm doing good against his defense. And sometimes I get irritated with him because he's calling – uh, zero blitz in a two-minute drill and uh, in a walkthrough, you know. And, yeah. Uh, so we have our, our our competitive nature, and I love that about him. Like he's not a coach that's going to shy away from competing. Um, and that's for me. That's what I. That's what I'm uh, happy uh, to to really be with a coach that definitely cares about the team, and he understands what it is to be a player. And he played for the Texans, so one of his biggest goals was to was to get this team back rolling. So um, I appreciate him um, and everything he's done. I definitely think. He should win Coach of the Year um, to, to see how quick this thing has turned around at uh, his leadership. All right, we'll count you down for a vote towards him for Boom. Coach of the Year. Go ahead and write that. Yep. Mm -hmm. CJ votes D'Amico for Coach of the Year. Your word should mean something. You think another thing that I think D'Amico and you and your young crew have – like these close games, you guys win them. You know, like there's a lot of coming down to the end of the game, need to make a play. You guys do it. Why do you think your group does that? Why do you think you guys in these close games, at, like you just know how to win? What do you think it is about your team down there in Houston? I think um, one thing, like you said, that it's, it gets harder and harder as the year goes on, especially after Thanksgiving, is those hard wins, those last second, those two-minute drills. So Miko has done a great job of putting us in those situations all the way back to OTAs. And we've done a two minute drill after practice every like every day. So um and then now since we can't do a full speed, we do two minute walkthroughs and just operation, getting in and out uh, of our calls, echoing the call outside. And um this this week was our defense I was up and they did a great job of um of just being resilient, you know, and that's everything that you want um, huge going pick. into these yeah. last games. Huge, you know, huge so, Stingley's everywhere. Yeah. That dude is everywhere, yeah, feels like. Yeah, no, nah, Sting is I told him after the game, man, I'm proud of you, bro. Like, he, he's special, man. He, he's a generational talent. He's definitely, like, I I don't know if I've ever told him this, but uh, he's the most talented on our team by far. Like, just pure, like, athleticism, ball skills, 
getting in and out of breaks, like offense, defense, whatever you want to say. He's the most talented dude on our team, and he's been working his tail off at it. So I'm super proud of that dude. He, I know it's going to continue to happen. So I'm um, just really mm. proud of him. Uh, he's floating through the sky there, and then his last one, he goes up, contested another big time that's, catch. That's crazy. You hear, that, you hear that about Sting everywhere. You heard the same thing with LSU, that crazy talented <laughs> roster, and now to hear CJ say that's crazy. Hey, Sting, wait. Hey, you done good, bub. <laughs> you done good. People Keep saying going. really good stuff about you, and uh, me celebrating in a big way. Tone has a question for you about some stuff. Yeah, CJ. Did I see that you're warming up with a basketball uh, before the game and maybe some other things, a baseball? I don't know if a baseball bat was in there or not. You're swinging a stick. What, what is that for? <laughs> yeah, um, I go back to really college. Um, uh, I started working out in L.A. Uh, with this company called 3D QB. And uh, my, my trainers are Taylor Kelly, Adam Dudo, and John Beck. And they've done a great job of just – Putting me in situations or home like run. drills. That was a home run. Make me <laughs> <laughs> splash. To make my to make my body kind of uh, oh, oh. d- dissociate from my shoulder to my hip, and I've been working on some different movements and stuff, and it's been cool, man. Like the basketball, I really use that um, one because I love basketball too. Um, it's the pronation of like flicking your wrist from throwing a football to shooting a basketball is pretty similar, and it helps me just put rotation on the ball. Also, the basketball is a bigger Ball. So by the time I, I touch a football, it's smaller, and I feel like I can throw it hmm. harder, faster, farther. Um, right, and then the baseball right. swing is just uh, kind of separating my shoulder and my hip, uh, and just that helps the zip on the ball and, and making my taking a lot of pressure off my arm. There's been a couple other things that I do, but my coach in college, uh, Coach Day, used to always go to uh, Stephen Curry's uh, like pregame when he played for the uh, for the Warriors, and my coach coached for the Niners, and he said his warm up was like an hour long. And just that routine of getting yourself, letting your body know you're about to play a physical game. That's something that uh, I've taken up, and it's been cool to kind of just see it uh, pay off. And it's not easy. So, and for kids, don't try it if you don't know what you're doing, because you might hurt yourself. So, uh, it's been cool though to kind of just get the buzz and help people out who want to try it, but be careful. <laughs> Yeah, get fully lubricated out there before you do your thing. And when you're swinging that bat, are we hitting dingers there, or are we spraying the field? Oh, uh, we hitting dingers. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. we squash the buzz. No, it's, it's a it's a golf thing, but I use it as like a more. I feel like a football throw is more of like a baseball swing. Mm-hmm. Like setting your front foot, not not over striding, um, and rotating your hips. So a lot of it, um, kind of oh. has to do with baseball in a sense too. Let's talk about your throwing. Uh, you had a throw a couple weeks ago that didn't count. Oh, holy hell! You know what I'm talking about. Is that the yeah. furthest you've ever thrown a football? That 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 was <laughs> no. one of the most absurd things I've ever seen. We actually ran the highlight of it the next day. First time we've ever gone. No, this play didn't count. But <laughs> yeah. look at this. Th- that was bananas. That's just in there all the time. See, yeah. That's in there. Yeah, I feel like I, I think I can throw a father, To be honest, uh, I left the. I left it yeah, now short. that I'm thinking about it, it did look short. Yeah, yeah. kind of fluttered <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. 65 yards. Well, that far? well no. it's a shame that it didn't count because I, I, don't, I don't think it was a penalty, but, you know, it, we're Ooh. third and 20 and they just don't <laughs> want us to get that thing. So it is what it is. We'll, uh, we'll try to make that play happen again. But, no, nah, it was pretty cool. I, but I definitely doubt I could throw it farther. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see that. And you've said on the <laughs> record so many times that refs have a hard job. Yep. Yeah. You know, they're not going to get it right, and you appreciate them. But you're right. We agree. That was not a penalty. That was <laughs> no. bullshit. Ty has a question for you, CJ. Yeah, CJ, we just had Aaron Rodgers in here, and he was basically saying how, you know, we shouldn't be so quick to either crown a guy or basically say, like, hey, this guy stinks. And he said a lot of times in the NFL when you're young, like the development from your first year to your second year and then from your second year to your third year is – is massive and you might be a completely different guy but with you this year when you come in and you just hit the route hit the ground running like that and you've been incredible like do you notice your development week over week like as the season progresses like is there any time like for instance last week where like you're either reading a defense or you make a throw and, and you're kind of mentally saying like oh that's something that I wouldn't have necessarily been able to do or mm-hmm. wouldn't have seen like in the first week of the season but like you can kind of jot down like these different bench benchmarks and like progression that you've had because you've been playing so well this year. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I, I feel Aaron hit it on the nail. Um, there's a type of progress that you need to see every week. Um, and for me, like I said before, I hate making mistakes twice. So there's a ton of uh, mental bookmarks that I put um, on defenses, teams, and 
uh, this is a players led league and players make play. So uh, more than like scheme, uh, of course, scheme is very important. You got to know coverage. You have to know um, what kind of uh, play you're running against a bad look or a great look. Um, at the same time, you got to know who you're playing against. So um, I've been just jotting down notes and stuff on how certain players play. Cause I mean, it's really different. Like you can play an aggressive safety like Jesse Bates one week, and then you can play a conservative safety the next. So, um, there's been a lot of progress, and I think like even as a team, you look at when we play the Ravens week one to now, we're a completely opposite team, and um, I just think that's the testament to hard work and um, not only on the field but preparation and things like that. So, uh, for me, I know this is just the beginning, and um, I said I've said this before, and they'll hate me this. I mean, they'll love me this week, but they'll hate me the next, and uh, no, that's one of the realest things you. ever. Yeah, always. We love yeah, you, CJ. Yeah, no what. <laughs> yeah. The world will turn their back quick. So um, I understand that. And uh, nice. for me, that's not what I do it for. I do it for the glory of God and, and to see my teammates happy and smile and for the Texans fans because uh, it means more, uh, you know, and I can't wait to see the prog- the progression keep going and to get better and better in year two, year three, year four. And it's a lot of, a lot of exciting things that are going to come. And let's fill up that stadium. Yeah, that's right. Let's fill up that stadium, mm-hmm. CJ. You know, the, the, hey, you don't know this because you were probably in junior high at the time. But whenever J.J. Watt, who might be playing for you guys again this year, it sounds like <laughs> it. the way he's been talking on our show. When J.J. and them were rolling down there, that stadium was the loudest in the entire league. I mean, the Texans fans, in my eyes, are some of the best in the NFL whenever they – and they got it with you guys. I'm excited oh, yeah. to see the train that this entire thing becomes. And I think the more I hear you talk – the more I think of like how perfect of a front man you are for a team and an organization. And then we learned about your cause, your cleats this weekend, which is another massive piece, I think, to your entire story. We're lucky to learn about you, CJ. That's just what you, the NFL world is very lucky for you. The football world as a whole is lucky for you. And I know that the prison reform is a massive uh, thing in your life because of what has happened to your father. Uh, Just keep going, dude. You know what I mean? We appreciate the hell out of you. Hell we yeah. genuinely do. You need I appreciate to hear that. that. Thank you, you need you, to man. hear that from us. You need to hear that from us for real. Thank you, man. That, that means a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're hey, now granted. You know, Colts two times a year. <laughs> <laughs> I seen. I knew it was coming. Yeah, seventeen game season. You know, maybe you know, these NBA guys. Yeah, too fifteen. That's like twelve games yeah. off. Yeah, take couple. For the good of your career, I want to see you play twenty, thirty years. Exactly. Yeah. The playoffs. Two games off each year against the Colts. Look well, at yeah, us. Play take man. What are you thinking? You're Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. Well, thank I'm you. Playing against the Colts. They're a great team, though, man. They're doing a lot of special things. I like, I like uh, uh, Shane. He's a good coach. I met him uh, throughout the combine and everything. He's a great coach, and I think Gardner's a uh, playing really good football. So. That's, that's a matchup waiting to happen, but it's, it's some weeks ahead, so uh, we'll see. All right. Even whenever you say something like that, it's the right thing. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> I appreciate the hell out of you. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, quarterback for the Houston Texans. Probably rookie of the year. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, CJ Stroud. Yeah. Appreciate you Thank you, man. Look at us just giving out awards. Yeah, there it is. Unbelievable. Yeah, that I mean, was, I think we're pretty safe there. Yeah, if you throw his hat in the ring for coach of the year, we can throw our hat in the ring for rookie of the year. Come on. Yeah, and MVP. Boom. Why not? If that Texans team ends up going on a run, like a real one, in oh, the yeah. AFC, which is possible. Yep. Hey, it's very possible. Could get a home game. In the AFC. Sure. Home playoff game, obviously huge. But what if they, what if they fuck around and win in the playoffs? Uh, you know, they have the team to be able to do it. That would be absurd with where they were to where they have come. <laughs> yeah. That it's is... Sad. Banana. Jeff Saturday mentioned it earlier. He said a lot of these other owners and other fan bases are seeing what's going on in Houston. They're like, yeah. oh, it's Paul. rookie head coach, rookie quarterback. We're able to do it. It's like, I, that's a special group down there right now. Well, that's what we were saying at the start of the season. Or not, we weren't saying it, but a lot of people were saying, like, hey, you know, they, they're they going to suck next year, and then they're mm-hmm. going to draft Marvin Harrison, and they're going to be able to yeah. kind of reform that bond they had at Ohio State. It's like they're going to be picking in the mid-20s. Like that, it just like no one thought that they'd be doing what they're doing right now. I don't want to say that anyone could beat anyone in the AFC because that would be stupid. But I think anyone, any of those AFC teams, if they have a bad day, could lose to any of the other teams. If Got that it. makes sense. Yeah, like if somehow the wagon that is Tua in that offense, which has happened for some reason, just isn't mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. could happen. Yeah. Especially, I mean, if Houston has the home game, it wouldn't be. But, like, in the playoffs, yeah. could be get cold. Yeah. Sure. You know, and I saw something out of Tua last night that made me think he's the coolest guy of all time. Yeah. Yes. Sure. That was 
awesome. He was great on the Manic Ass. Yes. Unbelievable. And then Peyton and Eli both deciding at the same exact time, oh, we got to sing over this. Yeah. Singing two different tunes, but they sounded certainly the same. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats to that moment. That yeah. Incredible. Incredible. And he's shredded. And the more, yeah. Shredded. The Bengals. Oh. Look at the mental toughness of Tua, by the way. Still yeah. going. Yep. Keep going, Tua. Keep going. You're perfect. On a delay. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You need to work on your cadence. Singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Pretty good. Not Pretty good. Bad, good bad. Speaking, speaking of music, did you know that song? I did not know that song. Oh my Deep god! Part. You didn't fucking know either. Yes, I it did. It was not Pearl Jam. It was Pink Floyd. Yeah, he was joking. Yeah, so we, we, we were, were fucking with you. you. Yeah, we were we were, they were, you were getting fucked oh. with. Darius, we were fucking with you. <laughs> well, now I know. <laughs> that was Eric Clapton. Yeah. What two was just playing? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was an original. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Tunes in heaven. But there, I saw Darius Rucker did say he would uh, he would play with him. Oh, yeah. Well, Hootie and Blowfish actually going on tour this summer. What? Mm hmm They're back. Let's go. Back. Come yep. to Indy? Come to Indy? Mm. They should. Have, oh, have, to. Man. have to. Have to. Indianapolis seems like a place Hootie and Blowfish would yeah. have to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Got to. Maybe. Seems like it. Darius Rucker, uh, I think he was down there at the SEC Championship. Mm -hmm. Drumming away. Yeah. Yeah. Gamecock, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You were named after him? No, I wasn't. Hmm. What? I wasn't. Oh, first the window's fake. Yeah. Now yeah. you're not named after Hootie. Why would Aaron tell lies like that? Well, it's the C word. That's right. Yeah. I thought it was a different C word the first time. I Me that. too. Yeah. I was yeah. sitting over there like, whoa, oh, we're doing yeah. journalism. Hey, ho, ho, we're doing words. journalism right now. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. Oh, that C word. Whoo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Well, I don't know because what you of, went to trust you. <laughs> you went straight to I, conspiracy. I, I, I don't know. I went straight to conspiracy. I yeah. knew he was going conspiracy. Just Mine was a much shorter one, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Not me. It was a completely different yeah. one. Oh. Catastrophic. Um, Had to do with USC, actually, South Carolina. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. What are you talking about? No, I knew immediately there was conspiracy theorists. Uh, I, I do believe there are just nope. a few other ones nope. yep. that I... We've, we could just get out. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Feels like we did it. Sure. Didn't we? We did New York. Yeah, yeah. we did yeah. New York. It's great. We did pizza. Right? Yes. Yeah, which... What's pretty, that? It's pretty good. It was good? It's like real good, but... What were you saying it was number top two? two? Where, where, yeah, where's it at? Two, not in, one, in the though. rankings, right? I, I'm not going to do a, a full pizza ranking right now. Oh, okay. Dallas Salad Pizza is near the top. Yeah. Sure. Just needs to be known because sure. that's a personal relationship sure. and I work there. Yeah. There's right. one that right below Sabar. tends to just sit above the rest wherever you go. And it travels. It is really? everywhere. It's everywhere. Really? And it, it's consistency is so good. Top notch. And I have this Italian horn on, okay, and I grew up in an Italian community. Yeah. So when I say this type of stuff, I get judged harshly. I don't think from you should say it. Bingo. There's one of the Italians I grew up around, Anthony DiGiulio. Sure. And Franklin Nicholas Moraldo is probably going to have some thoughts. And there's a Peronio out there that's going to do his. <laughs> and there's a Dallas Sala who owns a pizza shop mm -hmm. who's going to have their entire thing. And this can literally go on for the next 15 minutes of the most Italian names that you've ever <laughs> heard of in your entire life. Master Giacomo was yeah, one there of them. There you go. I mean, that's it. his first name was Angelo. I mean, you're talking about all Italian. <laughs> Italians all the time. So when I say Pizza Hut is phenomenal. <laughs> it's the best. Yeah. Pizza Hut is phenomenal. The party with Cinnabon too. Oh, yeah. oh and their wings. Their wings. Oh, wings. Oh, wings. Pizza Hut is so fucking good. And that's, listen, now the difference. Like I ate that Grimaldi's. Yeah. Number one in New York. Right. You could tell that they have like natural ingredients. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it was like super fresh. This morning I didn't wake up and feel you know, the urge to sprint to a toilet. Exactly. And like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it was a much more fresh pizza. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it did taste good. It was delightful. Yeah, now there's good. some New York pizza that is not good. Very mm -hmm. bland, Agreed. very cheap. But. And people act like it's better than everywhere else because it is New York. I can respect that. I understand that that's how you think. But we in Pittsburgh also like the way we make our pizza. And then there's some in Chicago that's lasagna well, that yeah. they call pizza. Mm -hmm. So there's different takes <laughs> in this entire it's thing. Not. I will say Pizza Hut, most consistent when you go to town where there's no <laughs> Italians. Okay. That's actually, uh, that's, yeah. 
No Italians. Yeah, if we're if we're eating pizza in Indianapolis, sure. Boom. You go to Pizza Hut. It is going to be better than all the other chain ones. But also, I'm not scared to admit it tastes better. <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, it and it the, tastes better than what I ate last night. And that's yep. the thing is like if you're <laughs> if you're in the pizza game. But it's game, terrible. It's, Makes me feel terrible immediately afterwards. Absolutely. Charge Dramatis it to the game. tasted Sparta. great. Made me feel good. Charge it to the game. You're going to have awful diarrhea the next day. Awful. Yep. Awful. Almost immediately upon taking it down. Yeah, right? exactly. It's wanting to get out. Yeah, like for me, it's same night and next day. That's going to happen. <laughs> but the thing is, is like people in the pizza game. Like, Grimaldi's, like, they know, hey, we're playing for second place. <laughs> we're not going to put all <laughs> the stuff. Yeah, yeah we're never going to be able to true. eclipse Pizza Hut. You know? Everyone knows that. I'm going to sell their soul to get them Everyone more. knows Whoa. that. They do. It. Well, it's just like what Grimaldi's is willing to put in their pizza. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's as much as what Pizza Hut's willing to put in their pizza. Exactly. Because sure. I have no idea what's in there. I know the grease on top of it is oh my plenty. God. I know it's a lot. I know Grimaldi's didn't have much. Grimaldi's was like optically. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. V- tasted very good. Mm-hmm. I bet. But literally, the only thing I can compare it to is the pizza that I'm able to eat now in Indiana on a regular basis. Sure. And that's greasy ass. Who knows what the ingredients yeah. are? <laughs> pizza care. Hut, pizza. And uh, in this particular one, I got to give it to the Hut. Absolutely. And people in New York know, like, Hey, the big New Yorker from Pizza Hut is better than any slice you're going to get in New York. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I don't think that's It's just true. the way it is. I, mean, I don't I hate, think what you're saying no, is right. No, it's a thousand percent true. And I hate saying it because I do love New York pizza. But I'm yeah. eating Dallas Salad Pizza over Pizza Hut pizza, though. That needs to be. I've never had Dallas Salad Pizza. You should, yeah. So I can't, you know. Dallas Salad would never be able to make it out of about a mile radius of where Dallas Salad Pizza is. Sure. I don't think they're doing DoorDash. Okay. I, they are. We're talking every morning they're doing right, it. Mixing though. it up. Yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. it. Does, day, does yeah. it help that the uh, owner of Pizza Hut, his last name is Hutzioni? <laughs> does that? Piazza <laughs> Hutzioni. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> that's not real. That's, that's, no, no, it is. Piazza, like Mike Piazza. Yep. That's his first name. Hutzioni <laughs> is, is his so name. So it was like they say Adidas is Adi Dossenheimer. Right. You're yeah. saying Pizza Hut was Piazza Hutzioni? And he was like, shit. Mama's recipe, I could turn this shit into, hold on, Piazza Pizza. No. No. Piazza, I mean, P- Pizza Hut. Hut. Hut, yeah. hut, hut. Hut one. Hut two. Hut oh, one, hut two, hut well, three. Oh, well, well, well. Well, well, well here's well. a man that doesn't like any flavor oh, on anything. The wrong Ladies and gentlemen, a, food. a guy who's made his home in this particular studio. <laughs> Dale Lodge this way. Wasn't he supposed to be here like four hours ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's weird. Was it? Yes, we you talked were. about it yesterday. We literally talked to you. Yeah. Then what's this all about? This I don't is the know. New York thing. The way the way he looked at me too, I can't I can't shake his hand because I think he's gonna pull it away. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No, he's not gonna do it. Smart. Smart. He's a different in person. What are you talking about? What, fatter? I get it, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I'm eating nothing. Do you want to sit down or you, you come just... across nicer in person? You want to sit? You want to sit down? Can we get you a chair? You want us to get you a chair? I got I chair. Stand. I just drove. So I've been sitting. Yourself or? Yeah. Oh, you guys are on our. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Right here? And this is there studio? everyone this else in this oh, studio? Well, no, no, no. I sit in like a little closet here. I usually do it from Bristol, but UConn plays. You going tonight? No. You can't place tonight, so no, uh, no, at MSG. I don't laugh. Don't these are just these are just respect. It's respect. No, you know, no, it's just the way that you said it. You, yeah, you oh, two oh, are the two most famous you're not going. UConn I alumni of all time. It worked. Huh? They play the the Dickie V Classic tonight, so they play. yeah against uh, UNC. Yeah, hell yeah, Dickie V. They're gonna get mm-hmm. killed. Hey, what do you think about um, what do you think about Jake Browning? You think if you just drop him in the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> offense, he'd be able to do what Brock Purdy does? <laughs> Basically, you're the worst. What? He was good hey, last night. Did you watch? Oh, yeah. It was just a question. I it thought just, he played really good. I thought great. he played really good on time. I also think Jacksonville's defense was so bad. Not great. Like surprisingly year. bad. They didn't challenge him once. They played a ton of easy zone. I thought they ran themselves out of so many different plays. I was really disappointed in Jacksonville's defense. Didn't but Browning played good. Away. They moved it. What'd you say? Didn't take Chase away. But even in zone, mm-hmm. like they didn't play much man. They just gave him throws in zones. Now he played on time, so that's a credit to him. And they moved a pocket to hit some screens versus some blitz. But I was more disappointed in how poorly Jacksonville's defense. Could have been the one seed if they won. Dude, they literally just lined up in zone and just got ripped apart. 
pass after pass. Just 350 yards. Yeah. yeah. Think Beathard got a chance with the Dex? What's it going to be, three weeks? A chance Probably. to, like, yeah. hang in there? Yeah, 8-4 like yeah. no. right now. Yeah, good player, obviously. No? Iowa guy. Yeah. Texans and Colts at their heels. It's because you hate Iowa? What do you mean? Come on, Dan. Like, well, He's a good backup. So okay backup, solid back. I mean, 9-10. Solid. solid. Talk about beat hard. Yeah. Is that what we're talking about right no. now? Is he a yeah. former Eventually, no. Hmm? Yes, he is a former Niner. Former Niner, too. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. He should, that, that's the he one. Been spinning in that Shanahan offense. That's the know? one that everyone says. Would've like, you there. could play anybody there, and then it's like, well, th- there was a stretch where it was Nick Mullins and him did yep. not. Oh, and team. Jimmy G yeah. and Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy G played good. Really? Like good. Brock Purdy? No. Oh. Dan. Hmm. Is that no, a compliment to Brock Purdy? He did nice. good. Yes. All right. Damn. Do you like that, Dan? That's, that's a full moment. Dan, we do six, like that. Six, six, eight, getting better. Are six, five. You're tall. He's very tall. You very know what everyone always says? They come up to me in the streets and they're like, man, you're so much taller than I thought. And I look at him and I said, dude, I was an unathletic white dude <laughs> playing quarterback. That's not true. I heard you were athletic. athletic. Well, yeah. definitely athletic. Can golf, can hoop, can play. Yeah, I was an athlete. No, I was very years. unathletic. But you got to tell Hawk, when you're doing your stuff with really, Hawk, yeah. you got to get, get him closer to the camera. <laughs> he looks so little. Because when close to the camera, he's And you're a model? He's getting a... Uh, Hawk is... Oh, take little. it off. Take Hawk it off. Take it off. Connor, I'm married. I'm married. No, you're right. I mean, the boys are buzzing because Dan Orlovsky stopped in the studio. Dan, when you walk in here, what do you think to yourself? You know what? Today, every take is mine. Mm -hmm. Is that what you think when you walk in here? What day is it? Like today or Mondays? Every day you walk in here, you say, you know what? It's fucking take time. (laughs) Is that what you do when you walk in here? Because every day you bring it. Oh, yeah. Every day you put that bat Mm -hmm. right there on the shoulder and that... When you see first pitch fastballs, we swing. Boom. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's it, well said. I yell at all the kids when they look at a first pitch fastball in Little League Baseball. It's going to be the best pitch you're going to get you're the entire time. You're not allowed to coach them, though. I can coach. Uh, baseball, I can coach. Okay. I'm coaching basketball right now. I also hit up J.J. Redick to ask him for five plays that I could run for my youth basketball team. Not a bad little connection there. Yeah, J.J. J.J. sent me a seven-minute video. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. All position on a dry race board. And what do you say? Let's get the elbow tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's seriously. JJ Reddick's assistant coach. I mean, yeah. we, we got a. We you gave me a dry race board. All the positions where people go, why they get called that position, the type of player I should put in that position. I love JJ, that. wow, yeah. we're gonna be awesome. Thank you, JJ. Connor has a question for you, Dano. Yeah, uh, Dan. When, when you're thinking about, you know, Time Magazine's Athlete of the Year. Uh, do you immediately go to, you know, maybe someone like Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones, or do you think Lineal Messi deserved it? <laughs> good question. That's a good uh, question. We better hear it. Are those the three, in our, the three that I can choose from? Can I tag team off that? I, I, thought, I, I will yeah, throw yeah. Uh, Kenny, Mitch, and Mason Rudolph in there. You too. want Mason strictly because it's Christmas? Yeah. Okay. Oh, How Rudolph, did the Patriots offense yeah. look after they benched Mac? Dude, just answer the fucking question, dude. <laughs> Zappi was slinging it. Yeah. He was slinging. Six if I had to choose between those three, I'd go Mac one, Messi two, okay. Bailey three. Yeah. Put them on the cover. What do you think about the fans in New England that won't even show up at the stadium anymore? That's crazy to me. And are thinking about the draft already. Why Where they sit th- that's right the now? Patriots. Crazy. Right? Wow. That's crazy that's to me. That's the Patriots. That in Is that really? Three years. That it's gone from the pinnacle to being like twenty percent or twenty other teams that always suck. Well, it's been five years uh, since Brady left and three years ago. Yeah, but they went to the playoffs in 21. Yeah, so it's been two years. So three seasons. Yeah. yeah, two seasons, you're right. Yep. 22 and 23. Boys, we're fighting over the minor details. Yeah. Yeah. The milk, fact yeah. of the matter is, Dynasty just ended seemingly yesterday, and today they're already <laughs> Don't kicking even show Bill up. out of the building, and they're not even going in there. Yeah, but it's been bad for – it's been uh, uh, below average performance or average to below for four or five years now. Two years. But it's still crazy to not show up. Two years. I would play in Detroit when we were the worst team ever, and, t- and people would show up. How about Detroit? You think they're all the way up? Are they, is, this, is this the brand new Lions? Golf, golf is kind of, yeah, Detroit. Well, I think the indoors. NFC. I think the NFC is one team that if you you catch them and they play a B game, you can't beat them. San Fran. And then there's the group of Philly, Dallas. That's probably that tier below, and then Detroit. Ooh. Say it. And you maybe Seattle. It. It. Green Bay. Oh, and Green Bay. I think Green Bay's in. Okay. Wow. Rams got a shot. Can I ask Stafford you? spinning yeah. it? Rams, Rams got a shot. Can I ask yeah. you about this dream scenario that I just Ooh. discovered yesterday, okay? From a Detroit person. Yeah. From a Detroit person. Yeah, yeah I was, I was listening. Yeah. 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 So, That's brutal. The Lions. You would throw for 500 yards. <laughs> Stafford. 
He would throw for 500 yards. That'd be awesome. In that Come game? On. Yes. Oh, and I Foxy, love him. did you hear that? Might, Sorry, Foxy. Might throw two pick sixes in that thing. Uh, why do you, got, why yeah. you no, always have to do that? We got you, Foxy. Okay, we got it. Yeah, no. Dan, Foxy. you know this cannot happen. You know Matthew Stafford has five touchdowns, 500 yards. Our offense is great. The Lions, Jared Goff has been awesome. He's not keeping up with that. There is no way that that can happen. We cannot allow the Rams in the playoffs, especially against Detroit. I can't so hear him, good. but I can. He also has great hair. Um, yeah, he Rex yeah, thinks that that face. Rex thinks that Foxy. I'm asking you a question. Rex thinks that that uh, the uh, defensive lineman, the rush end, for, that it was so hot. Houston. He's coming back this year. Have you heard that? Have you heard that he's going to get healthy? Yeah, people think he's going to be healthy. He was so good at the end of the year last year as a rookie. So we need him because that defense, you know, has issues. And they can't stop anyone right now. CJ, 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 don't too. be so negative. They're the brand hey, new Lions. Whoa, that's not you know. negative. That's just being real because I love this you, team. You were the one yesterday that said Matthew Stafford and the Rams are going to get into the playoffs. Yeah. Whoa, they they're going to play the Lions. Yeah, you yeah. Yeah. I just said – that's You're my worst nightmare. Play. That is my absolute worst nightmare. But I just want to see him win a playoff game. And if they have to play Stafford, I don't know if that's going to happen. If they play the <laughs> Packers, the Vikings, any of these other teams. I Hey, hell, even the Cowboys. I like us against the Cowboys Eddie more Ray than Ray I like Ray. us against Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Okay. Especially I think a lot of people are going to question that. Yeah. They play the Cowboys <laughs> soon, don't they? On Monday yeah. Night they Football, do. don't they? they? do. Yeah. Yes. Foxy's are also you calling it? No. I have Miami Monday night. Ooh, oh, you doing Monday Night Football? It's a doubleheader, right? Two, yeah. two games, same time. Miami plays Tennessee in Miami. Okay. And then at the same time on ABC is Packers-Giants here. Okay, real quick. You're calling Monday Night Football next week? Yes. Let's That's go. Let's go. Oh, Dan. That's pitiful. Let's go. Yeah, fired up for it. Mm -hmm. And they're the one seed. Yeah. Okay, let's right. go. Yeah, what are you going to lead off with? Like what am I going to lead? What's the like, open going to be? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that last time, what did he choose to do? I uh, didn't wear pants. Oh, was it the last time? No, last, last time you didn't last wear pants. Last time I was in Germany. No, last time you didn't wear pants. No, the last time I was in Germany. No, you yeah. sneezed yeah. and your microphone caught your fart. Yeah. Well, wh where were you when you didn't wear pants? <laughs> uh, that was London. Okay. London. That was London. You always um, show up. Uh, I don't know what the lead. The lead is probably the fact is Miami is the one seed. And I don't know the last time that they were the one seed in December. I mean, it had Dan, to be Marino. Not a baby gumpy. Yeah. Pennington might have had those boys buzzing. Chad? Not yeah. a one seed. Not a one seed. I don't know the one seed. We were in a division with... Not Brady. maybe. Darius does. Oh, yeah, right. Remember, he's a Dolphins fan. He's been in the division for 20 years, so... Jason Fiedler? Fiedler? Hey, Fiedler has some years. Yeah. Well, we've been looking for a guy like Tua since Dan Marino, like, legit. No doubt. Obviously, we had Breeze, but... Didn't, you know, the shoulder thing. But, uh, Dude, a great Tua story, story. Yes. Um, with McDaniel. So it did the Germany game. Two great Tua stories. Mm -hmm. did, the, great. did the Germany game. Mm -hmm. And so we sat with Mike and, and Tua. Great. And Tua's sharing a story of, like, within the first day or something, McDaniel calls him. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I'm fired up, this and that. And Tua's on the golf course. And he was, like, in between, like, do I tell him the truth? <laughs> like, do I, do I tell him I'm golfer? Or do I tell him, hey, coach, I <laughs> just got done working out, and I'm about to go watch tape. And McDaniel was like, I want to come watch tape with you, this and that. And so, too, it was like, okay, uh, coach, I'm golfing. And McDaniel was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. You know, so, like, that was great for two in the moment. And then so the, like, the next day or two, Damn. Mike McDaniel made, like, a 700-play cut-up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, just we've heard about passes, that. Mm -hmm. whatever, and then. You know, he was like, Tua, these throws, and Tua thought it in a bad way. Tua was like, oh, I probably should have thrown it here, or yeah, the read. And McDaniel's like, oh, no, I'm not talking to me. He's like, he's like, I've just watched you throw 20 straight out routes to the field to a dude that's completely covered, and you put it on his face every single time. And he's like, Tua said, like, that was massive for him. Relationship building, yeah. trust Confidence. building. Yeah. And then he, like, the first offseason, Tua threw, like, seven picks a day. You know, because Mike was just like, listen, when I tell you to throw it here, just throw it there. He's like, if I don't get him open, it's on me. And Tua was like throwing all these interceptions, and he was turning around to Mike, and Mike was like, just trust me. Just keep throwing it. Tua, like, at first was very hesitant, and then now as the season, off season went on, he started to, like, do it more and more and more, and that's why he's playing so fast. You watching Hard Knocks? I have not seen an episode of it yet. I've watched one. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, what McDaniel's doing, mm -hmm. the way he coaches, they talk about the accountability. We had Jalen on yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll run in the middle of seven-on-seven seven to, like, a corner and be like, what are we thinking here? Why are we running this? We're running this because of this, right? Yep, yep, yep. And then, like, just jog away. It's like, oh, that's his style of coaching. Like, mm -hmm. just like a quick little, hey, remember, this is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's like... 
He was everywhere in the episode, talking to Tua, wide receiver. I think even the offensive line at one point, he was talking to a corner. It's like, oh, this guy is like, he does it his own way, mm. but I think he gets his message across. I think he's a very like, hey, this is how this has to be too, especially with that offense. I don't, I don't think he gets a lot of credit for that because he looks so cool. Yeah, because yeah. he looks so cool. Yeah, Rion gauges him as like this very like reserved personality maybe and quiet and he's not. And he's very, very, very like upfront and, and to the point. Yes, and diligent. And yeah, quite yeah. calculated. And Cerebral. They, they got the right team for it too. Yeah. Kid. Fucking genius. He's a fucking They're genius. So fast. He like should get everybody. more credit too when you look at how Tua was with Brian Flores. Yeah. Like it's it's yeah. like a completely different. different guy. Think about it too. They they didn't pick up his fifth year option. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, well that was on the owner because they were paying him to lose. Allegedly. Well, he was, Allegedly. It was tough to... Was Allegedly, tough that was being talked about yeah. in this studio, though, yeah. too. Oh, Not yeah. just yeah. us. Yeah. Hundred grand a game. Not just us. Legend. Let's get out of here. Hey, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, great Dan. To see you guys. We got to live Dan's life for a couple of days. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Good life. It is you guys honestly life. didn't know that wasn't real, or you did and just didn't share wait, wait, wait. it? Dan, Dan. 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 Dan, it's real. This is disgusting. It's real. Dan, it's real. Don't be falling in for Aaron's conspiracies. Yeah. Yeah, look at that boat. It's going across right. It's yeah, right now going across. Quarterbacks always got all the answers. Yeah. They do, don't they? No. Did you see my journalism? Don't threaten me. I'll jump out. I thought it was a very good, very good spot. How come you guys don't do that type of stuff every day? Why aren't you over there journalism? Yeah, you guys never yeah. use that area. They used to more. Uh, we what don't happened? use it that much anymore. You got anymore. too comfortable in here? Too journalism? Um, I think that is just so like one-on-one. -on -one. So if he has, if Greeny has like, like a, a, an interview that is one-on-one, -on -one, I think he used that. He but other than that, you it's, down one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, why don't you say, yeah. hey, you know what, Dan, not every tank. What if you said that? Yeah. No one will watch. You should step brothers. Dan, in. we watch when Mark your Dan. face is on the TV. Mm -hmm. We watch your I don't face. think I'm that takey. I honestly don't. Okay, well, that's part of the problem. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. We appreciate you. Ball. You just say things with such conviction that it comes off that way. Yeah, well, it's not you tanky. have to say what you're convicted about, Pat. Not all. I felt I felt the wrath of the Florida State fans yesterday. Trust me. So what's that? I felt the wrath of the Florida State fans yesterday. Wait, everyone did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're wrong. You guys wrong, got so it too. Not as much as Herb Street, but yeah, Herb got it. The the way I handled it was kind of like. Let's let everybody else talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. So, like, had Herbie on. Herbie's 28 years. He has a real passionate view on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he knows more than we do. Let's have him come on. Mm -hmm. Now, the reaction to him through our show. Not, not great. Was loud. Yeah, it was. A lot <laughs> of comments. It was loud. Ooh. Now, Herbie knew that was coming, though. I oh, think. yeah. Oh, yeah. And he decided he to do it. This morning on first take, it was awesome. Molly goes, uh, Pat? Florida State, go ahead. And it's like, oh, I've been <laughs> Here trying, we go. To, man. I've been trying to stay away from this one because I understand it's not fair. No. Like, I very much understand it's Sucks. not fair. And if I was on that team, I'd be so pissed. Oh, if I was a fan of that team, yeah. I'd be so pissed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would feel completely fucked and betrayed mm -hmm. by the entire situation. But then you look at the other side of the coin, and it's like... What about the other teams, though, and how they feel about it and the rules that were put in place for this exact situation to potentially happen? It's like, I just, it sucks. I can't wait for the 12-team one. Yep. It sucks that we've had to have this entire situation yeah. for Florida State, for college football as a whole. Because mm -hmm. now all of college football is getting attacked for this, and it's like, hey, it was a hell of a season. It was, an, a, yeah, well, it was an awesome playoff. It was a phenomenal season this year, and it's like kind of sucks that this is going to be the thing that everybody's going to kind of talk about. But I'm once again, not fair. Yeah. Not fair. Can't yeah. cut off the head to save the body. Now, to be clear, though, and I said this earlier, like, I understand we're on ESPN. Yeah. Of course. So this is ESPN coming in my ear to tell me to say this, obviously. Yeah, we we'll do what we're told. How much yeah, have you got paid to That's that. the type of human I am. I always has been. That's right. why you see, we're now we're in New York's studio. Yeah, do, that do is what, what happened. People, yeah, exactly. Mm. I do exactly what I'm told all the time. Yeah. That's right. That is kind of how I operate. If Alabama plays Florida State right now, Alabama wins. And I think that is the conversation. Like, Jalen Milrow is playing his best football. Yeah. Alabama's playing their best football as a team. Florida State winning. We're very happy. Not playing their best football. You know why? Their best player is no longer there. Yeah. So it sucks that this situation even exists, but I think that's reality of the situation. Dude, when he went down, I, I was on first take, and I was like, no matter what happens, they, they, if they win out, they should be in. Florida State. I also did not expect them to look that bad in two weeks, or I did not expect Bama to be Georgia. Sure.
That's what changed. Georgia they also should be beat Florida, too. who was playing should, yeah. a backup quarterback. Georgia, Georgia should be pissed, too. And now, yeah. granted, they already had national championships, back-to-back mm-hmm. ones, so you have enough. Yeah, don't be greedy. And you guys try to kick me out of a restaurant because I'm not Dave Pollock and all the bullshit, you mm-hmm. know, that you guys were spewing this mm-hmm. entire year. But to speak up for the Georgia people, it's like they won 29 straight. Yeah. yeah 29 right. straight in back-to-back national champions, and then he lose a game. They also three. had a three-week stretch this year where they beat – I think it was number 12, Missouri, Tennessee. 10, 10, Ole Miss, and, and whatever, Tennessee. top 10, 10, Tennessee by 75. Yeah. It's like Georgia fans probably thinking to themselves, yeah, we get Florida State. Okay, cool. Yeah, they got a legitimate, yeah. What, yeah. About, uh, what about what everything we've done, and now we can't no. defend our national yeah. championship? We're not, and there's a one-loss team in there, yeah. two one-loss teams yeah. in there, yep. and the defending national champions who just won 29 straight Good point. can't get in there. It's yeah. like, yeah, valid. Yeah, that, that, very valid. Like, but, hey. We're going to 12. You're going to beat Alabama. That's Bingo. right. Hey, Who would all... be 12? Who's 12 this year? Uh, Liberty. Liberty, yeah. And they would get beat by 90. Liberty. Whoa, those boys got heart. <laughs> for did. sure. They but did. if they're playing five Georgia in Georgia. Honest question oh. for you. This is honest. Don't. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How many Dang. shirts, the animal shirts, do you have? Uh, uncountable. Over 100. No, that'd be countable. <laughs> <laughs> Did you love animals as a child? Like, what's the reason why? Yeah, dude. Love PETA. Kidding me? I look like an asshole. Yes. Okay. That's it. You just love animals. Just love them. Who's, what's your favorite animal? Uh, too many to love. Do you have a pet? No. Do you like cats? Yes. That's a flaw. What? Jeez. Okay. Have you ever met my cats? My cats are awesome. Yeah. Got a three-legged cat named Scootsy. You don't like Scootsy? What an asshole. Wow. Yeah. You're a bad guy. Yeah. Cats are terrible. Yeah. You should get killed for that one. <laughs> get him, Peter. I mean, Scootsy. You have the only cool cats on the cats entire are terrible. planet. Dogs are the best. The, you Dogs don't are, have to. Yeah. Yes, you, you don't do. have to. Yeah, you, do. you don't have to. No, you yeah, don't. You, do. you, do. yeah, you don't have to pick. No, you do. You don't. Yeah, I got both. Val, greatest dog on earth, yeah. in the house as well. But By choice or because of Mrs.? So Mrs. brought all these animals into, <laughs> into house. So, so not by choice. So none of this was by choice. Mm-hmm. You know, that whole how, thing. Many, how many animals are in the home? Six. Six. No, that's not too Not bad. the most at one time, though. There, there's been a time where we had like two. The other house had a pack of raccoons living in it. Yep. Outside, <laughs> but then it moved into the wall. And they all had diabetes because Sam was feeding them actual Fruit Loops and Fruity Pebbles mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. <laughs> so then we moved, and we just assumed that that diabetes ended up killing them all. No, yeah. no it was the construction workers. They put nails in, in the raccoons' heads when they saw them. <laughs> Peter, okay, guy, you can't guy live this chimney. Guy loves Peter. They, they did not do that. They did. That's what I heard. They did. <laughs> Anyways. You're a one of a kind, man. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'd say. How did you find this This. Well, wow, wow, his internship we'll send you the video. video. Long yeah. story. It's yeah, actually, yeah. from start, we knew exactly what we were signing up for. <laughs> from, were you at the from same the, company he was at recently? From, from the moment. God's company. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe They're all interns. Yeah, that's how it all started. At his company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I we were you were Barstool. No. Oh no, I was. No, I was there not. too. Yeah. yeah, they joined when we were at Barstool. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like we were in Indy, you know, Barstool was yeah. in New York, so we were in an operating situation. So I've been like his first boss. Yeah. Really, ever. I had time. to go back to Fairfield because I was valedictorian, so I had to give that speech <laughs> and everything, and then I moved back. Are you left? Ain't no valedictorian. Look it up. No way. Look it up. Look it. Read it. It's in a book somewhere. What's your somewhere. last name? Stallions? You don't, you don't have to know. Campbell. Yeah. He, he is our Connor so Stallions. Yeah. Yeah. How do you Connor. feel about that whole situation? They're number one in the country. Michigan. Yeah, we're doing a show. Yeah, Damn, I we're them, live still. I made them wipe my records away. I don't want the government How do you spell Valley Victoria? Uh, you figure it out. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not your puppet. Yeah, I'm not here to teach, Dan. The hell? What you, are you here to do? You come. If you ever, know. If you ever met... My cats, by the way, I'm just so. You, you need to take back what you said. I can't stand him. I got a buddy who's one of my good buddies has got a cat, and he thinks it, he likes the cat more than he likes his wife, for sure. Well, that sounds like that your guy's buddies. a weirdo. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> sounds like there's a lot brewing there. Um, Dan, I'm happy to hear the couples you guys hang out with like to keep things a little spicy. But, uh, we also appreciate what you do for sports media. Yeah, love it. Thank you for your time. Dan. Thanks, guys. Thank Thank you, Dan. Dan. Home, Dan. Travel safely home. We're proud of you, Dan. Love you, Dan. Love you, Dan. Proud of you. Way to go, Dan. Hey, man, Dan, oh. rip it up on Monday night. Dan, oh. Dan, oh. Dan, oh. Dan, oh. Dan, oh. Dan, oh. Dead.
Check ball, ball game. That was really good. That quarterback. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. All right. All right. That's the show. I think that's a good way that to go. That is the yep. show. Mm-hmm. It is the show. We show respect. Yeah. To. Damn. <laughs> damn, damn. <laughs> Hey, we, we had journalism today for real. Journalism. Yeah, that was an awesome sit down. A lot of journalism. He didn't address the Achilles, did he? No. 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 But the, I think the shoes did the talking, and you hammered that home. Shoes did do the talking. Barbara Walters would have pressed a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? If it, rest in peace? No, uh, she's still on house arrest. kicking. Sorry, what? Oh, house arrest. Um, or hey, Martha someone Stewart. Else. You're thinking of Martha Stewart. Oh, there it is. She's not on house arrest. She's not on house arrest, by the way. She did her time. Yeah. yeah. She's Please. out. She's a dog. That's great news. Barbara Walters still still doing it. Hell yeah. Now Thank you, Barbara. Know. I thought you were wherever, Barbara. Know, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a... Barbara's dead. Barbara's dead. Okay, rest she had piece. a hell of a run. How'd she die? How'd she, she, she die? Hell of a run. How'd she die? Old age, probably. Barbara, we apologize. In Barbara's sleep. in her sleep. Who cares? She, she lived a great life. Bingo. Just like the snakes did on his boots. Bingo. I've got to tell a lot of people in New York, snakes died comfortably in their sleep. Yeah. They were turned into yeah. boots. Mm-hmm. That's how this whole thing goes. Barbara Walters lived a full life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a fun fact about that. And I thought of her. I want to let her family know. Although we did not know if she was still with us because her presence is always with us. Right. I thought of her as I was walking over there. DJ. Standard. Boom. Barbara Walters. Mm-hmm. She's dead, though. We need to remember Fun that. Fun fact, uh, so everyone can sleep peacefully at night. Uh, the snakes can boots. The snakes accidentally bite themselves, and they die. And that's where the boots come from. Genius. Okay. So it was a dumb snake. Hmm? Huh. They accidentally bite themselves. Yeah, they're poisonous. One bite kills you. That actually works. Mm-hmm. Barbara Walters died at her home in Manhattan right here. On December 30th, 2022. Oh, almost a year ago. She had been suffering from, okay, Ooh. our last words were no regrets, had a great life. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. I no mean, regrets, had a great Barbara Walters don't. went down like a G. Are we really? Don't. Are we really? Uh, don't do it. She had dementia in her last years, and right before she died, she said, God, my life was sick. How did, did she really know? Or? You have moments she did, of yeah, yeah, it, it, Okay, it, I'm just asking. Jesus. I'm just asking. 93. I mean, whether she knew or not, that's a great life. Ty, what are you going to remember from this New York trip that we had here, pal? Um, a lot of things for sure, but <clears throat> unquestionably, you saying this morning that Pizza Hut pizza was better than Grimaldi's. I will, I will think about that probably every day for the rest of my life. I'm getting Pizza Hut right when I get home tonight. I cannot wait. What kind of crust? Well, we'll see. I'll probably do one, uh, big New one thin four. crust. Might grab a big New Yorker, and then, you know, you just got your, your traditional, you know, hand-tossed pie. Maybe if, if I'm feeling crazy, I might throw a little pretzel crust on there. Whoa! I don't know. I don't know. Grimaldi's didn't have that option. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing about Pizza Hut. They will do things to pizza that others won't. That's mm-hmm. right. You know, and I will say the Grimaldi's was DoorDash. Now, every Pizza Hut I've ever had has been delivered. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm comparing similar sure. things, okay. but a lot of people say like when you're in there and it's fresh off the, hey, the, might be different. Yep. Don't, you know how New York, Little Caesars. I know New York has lost its fastball because uh-huh. there's a lot of New Yorkers in that same studio, and no one has smacked you guys in the mouth <laughs> for saying that that pizza <laughs> is worse than Pizza Hut. Couple pops actually. Yeah, they, yeah. Actually, they know it's right. They know what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, they are I very. They, I these they be, these, you know what? I, uh, one of my takeaways will be before we get to yeah, all the boys. How professional all these people oh, yeah. are. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. Good We're sorry. Tone, how about you? What do you take away from this New York trip? We have someone in our office who likes to say, as a New Yorker, a lot. Oh. And they, and they oh, say, yeah. basically, uh, a lot. So basically. So, ba- so, so basically. His name's Matt Brown. <laughs> also uh, known Bruce, as Bruce. Bruce Brown. Yesterday, he said, hey, we were at this place. He goes, hey, guys, let's go to this other place. I know this other place. I'm from New York. This place is awesome. It's a great little bar that we can go to, get some drinks before we go to dinner. We went to that place, and it was a Whole Foods, and there was not a bar in there. Oh. There was no oh, kind of got there was exposed? No, yeah, he, it was, it was the worst, it was the worst recommendation. <laughs> Worst so basically, so basically, worst recommendation I've ever heard from someone in my entire life, and him putting himself on this New York pedestal that he normally does to, for that to happen just was the best thing that's ever happened. Bruce, right? if you want to speak for yourself, I guess you should now at this particular time. Yeah, that didn't happen. It's the place right, right there. The 
tin roof place. I just was there a, to check it out. Tin roof. T t I mean, was there a bar in there? No, no bar. Raw, raw <laughs> bar. Raw bar. What was the? Why didn't you guys go to the botchy putt putt? It wasn't open. It was yeah. closed. Huge. Close yeah, it wasn't open. They must be paying a hundred and fifty million dollars a year <laughs> yep. to run whatever racket they're running. He's a great right here. There, yeah. there yeah. is uh -huh. a there is a building on the right pier here. right here. Prime real estate, I think, oh, yeah. in New York, where Perfect. this is. It yeah. is beautiful view, obviously. Massive. Literally, Statue of Liberty is right there. Brooklyn Bridge right there. It's, like, pretty perfect spot. They have maybe the entire pier, mm -hmm. and we didn't see a single soul inside of it. Nope. Has to be a front. For some oh, yeah, money has to be. They were like, come play bocce here. It's like, a bocce bar is moving enough to pay for this? Bocce, and they had putting pool that you stand on top Looked of. Looked awesome. Yeah. Shuffleboard. Board. Shuffleboard. Yeah. I assume there's no food in, in there. there though. Not a single soul in no. there. Nope. I'm Lights not, were on. Lights were on. Yeah. No, no we had it. a Schefter's uh, oh. recommendation. Il Bargante the last night. It was how was the good. how was the vibes? Good vibes. Great vibes. Wine was great. Food was great. Right. It was a classic little Italian place in New York. Little Italian place? Yeah. Il Bargante. Well, where we were sitting was little. It was. No, the yeah. whole place was small. A little cozy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, little even cozy. inside. Tight quarters. You guys were sitting in a shed on the sidewalk, I heard. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They yeah. built it during COVID so that they could uh, stay, stay in afloat. Business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's ingenuity. Ingenuity. Exactly. Suck it, COVID. What's your big takeaway from our time in New York, Conrad? Um, my big takeaway, as someone who kind of experiences bums on a daily basis uh, in Indianapolis, uh, my big takeaway was this weekend while we were driving. Well, not sure. Assuming. We don't know there wasn't. Yeah. Assuming. True. That is true. Shooting true. piss. That, to me, is like... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, that's like a Hall of Fame bum right there. That, that, that's my. That's my LeBron bum, and I saw him <laughs> with my smooth. own two eyes. It was crazy. And now all I'm that's thinking is. That's your Chris is, Kyle of bums. Yeah, exactly. American hero, uh, you know, bum of honor, if you will. It, and what I think I need. It to was do, absurd. It was the biggest was water gun I've seen. It was a 50 cal. It was a 50 cal water gun. Yeah. Huge yellow, bright yellow. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, he had no the shoes on. No shoes on. He's pointing this thing Just, at people walking down the street. It, it was wild. Yeah. I don't, I, and I, we actually had a full conversation about it. how do we react if Bum turns corner with 50 cal water gun? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to experience because we were driving by. Hit the mm -hmm. deck. But that is that was quite a <laughs> scene. Yeah, yeah that, was that, was, quite a scene. that was cool. So cool that uh, first thing I'm going to do when we get back to Indianapolis, buy eight of those things, spread yeah. them out around the city. We need, to, we need to get our Bum game up <laughs> all right. immediately. All right, all right. Jeez. All right. I'm happy you want to bring that tradition to Indianapolis. Absolutely. That's, I mean, the city sucks. Aside from that, this place blows. So I'm glad. <laughs> what that are I you talking this about? Week? This place is beautiful. These, look at these beautiful. nice people. Beautiful. The, the people are beautiful. It's been cloudy and shit. I mean, look look out the window. Oh, right the now. weather? Yeah. Yesterday was yeah. beautiful. It's probably your fault because you're driving a truck now. Yeah, yeah right. right. That's, why, that's yeah. why the weather is. If I was driving a truck, it would probably help how shitty this city is. They're, they're, they're what doing, are you talking doing about? nothing for us here, okay? Nothing. These what people is, are doing a lot yeah, for us. That's what I said. The people are great. The city itself. Okay, New York City. Pizza. Bagels. We got Pizza Hut in Indy, so there's one. Yeah. See ya. Well I haven't had a bagel since I got here. <laughs> in fact, the spread out in the morning, I believe they had stuff, you know, one of those mini bagel stuff things from Dunkin' Donuts. Oh. Okay, can also get that in Indy. What What do they got then? What are you water? talking about? Water? <laughs> great water. They got, it, it's not great water. You're not, look at this. It's the best tasting water in the country. Yeah. I mean, they've actually People won that People swim award. in the Hudson all the time. It's beautiful. Yeah, swim in the Hudson. And guess what they do as soon as they get East out? East River's even nicer. Wow. Die immediately from the sludge. No. Yeah. Kramer, I think you got it all Kramer wrong. had a swim club in it. This city's. And you know what happened to Kramer. That guy's got a pass. <laughs> Do you know how long he certainly has said some things? Um, it took me an hour and 10 minutes to get across that bridge. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I, yes. I can't believe I forgot that. Hour and 10 this, minutes. This is L.A. East. It is as big of a pain in the ass to get around one this One lane place. up to that Brooklyn Bridge, one lane down. Yep. It's, ha it's barely a lane. You're, you're, touching, you're touching the railing <laughs> of the fucking lane. Like, it just, but hey. Beautiful can't city. Can't wait to come back. Can't wait to come back. <laughs> uh, hopefully we do this, you know. Two years, three, four, semi -annual. Sooner. We got to do it sooner. We got the tech figured semi -annual. out. Semi-annual. Yeah. Do we? I'm, I'm excited to listen after after the show. We do. Big Mike and the boys worked yep. on it. Everybody go, boys. Big Mike.
Thank you for that, team. Appreciate that. The, the video. Did you see the camera on the journalism show? Oh, gorgeous. That was unbelievable. Oh. Oh, every shot was. See, that's New York. You should associate that with New no, York. No, it's the people. Once again, that, that is the people, people here who are fantastic. Everything else about this place fucking sucks. <laughs> All right. Now I'll die on that hill. Point take. Die on that hill. All right, Darius, on that note. Man, What's your big takeaway from? Hard, that's hard to follow up, but uh, no, we need you. But yeah, yeah we need, big I mean, I, I personally love New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah me, me too. too. Me, me too. Nice little speakeasies off the beaten path sure. spot. So I asked the guy at the place where we stand, hey, where can I find a nice little sports bar to watch the game? He said, oh, I got something for you. Come outside. You hit this corner, you make it right. It's gonna be a door, crack glass. Doesn't look like shit in there. You reach up, top left, pull a lever. Yes. It'll open up. Him and I'm like, did right. this together. So I'm like, all right, cool. I go take a little peek. I'm like, ah, probably not a good idea to go by myself. <laughs> you know, he's like, hey, yeah, you're getting there. It's great vibe. It's three, ran by three degenerate gamblers. Nice. nice guys. Sweet. But he's going to pour you some shots all night. Oh, sounds awesome. Me and Gump up. Hey, Gump, what's yeah, up? Guy. Got, Got to Soldier spot. Hill, yeah. Gump yep. comes downstairs. We go, we hit it, you know. And I get there. I, I, I feel shitty about this. I, I'm very disappointed in myself. Couldn't get that motherfucker open. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> so now, it. so now I'm the guy at the door. I know he's probably inside looking. So guy comes and open it for me. I get probably three steps in. Dude comes from behind the bar. Hey, you know this guy? Gumpy? No. He asked the guy that opened the door for me. Does he know me? So dude's looking like no. He was trying to open the door. Like, you don't open the door for people here. You got to get it yourself. I'm like say, hey, uh, <laughs> Bernie sent me. Oh, Bernie sent you, huh? <laughs> Definitely needs to fuck it out. So it was a little, it was an event, but hey, great time. It was an event. <laughs> oh, wow. A, a, a great vibe. And when I come back to New York, that would definitely be my spot when I come back. So. All right. I know you're down to some private club. Yeah. yeah. I like how the best got, spots are hidden. That's another great that, place hey, about this city. That yeah. is. Best restaurants, mm -hmm. best spots, but yeah, good time. Yeah, Bernie, too. What a plug. Yeah. Shout out Bernie. Shout out. Sanders? Honest, Bernie might be a little sketchy. I'm sure. I won't drop his name next time. I tell you No, I got you right in. Did, right? Nah, I was already in. The guy that almost got his head blown off got me in. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate him. He didn't know He didn't know the drill, but that was a little awkward situation. But Happy you all survived. Yeah. Uh, boys in the back, great work back here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, what up, boys? Bruce, you two pile on your own little... Hey, Bruce. Good boy, Bruce. Is so basically, like, oh, on, man. you guys did New York, you know, right, Bruce? What did we not do? We saw the Statue of Liberty. Yep. We we broke into a speakeasy, yeah. mm -hmm. had local pizza, right? Mm -hmm. Had some pasta. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gump saw was pissed too. He was pissed about Bruce leaving us. Hang all the fucking king of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce and Gumpy got a nice little rivalry they going. Do. Yeah, yeah, they do. We saw That's the homeless hilarious. guy with the, with the fifty super, cal yeah, water gun. Yep. Mm -hmm. We did it. What did we miss, Bruce? Anything? Um, I mean, you could hit a Broadway <laughs> show. Oh. We kind of did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, flat iron area, that, that's a good spot. But in a way. I, I think you did great. I don't know who told you that Grimaldi's was the best pizza in New York. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Is there another? John's is a popular answer. Oh, there okay. Papa? Spots, um, <laughs> that I, I would rank above. The Papa? Three Uber drivers that drove me over that bridge that took an hour roughly every single time to get Mile and a half. Onto it, across it, and down the other side. They all said, that place right there, Grimaldi's best pizza in the city. That's what they said, Bruce. I'm just going by what the locals are saying. Is on the in the Brooklyn side? Mm-hmm. It was on the but they weren't saying like in Brooklyn best pizza. They they like reiterated a couple times, like, hey, this is our city's best mm -hmm. option right Crossable. here. Is what they say. You don't think that's true? No, I don't. But so that was this baby face, the yeah. pizza hut. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank you, Bruce. Had a baby, Bruce. Bruce. Zito, what'd you say, pal? Burnley's down one zip right now. Oh, no. Ooh. They yeah. did win and five. And the water is wet. No, they won 5 nothing this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, the boys were buzzing huge on Saturday boy, morning. Yeah. That was huge, but Huang Lee Chan just scored a goal for the Timberwolves. Oh, he's a good player. Yeah. He is. Once he gets rolling, too, he gets one in the first half. Normally, Huang Lee Chan will score in the second half as well. Yeah. That's exactly what he does. Gumpy, what's going on? Who, what's the name of that team that they're playing right now? This thing works. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sounds like you're in Bristol. Wolverhampton. It's not working. No, nah, that one doesn't work. Yeah, we can hear working. Bristol. We can't hear you. What was that? That was awesome. It was. Yeah, we need that to happen more yeah. often. 
they should not be able to okay. hear me. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 we hear you, yeah, go. We can hear you. That's good stuff. Hey. That's it. Hell the Wolverhampton yeah. Bulls. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hell yeah. Dynamite drop it. What's her name? Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton Wolves. All right. On that note, I think it's time for us to get the hell out of here. What a fun time. Yeah, I appreciate cool. New York. I appreciate all the people that set this up, and uh, we'll be back in Indianapolis tomorrow. Be your friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. From New York City. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs>